2020. Clerk. Over. Present, Your Honor. Very good. We have a quorum and we will proceed. Under the Pledge of Allegiance, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation that will be offered on behalf of Alder Johnson. It will be offered by Pastor Jerry Bader from Faith by the Bay Ministries. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, which it stands one, one nation, nation under, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Pastor Bader. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We uh, give thanks for the freedom to have open government and to be represented. We uh, give you thanks for those who sacrifice, and it is a sacrifice in public service. And uh, we just ask for your presence here tonight. We ask that, uh, as you know, Father, there are divisive, polarizing issues from the White House all the way down to city halls all across America. And uh, it is often a thankless job being an elected official. It's extremely difficult at any level uh, in our current environment. So we ask that uh, you shower this meeting with your wisdom, your discernment uh, on those who have difficult decisions to make and remind them that uh, the position they have is about serving the public, uh, doing what's in the best interest and in the, the safety and the security of the public. And uh, we just ask that you be with them and their thoughts and their words uh, all be measured. And uh, we are just so thankful for your abundance of blessing and uh, uh, this opportunity to, uh, to see government in action and uh, for them to do what uh, they believe is with your, with your wisdom is for the good of the people. We ask these things and we just give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Joining us, Pastor Bader, and for your wise words. Mr. Mayor, if I could. Um, yes. Yeah. It, it, just to thank you, obviously, uh, because I had invited uh, Pastor Jerry Bader, and I just want to acknowledge the work that he and his wife, Ramona, uh, have been doing over in the Seymour Park neighborhood. Uh, they're, they formed Faith by the Bay Ministries uh, last fall, and they've just been doing an incredible amount of work in, in that, that part of our community, and I just want to make sure that recognize that they don't go overlooked and, and have an opportunity to extend uh, how much we appreciate what they're doing. Thank you, Alderman. Well said. Thanks, Alder, and thanks again, Pastor. Yep, thank you. And to approval of the minutes. Approve. Motion has been made by Alder Dorf to approve, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any corrections? Seeing no requests. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The minutes have been approved. Uh, before we move into the approval of the agenda, um, I just wanted to, to make an informational note, a bit of housekeeping, um, you know, something I can't say with 100% certainty, but if there are folks who are on the line interested in talking about equal rights or fluoride, um, you know, our sense is that these items will, will not be pulled. Of course, as I said, I cannot speak for council, so it's a possibility that that could happen later on in the meeting. Um, so if people want to hang around, absolutely should do that, but just wanted to to make that point if, if there are folks that are really interested in dealing with those issues. Um, and then I also just wanted to see if there's anyone on the line who is interested in talking about really any, any lower profile issue. Obviously, you know, the vast majority of folks are interested in offering their, offering their opinions on, uh, on face coverings. So I just wanted to check and see if there's anyone else. Otherwise, uh, my feeling, and I think, feeling of a number of other alders is that we would potentially amend the agenda to take up the committee of the whole items and the resolutions um, just after appointments. So uh, I will again ask if there's anyone out there that would like to talk on a lower profile issue 
Otherwise, we will proceed as, uh, as I suggested. Can I move to amend the agenda at this point? Right, I'd like to move to, the, to amend the agenda to move the Committee of the Whole and re, item and resolutions up because we have many citizens out here waiting for an opportunity to speak. And I think that their voices should be heard first in our meeting or as soon after the, um, it would be right after appointments before, for, before item J. Right, we have a motion to amend the agenda to put U and D okay. right after uh, right after I, that's been offered by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any discussion? All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Uh, Mayor. Yes, have it. That amendment is successful. I'll accept, entertain a motion to adopt Mayor. or approve the agenda as amended. Motion to adopt as amended. Second. M Mayor, motion can you hear me? Order. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me, Mayor? Yes. Yes. Jeffrey. So thank you. Uh, Casey Hicks has raised his hand. Um, so I think that he may have another item that he wants to speak to. Just wanted to let you know. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I can explain. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a lower profile issue, but just wanted to speak on the election uh, funding from the grant for center, uh, from the grant that the city is going to be receiving. Very good. Um, let's see, that is under. That's both in the finance report as well as in the ad hoc committee report. Mayor Ganrick. Yes, Alder Dorf. As a member of the elections committee, I feel it would be important to take that up under uh, elections, which which may take take a while, um, and I'm wondering. I hope could Mr. Hicks plead for the that that item to come up. Okay, he's signifying he's, that he he said yes. Happy yes. to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hicks. All right, uh, with that, uh, we have the uh, the amendment that's been adopted. Uh, we have the motion to uh, to adopt as amended or approve as amended. Um, that motion was made by, was it Alder Scannell? I, yes. Yes. I, yes. Okay, and seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The agenda has been approved as amended. On to the report by the mayor. Um, I'll make this as quick as possible. Obviously we have a lot to get to tonight or a robust discussion. Um, but I did want to lead off things, just touching on uh, on requiring uh, face coverings. Um, I don't know if if you all have had a chance to see some of the latest latest data, but um, on coronavirus. But I'll just run through that real quickly here, as it pertains to Brown County. Um, Brown County still has the second most cases per capita in all of the 72 counties in the state of Wisconsin. We had 86 new cases uh, reported, according to MacGyver Institute. Um, very sadly, we also just experienced the 46th death in Brown County. Uh, each one of those lives was a blessing and each death is a tragedy. So our thoughts and prayers are with each and every member of, of uh, the families impacted by those deaths. Also today, state of Wisconsin reported that we unfortunately broke the record for most positives since tracking began this past spring with 1,117 cases reported today, positive cases reported. Um, so just in my mind reinforces the necessity of moving expeditiously to take whatever appropriate action we can to keep members of this community safe. Uh, I feel, as I've said, publicly very strongly in, in the need to move forward with a, a face covering requirement um, I don't believe it's an undue burden. I think it's a, it's a reasonable step to take. It's a small sacrifice, and I think it's one that the vast majority of us can take. Um, also just wanted to, to touch on the fact that obviously this is a community-wide issue. The virus doesn't know municipal boundaries or state or national boundaries. Um, have had some recent conversations with, 
with local leaders in other parts of the county. Um, so I did actually want to read a statement from the mayor of De Pere. Um, he sent me an email and, and said that he would be fine with me reading this publicly. Uh, so he says, while there is an increasing amount of debate surrounding COVID-19, one thing that remains certain in my mind is we must do whatever is reasonable to protect our friends and neighbors. Cases continue to rise and we have an obligation to minimize risks for our community members. With that in mind, the city of Green Bay has my full support in implementing a citywide mask policy and our city staff, health department, and myself are exploring similar options in the city of De Pere. Uh, also wanted members of the public and alders to know that the Oneida Nation just recently took the step of requiring face coverings in all of their nation-owned properties, their retail establishments, their gaming facilities, uh, anything that is owned by the nation and open to the public. So we're, we're seeing some significant progress and interest in this issue uh, across the region and, and wanted members of the public and alders to be aware of that. Uh, as I said yesterday publicly, uh, I think the ideal situation really is for statewide policy, but short of that, um, you know, countywide policy. And I'm hoping that if we are successful tonight in implementing a, a face covering requirement in the city of Green Bay, that we will see um, some combination of municipal partners or hopefully a countywide policy enacted by the county board. Uh, so with that, um, that will conclude my report. On to announcements. Alders. Feel free to go ahead. I'm having just a little, little bit of an issue. <laughs> I do, Mr. Okay, Mayor. Go ahead, Alder. Alder Thank you. Go Thank, ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have two, really, just two thanks that I wanted to send out there. One was a word I just received this week. As you know, the ad hoc committee has been working very hard uh, on getting them up in all election locations and and workers, and I think we've been doing a pretty good job. Uh, the Packers reach out to me and say they'd be willing for us to use their tailgate village in, in November. And so I've, you know, let Clerk Teske and the other members know I'm hoping that's an option. Nice big building, big parking lot. I think that would help a great deal. So I want to thank the Packers for that. Um, then I wanted to, uh, after a decade of drama, <laughs> we had the grand opening of, of Colburn Pool, of course, last week. And I, I just wanted to thank uh, Director Ditchheit, uh, Assistant Director Anderson, and Ann Moeller for doing a great job all these years of keeping things on task, you know, despite all the, like I said, all the drama that happened. And um, I really want to thank all the steadfast friends of Colburn Pool. You know, there's, there's a, a group of us, you know, a dozen, 20 of us, uh, a couple aldermen. Um, I really want to thank the Crooks family, Hank, Lori, and Olivia, and Leah Frost. They were really my right hand, and without them, couldn't have got it done. So thank you. Thank you, Alder. Uh, members of the public, please mute your phones. Thank you very much. Other Alders? Mayor, this is Alder yeah. Lefebvre. Alder Lefebvre, go ahead. Um, I just want to make an announcement that Thursday, uh, I believe it's 12th Department or the Health Committee for Brown County will be discussing a mask ordinance. So if anybody would, you know, wants to, they can go on the county um, site and, and get the information on that. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Vanderleest. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is to the, all of the city employees of the city of Green Bay. Uh, I'd like to address a comment that's made that it, uh, from the mayor's column. It says, to be frank, there are alders who want to see us enact furloughs, layoffs, and wage reductions. And then it says, Mayor, your, your statement is, I do not unless it is absolutely necessary. I, I think the, the, the city council wants to work with the staff, wants to work with uh, the HR department, uh, Diane Allenbecker. I, I don't think the, the, the alters want to, uh, they want to work with the staff so that if, there's, if there happens to be uh, layoffs or furloughs or any of this, that we're all going to work together. We're all in it together. I think, you know, to be frank, there are alters who want to see us enact furloughs, layoffs, and wage reductions. I don't think we want to, you know, enact furloughs and, and uh, layoffs and wage reductions. Everybody that's involved. Uh, the alters don't need a thousand enemies. There's over a thousand people that work for the city of Green Bay. 
I want to get the message out to the people in the city of Green Bay that work there. We want the alders want to work together with the administration, with the finance department, and, and uh, uh, the, the statement of of saying that you know we want to do all this. We want to work with the staff, and I think as far as uh, you know, saying this about the alders to to make the alders look bad. At Good Mayor, I, I don't feel that's really, you know. Point of order. This is announcement time. I'm not sure that this, this qualifies. The, this is announcements to the city, to the city staff, that, that I'm, I'm making the, the, the pitch that with the city staff and, and not, not against them. So I, I, I just feel that this is an announcement and, and uh, I, I think it has to be aired and, and, and that's why I brought it up. So, Appreciate so we that can work together to, as, a, as a city council and uh, you know, address the issues that might come come forward because of the corona, because of the finance. And as far as being point of order, Barb, is what I, I this is an announcement to the city employees that the city council wants to work with them, not against them. Of course, we do. Thank you, Mayor, Thanks, and the staff. We all want to work together, and that's my my information I'm giving here tonight, and that's my announcement. And thank you very much. Thanks, Alder. Any others? Lost my bet. Thought Randy would have interrupted. I'm wrong. Seeing none. <laughs> Alders, uh, on two appointments. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion to approve the new appointments made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Close nay. You guys have it. That new appointment is confirmed. Entertain another motion on uh, new appointments or on uh, reappointments, rather. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to confirm the reappointment of John Arndt to the Green Bay Sustainability Commission. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You guys have it. The item has been approved. And now we are on to Committee of the Whole as a result of that amendment to our agenda. All right, item one, consideration of possible action on resolution providing for face covering within the city of Green Bay, effective July 27, 2020. Uh, recommend honor, here, uh, a motion to open the floor. Well, before we open the floor, Your Honor, I'd like to amend the ordinance. I think that would help uh, to get that cleared up out of the way to, so everybody's got what we're gonna be voting on in front of them. Are we all gonna make amendments then? All right. Well, uh, sure, I think we should. If we're gonna amend it, I think uh, <laughs> that makes sense to me. To, to So people know what we're doing and they can speak. Could change after though. Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe, um, I appreciate what you're trying to do, Alder. Um, maybe you could you could read what your, it's essentially, it, if, if it's the same one I'm familiar with, it's yeah. essentially a technical yeah. amendment. Yeah, this it comes from legal. Clarifies the intent. So if you wanted to just simply explain okay. what that amendment would be, but then I would I would sort of want to move on to opening the floor at this point. Okay. Um, under definitions for indoor, indoor area, uh, I think we should end up amending it to indoor area accessible to the public means any interior area of any structure or premises licensed by the city of Green Bay or used in whole or in part as a sort, assemblage, lodging, trade, traffic, occupancy, or other use by the public to which the public customarily has access. So that defines a little bit more just right. what we're talking about, where we're gonna be enforcing this. Appreciate that Alder, thank you. Entertain a motion. Oh, motion. to open the floor. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to open the floor. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it, the floor is open. And just uh, another bit of, of housekeeping, um, the way that these things are customarily done is by limiting comments to, to three minutes. So that's the standard that we will abide by tonight for members of the public. Uh, comments from alders are limited to five minutes, two times 
per motion. Uh, so we will abide by that as well this evening. Also just wanna make the point that, you know, I understand that people have uh, some very passionate feelings about this topic. Uh, I have full faith that our alders will maintain a sense of decorum and treat everyone with respect and uh, are just asking members of the public to behave similarly uh, with your comments tonight. So with that, I'll sort of hand things over to Chief of Staff Jeffries, uh, we'll be taking care of the clock and recognizing speakers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so for those of you who are on the Zoom call, um, there is a way that you can signify to us that you would like to speak. The first thing that you can do is to raise your hand if you are in Zoom with a, either a computer link or with an application in your phone. You can also unmute yourself, uh, but what I'm going to do first is take the people who have raised their hands. And for those of you who are watching, you can see the little blue hand next to the person's name. So I'm just gonna take them from top to bottom. When I um, call your name, you're going to unmute yourself. And what you're going to do is you're going to give your first name, you're going to spell your last name, and you're going to give your address. Okay, here we go. And I will pull up the three minute timer. So the first person is Brian. Brian, can you please unmute yourself and spell your last name for yes. the committee? Oh. Go right ahead. Oh, okay, hi, uh, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Brian Higginbotham. Uh, last name is spelled H-I-G-G-I-N-B-O-T-H-A-M. My address is 850 uh, Neufeld. Street, Green Bay, 54304. Oh, I hear a beep. Yes, go right ahead. Okay, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I do appreciate uh, Mary Greenwich's concern. Um, you know, I, I do have a, a, a concern for the welfare of our citizens um, in our city and, and state, nation. Um, but I, I continue to uh, be convinced, quite convinced that you know, that the true emergency that we're really dealing with uh, at this point is, is fear. Um, we have uh, really got to um, understand, you know, we have to live, we have to be able to move forward. Um, I, I, you know, there's that, that phrase or, or cliche, you know, the cause, the, the cure can be worse than the, than the cause, if that's how it goes. But, um, you know, I, Mandating masks is, is would not sit. Um, I don't want to sink the ship uh, in order to save a few, you know, to try to save the sailors. Um, I don't know what we're going to have left if we keep having um, ongoing uh, overreach of, of, of authority or overreach of, of constitutional powers. Um, you know, the mayor mentioned um, some of the data here, um, second most cases writing these down um, <clears throat> you mentioned the 46th we had the, our 46th death I'm guessing that's roughly since February maybe March um, not to minimize but um, I do want to you know, I am wondering what does this death mean you know, there's so much conflicting data whether it's March or uh, masks whether it's um, COVID cases what does that really mean death by a COVID case so uh, just looking at that, I mean, that's one point that kind of stood out to me. Um, is this a, co a death that was directly caused by the Wuhan or Chinese virus? Was it a comorbidity issue? Was it, um, uh, you know, something that that came over dealing with something else, which is uh, comorbidity, basically? Um, yes, you know, we're all in this together. You know, we, we are all in this together, but um, we also need to fight for each other's lives, fight for each other's <clears throat> ability to, to put food on our tables. Um, how we're going to discern what is essential, not essential. Um, I, I don't know what the criteria really is. And that seems like something that would be uh, vacillating or, you know, from one day to the next. I, I truly believe we're all essential. I believe the church is essential. You know, that this world survived a pandemic of water. Uh, some 10,000 years ago, roughly. Um, and we've m managed to get up to roughly six to eight billion people, you know. So that's my word. 
Thank you, Mr. Higginbotham. Uh, the next person. Oh, you're very welcome. Yes, thank you. The next person is Mike Shea Jr. Um, Mr. Shea, can you please unmute yourself and say and spell your last name for the committee? Mike Shea, S H E A, 2751 Woodstock Road, or Court, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I really don't want to address whether masks work or not for every piece of anecdotal evidence that one doctor gives that says they do work. I can show you a peer review paper that says they don't work. In fact, I sent the entire council a, a uh, letter about that with uh, sites. I do want to talk about what happened yesterday, the press conference and what led us here. Um, I'm listening to what was said in that press conference. And I think that uh, there are certain people that only hear what they want to hear. Uh, for example, yesterday during the press conference, the doctor admitted that uh, we had flattened the curve and we did it without having the mask mandates. Back when the curve was really high, we didn't have mask mandates, but yet we flattened it. And, and business owner in the area, I can tell you that people are still staying home. They're not coming out as much we're social distancing. Um, business is proving that the government does not have to intervene on our behalf. The private industry in this city, in this state is saying, we can handle this, we'll take care of it. The government needs to stay out. And the reason I'd like the government to stay out of it is a couple reasons. The other thing I heard, in the, one of the other things I heard in the press conference yesterday, actually saying that it's going to be up to private business to enforce this on their customers. That is absolutely ridiculous. There is no way I want my employees to confront anyone on a topic like this. This is a hotbed topic. Don't put employees and employers in a position to do a job like that. If, if have the time, which I don't think they do, to go out and enforce something like this, then have them do it. Putting it on private business is absolutely ridiculous. The other thing that the doctor admitted yesterday was that masks need training. She said, go look at YouTube. So you're assuming every single person at the proper training. Without the proper training wearing a mask, it's useless. People talk about surgeons wearing masks. Yes, they wear disposable masks. They know how to put them on and take them off without spreading germs. The general public does not. The general public will wear the mask wrong, will take it off with their hands, will touch it, will spread more germs that way. If masks worked, then why are countries where people regularly wear masks still seeing the same results we are? I mean, you're saying you need to mandate it, and at the same time, you're saying everybody needs training to work. But I know that the government does not have to tell us what to do. We're proving it day in and day out that we can handle this ourselves. We're social distancing, we're doing the right things, and industry is doing the right things. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Next, we have Lacey Lewis. Ms. Lewis, please unmute yourself. Say and spell your last name for the committee and also give your address. Um, hi, my name is Lacey Lewis. Uh, my name is spelled L-A-C-E-Y, L-E-W-I-S. I live on 9th Street in Green Bay. Um, is that all I need? Yes. Okay. So I heard Mayor Gingrich, or Gingrich uh, speak before about the numbers of positive cases and the number of deaths within the county. Now, while I don't want anybody to personally get sick, I do have a problem with the data. If you're going to say statistics matter, then all statistics have to matter. There are 264,542 people in this county. Of those people, 5,291 of them have pediatric asthma. Of those people, 18,474 people have adult asthma. Of those people, 10,344 have COPD. Of those people, 29,393 people have chronic lung disease. 
five or 155 have lung cancer. That is 63,600 people of the 264,542 people, which is 24% of your population has lung problems directly. Now that is not including any children under the age of five, which is uh, a total of uh, 16,401 children. That is not including any of the veterans who have PTSD, which is 4,838. The number of disabled people under the age of 65 is 18,784. So if you are going to say that statistics matter, of the 1,000 or so that tested positive, out of the 63,000 who have lung problems in our county alone, you have to actually weigh the data. You say there are exemptions for people with disabilities. There are not. Everywhere there are signs politely asking people to wear masks if they care about other people. That is absolutely vilifying anybody who does not wear masks. In a lot of these big cities, people with disabilities who are not wearing masks are getting beaten to a bloody pulp. Should we have all of our store employees chasing people down, beating residents for not wearing masks because they're afraid of the 100 out of 100,000 cases that have tested positive in this county? That's ridiculous. That is absolutely horrific. You are making the population divided based on an issue that we've already seen. We've already seen this during World War II. That's what Nazi Germany did to the Jews. That's what they did to everybody that they put into concentration camps. They dehumanized those people so that other people didn't care about killing them. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Uh, we have Galaxy Note 9. Um, please, Galaxy Note 9, please give your first and last name. Spell your last name when you unmute yourself. Uh, and also give your address. Yeah, hi there. My name is Chad. My last name is Crawl. Can you hear me? Yes, you can spell okay. your last name, please, and give your address. K-R-U-L-L, -L, and it's Royal Crown Court. In Green Bay? In Green Bay, Wisconsin, Thank yes. You. Go ahead. OK, I guess the first thing that has bothered me about this is the right to choose should not, when it comes to health issues, should not only be to abort an unborn child. I think it's ridiculous that we give people the right to choose something, and yet when it comes to masks, we're going to uh, force that mother who's going to abort her child and has that choice to wear a mask when she does it. Uh, it, it just seems ridiculous. Um, it concerns me that there's no time limit, limit on when this is going to end if it does pass. 99% um, of Brown County is COVID free using your statistics. What number is the magic number where masks won't be needed anymore when COVID is completely gone? Because it's going to become a season of like swine flu and the avian flu and I, I just don't see the point of it. it. I think this is an overreach. I think it is unconstitutional. Um, I also look at things like art. Um, do you realize that many of them need to read lips to communicate? And now everyone's going to be in a mask when they're anywhere that they need help. Also, if this is so contagious and deadly, um, where are the hazmat disposal areas? Uh, we're going to have people wearing all these masks and throwing them all over the place. On the ground. Our city employees can pick them up and store employees can pick them up. They just go into a regular garbage bin at the end of, at the, let me guess, right at the exit of the store, and we're just going to pile all these contaminated masks at the exit of Walmart, for example. No hazmat, nothing. I, I think that's ridiculous. I think that we're, we're missing the big picture here. Um, I, I think that we were supposed to lower the curve. That was the whole point of this, and we have. 
the hospitals literally furloughed people because they had nothing to do. And now they're getting back to normal because guess what? They aren't overwhelmed. So I don't see why we wait till this point. It seems very political. It doesn't seem to make any sense based on science. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Next, we have LGK20. Um, please unmute yourself and spell, uh, say and spell your last name and also give your address. LGK20. Okay, we will move on to Nicole uh, Seleski. Nicole Seleski, please unmute yourself and say and spell your last name for the um, committee, for the council, and then also give your address. Um, Nicole Seleski, S-A-L-E-S-K-E, -E, Tulip Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay. Okay. So both the mayor and Chris Wilkie, CEO of Bell and Health, pointed out that they were seeing increased numbers of cases since the stay-at-home order has been lifted. With increased testing, of course there are going to be increased cases, but who's really suffering? To date, there have been 46 deaths in Brown County from COVID-19, 846 deaths in all of Wisconsin. According to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, 36 of those deaths happened shortly or after the state fair at home order was lifted. So in Brown County, we've seen eight deaths, four of them preliminary since June 1st. We have not seen an increase in deaths. In contrast, we've appreciated a decrease in but this explains the mortality due to COVID-19 is actually on the decline for the 12th week in a row. And not only that, but they lump the COVID deaths together with pneumonia and influenza-like illnesses. So their data includes death from influenza, pneumonia, or COVID-19. To put this in perspective, in 2017, there were 920 deaths from influenza and pneumonia in Wisconsin. To date, there are 846 deaths in Wisconsin due to pneumonia, influenza, or COVID-19. How come we're not seeing an exponential growth in incidence of these numbers if this virus is as serious as we claim it to be? Brown County has 3,348 cases to, to date with a population of about 260,000 people. This is an infection rate of 1.288%. This is hardly a threat to our medical system. In fact, it was argued without a handle on this infection rate, they were nervous we would overwhelm our hospital. But in contrast, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians, and support staff have been furloughed without work because we're waiting for a wave that's yet to come. In fact, according to Wisconsin Hospital Association, right now in the top 10 hospitals in Northeast Wisconsin, there are currently 18 inpatients with COVID-19, 13 ICU COVID, and 34 total COVID-19 patients in our hospitals today, which has actually decreased. Of those 10 hospitals, there's 50 ICU beds, 109 med surge beds, 97 negative flow isolation beds immediately immediately available. Putting mandates on people has never been about decreasing the number of cases. It's to not overwhelm our hospitals, and clearly they're not overwhelmed. Finally, to quote Alderman Scannell concerning people that are against this mandate, they're making a political Political, their political ideology, whatever it is, to make a decision um, on a medical matter. You do not have the right to threaten and risk other people's health. It's our job to make sure our community is safe. I completely agree that this is a medical decision that has to be made in the best interest of everyone. You cannot give a blood transfusion, a med, a surgery, a recommendation without their consent. The blame was um, you have to protect people. So, so pardon me, Alderman Scandal, when I point out that you are the one that's making this political. You made this political when you brought it and, and have it to be in front of Green Bay. And we're just asking for that right to choose. Where does this stop? And my sincere hope that it stops today, now, with this vote. We thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, next is Chris, sorry, Chris Waleski. Uh, Ms. Waleski, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the committee, and give your address. My name is Chris Waleski, C-H-R-I-S-W-O-L-E-S-K-E, -E, and I live on Antelope Trail. Thank you, uh, council members, for uh, hosting this uh, event tonight and allowing uh, the public to speak and um, really giving, I think, consideration and 
to try to understand and appreciate the many perspectives, I think, on this issue. And, and there certainly are, are many perspectives. I'm here um, tonight from a healthcare perspective. Uh, all of the local healthcare systems have signed on to a letter supporting uh, a masking ordinance. And um, because it has been shown, masking has been shown to significantly slow the spread of COVID-19. Um, I would like to uh, reinforce the idea of masking in the current context in particular, because I, I do very much appreciate the fact that we were very successful in flattening the curve uh, during the stay at home order. And people uh, for the most part were staying home. There weren't events, there weren't, um, a lot of uh, places weren't open. And so um, the staying at home really helped us. Today, we want businesses to be able to be open. We want as healthcare to be able to continue to provide care to the entire community to see the schools be able to safely open in the fall. We think that is important, all of these things to the health and well-being of the communities in this region. And so that is why we support uh, masking to continue to help us to flatten the curve. The question about, um, there is a difference between healthcare masks and the uh, face coverings that are being proposed as part of just the general public and how to care for those. So first of all, a face covering can be anything. You can tie a t-shirt, you can tie a bandana, a scarf, anything um, fabric with that, uh, that is multiply would work. So it doesn't have to all be disposable. Um, second, when healthcare workers are wearing a, a surgical mask or a healthcare grade mask, they are doing that to protect themselves from um, viruses and the transmission of um, communicable disease. When they do that, the, um, the virus is on the outside and so there is a different methodology in terms of donning and doffing that is very sophisticated, uh, that they have to be very, in our case, when we're the public and we're wearing a mask, we're, we're protecting others. So the, the potential for the virus is on the inside of our mask. And so when we are touching the outside of the mask, again, you know, there could be contaminants from other places. Yes, so we need to make sure that we're washing our hands and that we're not touching our face. Um, but taking that mask on and off is not nearly as um, complex as the healthcare mask. And I just wanted to um, point that out because that um, issue had been raised. So again, just on behalf of healthcare, it's important to us that we be able to care for everyone in the community. And we believe that the best chance of allowing business and schools and healthcare to continue to do that is with uh, universal masking. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waleski. Next, we have Tara Zacher. Ms. Zacher, please unmute yourself and say and spell your last name for the committee as well as provide your address. Sure, uh, my name is Tara Zacher. My last name is spelled C-Z-A-C-H-O-R and I live at 1584 Park Haven Road in the town of Lawrence. However, my husband works in the city of Green Bay and my stepdaughters also live in Green Bay part of the time. Um, so I have numerous questions and concerns regarding mask mandates. What is the gating criteria? Is it a level of infection rate in Brown County or Green Bay? Is it the death rate in Brown County or Green Bay? What metric will be used to lift any potential face man a mask mandate? Will we be masked until those in favor of masks just feel safer? Are feelings, uh, specifically fear, the prime metric we are using to justify the masking of predominantly healthy citizens? There must be a practical goal that community members can monitor and strive for. Uh, per Wisconsin DHS, as of today, 3,596 county residents had COVID-19 symptoms, onset or diagnosis. The population is 2, 000, or, uh, 264,542 as of the last census. So the current total Brown County COVID-19 infection rate is like 1.36%. And per Wisconsin DH, uh, DHS, as of today, the current Brown County fatality rate is 1%. Does the fatality rate need to be 0% to end a mask mandate? What about the infection rate? Also, according to Wisconsin DHS, 77% of all those who've tested positive in Wisconsin has recovered. Um, I guess let's talk about California. Governor Newsom mandated that face coverings be worn stateside while, any in, or while in any indoor public space. In spite of those strict directives, cases have continued to rise in the state, continuing an upward trend that was already in full swing when the mask mandate went into effect. 
According to Johns Hopkins University, the average daily cases in California have increased from 3,385 on the day of Newsom's order to 8,889 as of July 16th, uh, 16th an increase of 162 percent. Um, the whole premise of this pro pro proposal is that we know better than you about your health. We need to control your uneducated, uncaring, incompetent, and otherwise irresponsible behavior for the greater good of the community. Um, people can disagree reasonably about whether or not they feel that masks help. That's not what is happening. People who feel masks help are ex actively excluding those who disagree. One group is saying you must do as I tell you because I believe I am right and you are wrong. And the other is saying you are free to do as you choose. The other thing I wanted to point out is have medical professionals ever been wrong before? Does one need a medical degree, uh, the letters MD after our names uh, to be educated on this topic? The medical doctors, regulatory authorities, licensing bodies, um, is often seen as the last word on health practices. It's considered an, an infallible institution immune to error. However, its track record has fatal blunders that um, you know, ca cause, uh, come at a high price to society. DDT was once considered safe. Thalidomide, Vioxx, um, it was, uh, mercury, um, it was used in teething powders and creams. Um, I'm not comparing these other atrocities to wearing a mask, but I'm showing that medical doctors also have been seriously wrong before. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. Zacher. Uh, next is Justin Steiner. Mr. Steiner, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the committee, and then provide your address. Can you hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Justin Steiner, last name S-T-E-I-N-E-R. I live on Anderson Drive in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, I'm coming to you guys today as somebody with a disability. Um, I can tell you right now, uh, right today, that I have already been discriminated against because I have not worn a mask. Um, I cannot physically wear a mask, uh, even though the CDC website sites say that people who cannot put on or take off a mask by themselves without assistance, which I cannot do, um, should not be wearing one. And yet in local stores and by residents in Green Bay, I have gotten some pretty serious glares and also people commenting on why I'm not wearing a mask. Um, I, I, I feel discriminated against and there's no reason why any of us should feel discriminated against because of that. Um, I, the, there's been a lot of good points that have been said tonight, and I just want to reiterate a couple of them. Um, one of them is uh, Mr. Uh, Shea, I did, was watching your uh, video while somebody was talking on um, masks being effective against preventing uh, stuff from going in and out. And as you might have seen from his video, you could see that the air going through his mask from his vape was clearly visible. Uh, obviously, a standard face covering isn't going to do anything. So why are we recommending it? Also, another point I want to bring up today, I did notice that uh, uh, Police Chief Smith is in attendance today. Um, uh, honestly, I, I feel bad for him because if this is a mandate, how in the heck are we supposed to enforce something like this? There is already, um, they're already struggling to keep up with other legitimate uh, cases that need to um, be addressed in the city of Green Bay, and by cases I mean emergencies, um, and taking their resources and bringing that towards people who aren't wearing a mask, that is just opening the door for more crime in the city because the, the criminals will know that the police are gonna be busy doing other things. And that's not safe. We can't do something like that. Um, that, that is really all I had to say. Um, thank you. So so much to me and I seriously hope that you guys will consider this um, not as a point of opinion for yourselves uh, no matter what you think I, I, I really hope and pray that you cast aside your own personal opinions while you cast this vote and you listen to the people that you represent thank you have a great day thank you mr. Steiner next we have Sherry Reef Ms. Reef, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name, and give your address for the council. Um, thank you. My last name is um, Reef, R-E-I-F, and my address is 1639 Farland Avenue. 
and that's in Green Bay um, on the east side. Go ahead. So, um, everyone has touched on a lot of what I wanted to touch on. And I just wanted to say that this isn't, for me, it's not a pro-mask or an anti-mask. I know plenty of people that are pro-mask and they are just livid about this blatant overreach of government. And I would feel the same way if we were looking at mandating that people couldn't wear masks because they're associated with criminal activities. And so they would be forced out of stores and things like that. Um, also, if you look at the now, the ones that are being purchased, they all say right on the box that they're not made for this. They don't keep anything out. I've talked to several doctors and nurses, and they have not said what the um, professional on here um, earlier doesn't do anything. By the end of their shift, they're tasting their spit, increased sinus headaches. Um, the masks are saturated. People are touching their face more with masks. and. This is really difficult for me because um, I have PTSD because I am a survivor and it's already hard enough for me to go into places where everyone is masked. And if this becomes a mandate, it's already bad enough that the stores are in it, but they're being very nice, um, at least from what I have run into um, when there's medical reasoning regardless of what those medical reasonings are but what you're going to do is you're going to drive other people to start attacking us and people like myself have already been victimized enough and you're going to force us to continue to be victimized by putting through a mandate like this and it's not right i keep my kids home out of respect for other people because regardless of my feelings of how masks work or don't work or the numbers which I do not believe are true, we've already seen every day we see that numbers are wrong all over the country. So the counts, we can't believe. But I keep my kids home out of the respect. I don't go places a lot out of respect, especially because I can't wear a mask. But I shouldn't be afraid now to go to the store because people are gonna start attacking me because the government says, you have to wear a mask. And they're not gonna care that I say that I have a medical reason. And where does this mandating stop? Does it stop at forced vaccines? Because I'm not gonna take a rush through uh, um, vaccine. Does it, does it stop when we carry papers? You know, where, where do we draw the line? And we just, you, it's not right. And I'm also hard of hearing. So top that onto that um, masking makes it real fun for me to try and understand what a cashier says. So please don't make this a mandate because you're just victimizing us more. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reef. Next, we have Kathy Patsky. Ms. Patsky, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. I'm Kathy Patsky. P-A-T-Z-K-E. I live at 2423 Crest Lane in Green Bay. Go ahead. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, it's been very, very help here. Um, some legitimate reasons why people might be opposed to masks, and I appreciate that opportunity too. Um, I'm an elementary reading interventionist in Green Bay, and I desperately want to get back to interacting with my young students. Um, I've missed them dearly. Teaching reading and writing is dramatically more effective in person. Um, I also was so saddened during the closure when several sets of parents became and just struggled to care for their kids. Um, it was very, very hard to see. I'm also hard of hearing, so we'll pop that onto that um, masking, make it and understand what a cashier says. So please don't make this a mandate because you're just victimizing us more. Um, Thank you. I'm not sure what's happening, but um, I'm Jones. also a mom of a daughter Ms. who wants to spend her senior year of high school in school, and it looks very unlikely that this one, if the Next condition we have Kathy Patsky. Ms. Patsky, please unmute yourself, oh, wow. say and spell your last name for the council, and also provide your address. Uh, Mayor, I, we are, seem to have a technical difficulty. -E. I live at 2423 Crest Lane in Green Bay. 
Um, Mayor, can you hear me? I really appreciate this opportunity. Yes. Uh, Ms. Jeffries, yeah. why, why don't you mute everybody? Sure. Uh, forgive us one second, Ms. Patsky. I think, we, but there's a playback issue. Could you just give me one second to contact um, our IT director, Mayor, and everyone? Thank you. Oh, okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would happen pretty quick. Ms. Jeffries, I think it was just an issue of somebody else being unmuted and us being able to hear it being played back. So I think with everybody muted, with the exception of Ms. Patsky, we, we could be able to, we should be able to move forward. Okay, I just stepped away to um, call Mike. <laughs> so, uh, I think it was just an issue with people being unmuted. So just let's move forward with Ms. Patsky. Okay. All right. Thank you. Did you want me to repeat what I'd already said or just keep going? Uh, just hold on one second. Sorry. Okay. There was an issue with the, yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you. All right. Sorry, Mayor, and sorry, Ms. Patsky. Just give me one second. Ms. Patsky, if you'd like to begin again, that would be wonderful. Go right. You don't have to spell and say your name again. Just begin with your testimony. Can you hear me, Ms. Patsky? I don't know. Maybe. Okay, now can you hear me? Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. All right, you you know, go right ahead. You don't have to say your name or anything again for the committee. You can just begin your testimony all over again. Thank you so much for your patience. No problem. Um, okay, so again, I just appreciate hearing other perspectives. Um, I am an elementary reading interventionist and I really missed my kids during closure. I desperately want to get back um, because reading and writing is dramatically more effective in person. Um, and again, I have a daughter who's going to be a senior in high school. I want her to get back to school, um, but I am concerned that things are getting more serious. And I think um, people mentioned the current data, but the hospitalizations and the mortality could get worse because there's always at least a two week lag behind the spike in cases. Um, I do know um, personally parents of some of my students that became very ill and struggled to take care of their kids, made it very hard for them to be educated during that time. Um, I recently came from North Carolina where they've had a terrible surge in cases, hospitalizations and um, deaths. And so they have instituted a statewide mandate recently. So while I was there, I felt so much safer in North Carolina than I do here. Um, when you went to an outdoor restaurant, you were free to take your mask off while you were sitting and, and eating with your group. But then the minute you stood up and were um, with others, you did wear a mask. Um, same in stores, same in gas stations. Um, I was asked one time I ran into the gas station, I had to go to the bathroom, I forgot to put on my mask. I was asked to leave, I promptly did, and I was appreciative of that reminder. Um, I just felt safer because I felt um, that I didn't know if I might unknowingly have the virus and I felt that I would not be spreading it. I felt that the other people in the gas station, strangers, um, I was not in as much danger if they were wearing masks. Um, so I undoubtedly felt safer there than I do here right now. Um, I just beg the city council to stand up and, and protect us um, I really do think masks help, and I don't think they can hurt in any way. I do not think it is that difficult to wear a mask. I understand there might be cases of disability, and perhaps there could be some kind of um, visual that people could wear to signify that they are exempt from wearing the, the masks. Um, but I do think it's a simple way to protect others if one has the virus without knowing it. Um, I just don't think there is a place for freedoms that spread disease, much the same as I don't think it's um, a freedom to smoke in public and spread 
the smoke through the air to other people. I don't think we should be spreading the virus through the air um, without masks either. Um, so I just um, appreciate your concern and for bringing this up and hope that you will pass this ordinance. Thank you, Ms. Patsky. Next, we have Martin W. Martin W., please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the council, and also provide your address. Martin W. Okay, thank you. Moving on to Kevin. Kevin, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name, say your first name, spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. My name is Kevin Yeager, J-A-E-G-E-R. I live at, at Remington Road, 54302. Thank you, go ahead. All right, um, I felt so inclined to speak today on the topic of masks because my great grand uncle was a stand fearer in the Wafrin SS in charge of Esta Group in A in Lithuania. He would go into towns and he would use the town folk to round up all of the socialists and all of the ethnically different people and he would use them to mark them and then he would hand out little identifiers to mark them. He would let a little bit of time go by and then he would raise a hullabaloo at the town again trying to incorporate the townsfolk to expel these people. He did that to 137,000 people across Central Europe. I guess the thought of being mandated to wear any piece of clothing absolutely terrifies me to the core when I think about the pain and the suffering that it's brought upon my family throughout history and what my family had projected onto thousands of people across Europe. And I think that this is a very slippery slope that needs to be weighed very, very heavily on your conscience before you vote. Because what are we gonna do with the police to the people that refuse to comply? Are we gonna take them away somewhere? Are we just gonna, is it gonna just start with money? Where does it end? I guess at that point, I will, I'll wrap up the rest of my time with a quote from Benjamin Franklin. Those willing to sacrifice a little bit of essential freedom for temporary security deserve neither. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, Mr. Yeager. Yeah, I don't think so either. Just give me one moment. Okay, next we have Dr. Kristen Lyerly. Um, Dr. Lyerly, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. My name is Dr. Kristen Lyerly. It's L-Y-E-R-L-Y. -E I live at 3500 Meadow Sound Drive in De Pere. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Pulling up my notes here. So I am an obstetrician gynecologist and a fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And I represent myself as a member of that organization today, as well as a physician who cares for moms, babies, and families. I'm here to stress the importance the advice of medical experts and public health professionals when it comes to the prevention of COVID. Just yesterday, a joint letter was published. The American Academy of Family Physicians, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American College of, Obst of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American College of Physicians, Pathic Association, and the American Psychiatric Association all stand together to, quote, recognize the indispensable role that public health and scientific experts have in curbing the current pandemic. So why is this? Well, my perspective as an OBGYN 
is that the latest data suggests that pregnant women may be at increased risk for certain manifestations of severe illness due to COVID-19, such as intensive care unit admission and need for mechanical ventilation. I care deeply about these women, and based on many of your testimonies, I hear that many of you do too. As a physician and a community member, I also recognize that it is our common to protect other vulnerable populations, including the elderly, the immunocompromised, and as mentioned earlier, the nearly 25% of Brown County citizens who have lung problems, they're vulnerable. We know that 40% of the spread is by asymptomatic people, and it's spread primarily by respiratory droplets. So where is the science? The evidence is evolving. Case studies strongly support mask use. There are no randomized control trials because they take time and we don't have that time right now. Importantly, there is no data in opposition to face mask use. So it doesn't increase face touching and irritation is preventable. And as far as that doesn't seem to affect surgeons, myself included. Importantly, if two people are wearing masks, those big droplets will be stopped by the mask and very small viral particles can travel about five feet away from each individual. But when an infected person is not wearing a mask, those small viral particles can float through the air 30 feet or more and stay alive for up to 30 hours. So I'm asking you as a physician, a mom, and a community member, port masks, heed social distancing, wash your hands and disinfect surfaces. Let's take care of each other, especially our most vulnerable. Thank you, Dr. Lyerly. You got it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And next we have LGK20. LGK20, please unmute yourself. Say and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. Uh, LGK20, I believe you are unmuted. So please go ahead and say and spell your, your first, say your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the council. LGK20. All right, moving on um, to Kimberly Vote. Uh, <laughs> I think I mispronounced your last name. Can you please um, say your first name and spell your last name for the, the council and also provide your address? Yes, my name is Kimberly, last name Vote. It's V as in violin, O-G-T. I live at 3071 Gothic Court here in Green Bay. And I would say um, thank you for all giving us the time to speak. Um, I wanted to start by saying I, I found it rather ironic that the committee started with the Pledge of Allegiance. And in the very end of the allegiance, it talks about liberty and justice for all. And quite frankly, what this ordinance um, is doing is not providing justice and liberty for all. I think some other people have brought up the statistics and the data, and I could go over that again, but I don't know that that is really what is being looked at or listened to. You also talked about <clears throat> representation. That's what this board is about. And I have to say, if that's what this was about, then the meeting that was held on July 13th, where all of the people did chime in and there was a vote taken. And the vote was ultimately that this was not to move forward. And the mayor took it upon himself to go against what his uh, people are wishing and to go on to TV and say he's going to mandate this ordinance. With that being said, 
I, I'm glad the, the mayor of De Pere is also supporting you, um, but he doesn't represent me. He doesn't represent the people in Green Bay. Uh, and what I find very um, sad is what you're doing is putting Green Bay people against each other. You're making it difficult for people who may have a medical issue, who may have some sort of other issue, and you are going against HIPAA rules and you are going against the American with Disability Act to the point where we have to tell if we have a problem, if we are unable to wear a mask. And your mandate has not gone into effect, but the looks that people give you in the grocery store as of right now is dangerous. And I did take the time to go through every packet. It's so dangerous. Excuse me, sir, it's my time. What is so dangerous? People are giving you dirty looks. People are accosting you. People are telling, like looking at you like you have no right to be, that is dangerous. Now I would like some of my time back. I took the time to print out this document and one of my main concerns is now you're going to make the businesses be the one that mandate this and they're having a tough enough time. So I've been in the stores and everyone is thinking, well, who is going to go around and tell the people who think they're using the masks appropriately, they are not. Because if you go into any store, you're going to see people right here. The nose is out. This is not appropriate. They think they are. Now someone has to tell them they're not. Other people have it down here while they're talking. They're not appropriate. Are the cops going to be called? Are the people in the store going to have to tell people they have to leave because they're not using this right? Now I'm going to touch it. Now it's not doing any good. The boxes say they don't do any good. Um, so I think it's, it's shameful that now our police department are going to be called out to, to debate this mask. Um, with the other part, the sunset clause is, uh, goes on that this can go on indefinitely until such time as it is deemed not necessary. That is not a set time. So there are some- Thank you, Ms. Boat. Your time has expired. I feel I should have had more time. Since. I, I did actually give you more time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Thomas Matson. Mr. Matson, please unmute yourself. Say your first name and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. Mr. Matson? Mr. Matson. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have Maddie Barris. Um, Maddie Barris, please unmute yourself. Say your first name and spell your last name for the council, and provide your address. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so actually, I'm sorry. The only way I could get on is through my daughter. So um, I'm Erin Barris. I'm at 117 Swiss Meadow Lane in Green Bay. And can you spell your last name, please? Yes, Barris. B as in boy, E-R-E-S. Thank you so much. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I, I understand there's so much tension around this topic, and it, it honestly hurts my heart. <laughs> so... Um, uh, it's not hard. I have a son with autism and he has struggled putting on the mask. He, it's difficult for him as well. Um, but in order to save one person, I truly believe in this. There were babies in the ICU in a place in Texas. So you can't bring up abortion and you can't bring up all these different issues about immune systems and whatnot. They haven't even lived a year, and they're in the ICU dealing with this. Um, wear a mask. It doesn't hurt. It will, it, you know what? And if my son can't wear one because it's too hard for too long, then I will put a message on him that lets people know or he can't go in. Um, it is so important. It's not about you. It's not about any of you. It is about other people. And I just don't get why that's so hard to put a mask over your face. 
I just don't get it. And maybe guess what? Maybe it doesn't work 100% of the time because this is, like the doctor said, this is new. We don't understand it all. We don't get it 100% and we won't for a long time. But it's not that hard. And if it is that hard, then let people know. Because I'm pretty sure that if you're one of the people and very few of you, that if you can't put on a mask, I'm pretty sure if you let people know how hard this is, they're going to sympathize with you. It's not that hard. It's about communication. It's about saying what you can do, what you can't do. It's about communicating. It's about respect. It's about education. It's about, guess what? None of us have all the answers right now. None. Every single person I listen to, you don't have the answers, nor do I. So be a little nicer, be a little kinder, and put a mask on if you can. And if you can't, then explain it. That's my point. Thank you so much, Ms. Barris. Martin W., um, please unmute yourself. Say your first name and spell your last name for the uh, council and also provide your address. My name is Martin Weber, W-E-B-B-E-R. I live at 3307 Beach Lane in Green Bay. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, all, I sent in uh, quite a bit of information to all the older persons, including studies and uh, links, but there was a couple of things I wanted to address before I get to my main uh, subject here. Uh, Chris Walesky mentioned uh, 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 cloth masks. There are studies that say the cloth masks are ineffective, and I have submitted uh, that information. N95 masks, they only pr pr protect the, the wearer, okay? It has a one-way valve on it. Uh, Dr. Lyerly, uh, if pregnant women are, are at risk, then they should quarantine, just like the elderly and other people with uh, uh, comorbidities. Okay, you don't lock down the rest of the population. Um, now, it, it, one thing I have noticed about the medical community is they do not look at the bigger picture, including the economic impl implications here. They just seem to want to deal with the virus and that's it. They're not taking in the long-term effects uh, of shutting down schools and businesses. And that's going to create just a nightmare. My main uh, subject I wanted to cover was Mayor Genrick's uh, suggestion is that business is to enforce this mask mandate. Okay? Now you're basically asking many of which are minimum wage employees to become law enforcement. Okay? I submitted links to quite a few news stories about uh, uh, incidents, including physical alterate, altercations cross country where employees are making a mandate to people coming in that are not wearing wet masks and they're being physically assaulted. I, did, I go to uh, Menards quite a bit. One day I was at the service desk and somebody started screaming. And I said to the woman that was helping me, I said, boy, that's, that's not good. She said it happens almost on a daily basis. And she said they've had to have the police come a couple of times because uh, it got physical. This is happening across the country. You've seen the business links I sent you, or the, the links, the news stories uh, regarding this. These are employees, they're terrified, and that is not what they signed up for. They have no business enforcing this type of thing and so you're putting businesses and employees at risk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Weber.
Next, we have Stefan Kappas. Stefan Kappas, please uh, say your first name, spell your last name for the, for the council, and then also provide your address. Yeah, my name's uh, Stefan Kappas. Kappas is spelled K-A-P-P-E-S. And my address is W1643 County Road VV, which is in Seymour. But a lot of my business I do, like with meeting people, is in the city of Green Bay. And I just wanted to admit my concerns kind of in different areas here. Ones have already been expressed, I think, kind of on a constitutional level. And I understand this is a very real virus, um, but from data that I have just looked at and just from things that I've heard is usually just like with a person that recently mentioned about the mask, only the N95 masks help the in it and the cloth masks and surgical masks do not help because of how the aerosols work. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring kind of more at home is my sister who is pregnant and is working in a workplace which is requiring a mask, but she actually is in conversations with her work about you know, the options depending on where she is in her workplace and not using it. But she uh, wrote that I'm gonna read here about what she's been experiencing. So she, she, she has asthma and recently, you know, over the past year, she didn't really have much symptoms uh, until she started wearing masks again. So I'm gonna read a comment she made over uh, social media. She says, it's been causing uh, asthma attacks. If it doesn't escalate to that, I have shortness of breath, dizziness where I almost felt fall over, along with headaches and horrible congestion. Days I wasn't working and not wearing a mask, I would feel much better. I am also pregnant, which increases my risks while wearing math, uh, mask wearing. I was also checking my blood pressure while mask wearing versus not wearing a mask. The mask was causing me hypertension. It would go up to 155 when not even busy or exerting myself at work. Then days I was off and, and walking and exercise, my blood pressure would only get as high as 133. So in the end, it's been far more risky for me to wear them for the small percentage of protection uh, they would give and that was a comment she made so that's what she really experiences so kind of when I see this um, if through her work as businesses have been mandating masks for employees and even for the public but if she does work with her work and they allow certain exceptions and then that changes I kind of can see these kinds of things uh, being an issue and just the last comment here um, maybe not as important as some but if for those who are Christians, this seems approaching a way of what would be known as the mark of the beast, may it sound crazy, but if you can't wear a mask, or, I mean, if you don't wear a mask without going into a store, you can't buy or sell. Uh, so just think of that direction uh, for those of you that are Christians, but for those that aren't, think about the other points I made. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kappas. Next, we have uh, Julie Baldo Atkinson. Um, please state your first name and spell your last name for the uh, council, and then also provide your address. My name is Julie Baldo Atkinson. My last name, A-T-K-I-N-S-O-N. I live at 830 Christiana Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. Uh, so I am very much against the government mandated mask requirement for a multitude of reasons. Um, just to kind of take one point off the table, um, I have a loss in my family due to COVID. So I am not somebody that's untouched by this virus. I understand that it's deadly, it's dangerous. It is real, um, and I have done enormous amounts of research, obviously, um, regarding this topic, including masks. Um, and if you actually go out and read the studies and not just take other people's word for what they say, 
they all make it abundantly clear that people doing normal activities, walking around, not yelling, not screaming, not being in close proximity, the amount of virus they shed, the amount of droplets they shed are either none at all or very little. Like it is just the science isn't there for that, right? And a lot of the medical professionals that have been on have said yes. They always say yes, we're figuring things out, we're developing things. And I would agree with that. They are doing that. They have an hypothesis and they want all of us, the entire community, to be the experiment. If we look at the content of the ordinance itself, it in no way or shape says doing this will decrease cases by X percent or X absolute value because they don't know that it will. This is all you know, a guessing game, right? And we're supposed to just blindly follow um, whatever comes out of the mouth of the talking heads on TV, uh, of doctors who previously said these were not effective, but now say they are, uh, and it's just not true. And there's a bunch of unintended consequences to this too that other people have touched upon, right? It's gonna increase discrimination of people that can't wear a mask. It's happening even when that mandate's not in effect, right? There's uh, religious exemptions that is not in the ordinance. There's no religious exemption in the ordinance, right? So if I have a, a sincere belief that it's against my religion, I'm still gonna be penalized for that. You know, and we're supposed to believe that um, the only thing that matters is, is science, and that's just inaccurate. We don't elect scientists into political office because there are more things that matter in this world than the dictates of a doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. Give me one moment. Uh, Mr. Matt Miller, Matt Miller, please um, say your first name and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. Sure, my name is Matthew Miller, last name M-I-L-L-E-R, and I live on St. Jude Street in Green Bay. Go ahead. Um, again, thank you for uh, granting the time to the public. I, I wasn't sure uh, the public was going to be consulted, and I'm glad to see that it is. Um, First, uh, I do not agree that emergency powers uh, should be used during times of what uh, is little quantifiable emergency, in, in my opinion. Um, smoking, you know, I've heard that being compared, and, you know, smoking is a choice. Um, it is not a virus. Uh, you know, nobody is choosing to take up a coronavirus habit. Um, uh, people are, you know, I've noticed taking up a lot of moral conjecture, uh, politicians and uh, fellow citizens alike. Uh, you know, personally, uh, you know, my moral stance, I, I care about people's choices and liberties um, without political bias. You know, I, I care about that um, for all Americans. It's unique to our nation and it's something I, I care about uh, for our citizenry. Um, and I don't mean to sound callous, but, you know, let's face it, you know, people do die every year. Um, I've, I've lost uh, my father, my, my father in law. Uh, both from disease. Uh, common flu has been killing people for decades. Uh, personally, I don't want to live in, a, in an America with zero risk tolerance. Uh, I, I wouldn't want that for my son. Future generations, there is risk and we take on risk by being alive. It's, it's important that we, uh, we, how we address risk. Um, and I think one of the best ways is to, to address that based on the trust with our fellow Americans. Um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, I just don't feel like we should compromise on our American liber liberties, even though uh, fear uh, pervades. Um, our, I would say um, also uh, I am concerned about the mask mandate, mandate uh, creating a, a certain overstatement of the feeling of safety. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard of the, I've referred to the Peltzman effect, I suppose here. Um, you know, are we, are we basically making a, a short-term mandate with a long-term consequence that we don't understand as we've all mentioned data is unfolding 
Um, in some ways, I, I can envision people saying, oh, well, everybody's wearing masks now. Yay, it's safe. Let's go in public. I, I think I've heard a lot of statements uh, on the pro side of the mandate um, saying that they feel safe. Well, it's not going to be safe. It doesn't just spread that way. There are other ways, and it's very important. I think we understand that. Um, I've, I've seen every store I've gone to, and certainly myself and how I conduct my behavior, I stay away the six feet. That's been the, the condition, right? I, I would wear a mask if I can't maintain that distance, and I haven't had trouble doing that in public. Um, this is, uh, I would also say, uh, you know, the evidence is evolving. Um, and again, that's being a, a, a big piece of this. Uh, we don't understand, and yet we're trying to mandate. And the rationale is just not seem to be on top of people's mind. And we're in a, in a point of moral conjecture. Uh, re research has shown, you know, I've seen things coming up literally weekly, right? Or even daily, um, you know, talking about this broken heart syndrome. I heard that from Aurora Health even this morning. Thank you, uh, Mr. Creasing, Miller. Yep, your, okay. your time has expired. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Seth Johnson. Mr. Johnson, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name for the council, and also provide your address. Yes, sorry. It's actually Andrea Johnson. Oh, hello. J-O-H-N-S-O-N. -S okay. And I live off of Edinburgh Road in Green Bay, 54311. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say first and foremost, thank you to the city council for you guys listening to us, especially the ones that have respected listening um, to us. I realize that the majority of you already have your minds made up as to how you are going to vote for this. I would hope that you truly, all of the information and sides for everyone tonight weigh in on that. We have heard so many different things from doctors and the professionals that are in support of masks. I would love to hear something from a doctor that isn't in support of a mask, but no one had really taken that time to seek out that person to help give a benefit from their side of the story. Um, a, a lot of points have already been touched on tonight. The one thing um, that is very concerning for me is yesterday in the interview, um, the mayor saying that if you don't wear a mask, this will simply just be trespassing. That is um, probably one of the most ridiculous things I've heard. So now with the system, with everything that has been going on, with all the different economic times, you are now going to put that onto our police system, which then who is going to pay for that? For those calls, simply for the fact that someone is not wearing a mask or refusing to wear a mask. And again, every single person then coming in is going to be questioned why I am wearing a mask or why I'm not wearing a mask. That is not liberty. That's not freedom. That's not anything. Um, someone, uh, sorry, Chris Wohler uh, explained that the mask is to protect yourself and keep your saliva in. I've never known a person that I've come in contact with to spit on me um, or to really spit around me. I, I have never come in contact with that. Um, I feel like everyone is adults and are able to withhold themselves to the six feet. Um, the next point is, and I know somebody else brought it up, um, is the mask used correctly. I go to stores pretty much daily um, and I wear a mask to help protect others, even though I'm not in support of it. Um, I will go ahead and say that half of the people within that time do not wear that mask correctly. So if they sneeze, those particles go over. So how is that going to be uh, enforced as well if it's the fact that now that is going to be trespassing if someone does not wear a mask? Um, thank you, that's all that I have. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next we have um, Eric. LeQuinn, uh, Mr. LeQuinn, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. My name is Eric Lerquin, L-E-U-R-Q-U-I-N. I reside on South Norwood Avenue in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. Johnson. I'm just providing a different sort of perspective. Um, 
I work for one of the larger employers that just started the mask mandate for the general public. I work for Walmart. Uh, we're now in day two of the mandatory face mask coverings, and there has been little to no issues uh, arising from the, our ask of the customers to wear the face masks. I feel that business owners, events, uh, organizers are well within their power to manage this issue on their own. And that's um, a government mandate by the city of Green Bay is just unnecessary. That is all. Thank you so much, Mr. LeQuinn. Give me one moment. Okay, next we have Xander Newman. Xander, please uh, unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Uh, thank you, name's Xander Newman, N-E-U-M-A-N. I reside on Linden Drive in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. Um, so, I'm the son of a nurse who raised me as a single mother for the first 12 years of my life. I'm involved in the whole healthcare situation. This is about getting people back to work, getting things back to normal right now. This is about trying to keep us safe. And we need to make sure that we're doing what we have to do to keep our family and our community safe. Uh, a, a lot of uh, members of the community have brought up how we aren't certain that the science is there, but even if it isn't, we can't lose this. There's nothing we're losing by wearing masks. And uh, similarly, like, Similarly, a lot of people have brought up the concern about uh, feeling uneasy wearing masks, and that's, that, that is a choice. And I think that is, even if that's not allowed within the mandate, I think that's a quick answer or question and answer. You walk into a store, hello, you're not wearing a mask. You answer, oh, I'm sorry, I feel unwell right now. And, and that's something that my family has run into in the past. And the, the dangerous looks people are talking about, that's... Whether or not the mandate's here, that's not going to stop. And even I myself wearing a mask have gotten like the strange looks for wearing an N95 if, while shopping. Uh, I, I think it's just a result of our climate. I don't think this, this mandate. Uh, what we need to do is protect our community and make sure that we're staying safe. The curve has been flattened for now, but we need to maintain this flattened curve while transitioning back to normalcy. And if we're going to not require people to wear masks and then go back to normalcy, we are another explosion in cases like we saw uh, a couple months ago. As our president said today, uh, the hard truth is that things are likely going to be getting worse over the next few weeks and months before they get better. And I think it's everyone's responsibility in our community to ensure we are keeping ourselves as safe as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Newman, thank you. LG K20, I know you've tried a couple of times. Uh, can you unmute yourself and uh, just say a word or two so no, I know you can hear us? I see that you are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, Noah Becker, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Noah Can Becker? I'm Noah Becker. Yes, hi. Am I audible? Yes, you okay, absolutely you. are. Go right uh, ahead. I'm Noah Becker. I live at 1254 Reed Street, uh, Green Bay 54303. Thank you. And can you spell um, your last name for the council, too? All right. My apologies. B-E-C-K-E-R. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I will keep this brief. I think you guys have heard most of it. Um, my... I am against a mask ordinance while saying I am strongly pro-mask. 
Um, I definitely wear a mask in, if I'm anywhere close to other people in public. You know, I think that's I think that's what we should be doing. To if I have any chance of spreading COVID to somebody, I'm going to wear a mask to try to prevent it. But I am a little bit nervous about enforcement. From what I read in the ordinance, um, having businesses try to enforce it, I, I don't know how well it's going to go, to be honest. And I don't want to overtax the police department either. I know those concerns have been brought up. Those, those are the two main concerns I have. I don't know how fair it is to make employees go and confront probably pretty angry people when they're told to put on a mask. Um, I also want to point out that there's already a high level of distrust and anger among the public and the government. Whether that's justified or not is, is irrelevant, it's, it's there. And I think if masks are mandated, people who have generally been complying with it are going to stop doing it. That's my worry because that af when, um, when the shutdown first began, people were doing it pretty, everyone was pretty much you know, in it together for a couple weeks. But then they started to get distrustful of government. And I think it's just an aspect of, of our culture that, that that will happen. So I worry that people will stop wearing a mask if, we, if the ordinance does get passed. I'm also a little bit concerned about how long it will last. I saw that in the ordinance that the sunset is whenever the state of emergency ends. And I am glad to see a sunset in there, definitely. But I don't know when, when it's going to stop getting renewed, right? Because every council meeting, the ordinate, the state of emergency seems to have been renewed. So without any end date in sight, I think people will be even less trustful of this and they'll be less willing to, to you know, do their part um, than and if the ordinance doesn't get passed. Uh, we've seen big retailers have already all forced masks, which they, if I owned a business, I certainly would. I think it's the right move. But I, I just am worried that people will stop masks and might spread it more if the ordinance gets passed. Thank you very much, appreciate the time. Thank you, Mr. Becker. iPhone Jess, iPhone Jess, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Um, my name is Jessica Gilbert, uh, spell G-I-L-B-E-R-T. Uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and my address is 2331 Farland Avenue. Thank you, go ahead. Okay, so I have a few questions. Um, the mayor uh, made his announcement and they brought up new evidence. And I'm kind of confused about this new evidence because the only thing I really see mainly is droplets. And I'd like to see some studies out there that does not involve droplets just because there's other ways of transmission and I've seen so many studies, NIH articles, Oxford articles stating the opposite. So it seems even the medical studies are flip-flopping. Um, also in the resolution providing face coverings within the city of Green Bay, it's mostly based off experience. It does um, bring up something about studies, but mostly it's about experience. And I think it should be more about science. Um, so also like I just, I know the smoking was brought up. Um, the CO, the carbon monoxide from smoking is dangerous, but the carbon dioxide from inhaling your own carbon dioxide from breathing by wearing a mask is also dangerous. Uh, Seatbelts, not everybody has to ride in a car. Everybody has to go to a store and get food. There's over 25,000 members on Wisconsinites Against Mandatory Face Masks, the Facebook group. Um, this order ordinance would divide families. It would divide Green Bay it would divide our country. Um, does Green Bay really want to do uh, start something like this? And also like family members are shaming and blaming each other. It's getting 
really dividing. Instead, we need to unite. Um, there's, I want to say that I eat very healthy, and I don't think that the government should dictate what I should do, especially when they may eat fast food or not eat healthy. The Lancet said 11 million deaths a year are linked to unhealthy diets. Maybe we should start with having healthier diets, educating people about eating healthy. Instead of this, I don't think it's fair. My body, my choice. Our forefathers fought hard for the Constitution, and we're just giving up rights. Um, this could be discrimination, and it could lead to lawsuits. So many questions, so very little evidence. Who has the right to decide? Again, my body, my choice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. Okay. Next we have, I believe Thomas Matson. Um, Mayor, did Thomas Matson already speak? I believe he had come up. No, before. I have. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. I think you had come up before. Thank you so much. Hold on one second, Mr. Matson. Yeah, I tried before. Yes, Sorry, you did try. I okay. I couldn't recall if you had spoken. Thank you so much. So, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the Thomas council. Thomas Matson, M A T T S O N. Um, I live at 146 Alpine Drive in Green Bay. Go ahead. And I'm, I wanted to chime in because there's a few things that seem to be overlooked. Well, not really overlooked, but a lack of appreciation. The fact that if you guys are really concerned about masks, which I'm not disputing for lots of sick people, it's appropriate to be concerned, then the city is the one who should be giving them N99 and N95 masks to these people. Because you're, you're working with the theory that everybody knows what masks they should wear, but almost 99% of the masks that are out there do nothing. Okay, so that's something you might want to consider. And then, of course, you have the liability for giving out the wrong mask and all that kind of stuff. And um, initially, when this COVID started, they said, don't use the N99 and N95 mask for all of us because it was supposed to be for the hospital workers. So maybe that's going to cause a shortage in Green Bay. I'm not exactly sure, but it's something you might want to be concerned about. Secondly, earlier we had a doctor that was on it said um, airborne stays um, appropriate or not. Stays in, the COVID stays in the air for 30 hours. I just online at Harvard, they said it's three hours max. Um, and then another thing about the lawsuits that somebody brought up, in Georgia, they just went to court to get rid of Alabama's, um, or Atlanta or someone down there, so they wanted to have a mask. So the Georgia governor went to court and he got in the court so the city can't mandate masks. So if you do this, it's gonna go to court and get overruled right away and we're all wasting our time. Then um, another thing that's interesting, which I think should be taken into account to mitigate the, the fear that's out there, is everybody saying we've got all these tests and everybody's getting sick. There's two instances that are real important. Just recently, the White House said they want all COVID test data to be sent to the White House. And Florida magically had reduced their amount of positive tests by 90,000 because they were giving COVID positives to people with asthma. And then in green, a uh, retired um, representative um, wife, uh, uh, Tina Pridemore, Pridemore, I believe her name is, uh, Facebook that herself and her husband went to go get tested. They were lying for three hours. They filled out the information, gave their address, and after three hours they left. They just received a positive notice that they were sick. Never got tested, okay? That's kind of an important thing. Now the other thing I would be more concerned about is we have all these old people that are um, in essence disabled because they're, well, they're old and having problems. Um, those people that have been forced to stay at home are staying in very hard, very hot apartments and houses and don't have air conditioning, and they're being forced to go to hospitals. So if I was going to work on something, I'd work on getting those people air conditioning or get them to a place where they can get some help. Um, basically, it's all I really got to say. I just think that um, this is a mess. the same thing with people with TB and AIDS, saying you're contagious, so we're going to put you away. Didn't happen, and this is an ovary. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Matson. Next, we have Michael Atsit, 
Uh, Mr. Adsit, please say your first name, unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Mr. Adsit? Oh, okay. okay, I just found the unmute button on the computer and my phone. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, we certainly can. Please say your first okay. name, spell your last name, provide your address. Michael Adsit, A-D-S-I-T, 822 James Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54303. Um, go, I go ahead. Don't, I don't have a whole lot to say that has not already been said. I just want to say I'm against having the masks mandated, partially because of um, just kind of the joy of getting to see smiles on people's faces, too. <laughs> it's been fun, but... Um, we're adults, not children. If businesses do not want people to come in without a mask, they can require it, and that gives the choice to shop or not. And I think letting the people decide with their money that way is a good way to do it. And, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Adsit. Next, we have Ryan Hatch. Uh, Mr. Hatch, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. Hi, this is Ryan Hatch, uh, one, 119 Crestview Lane. I'm in De Pere. Uh, I work in Green Bay. Uh, first of all, thank you for, for allowing us to participate today. Um, <clears throat> I'm in opposition to this, um, but I also want to acknowledge the heart of a lot of people on here that really mean well. Um, our, my grandparent is in uh, an assisted living facility and currently in quarantine. So I, I get it. Like people, some people ha are at high risk. Um, that being said, I think this, uh, for a lot of reasons, should not be, uh, should not be put in place. Um, for the record, I've been keeping track. We are at a four to one ratio against. That's 21 to five. If anyone's keeping track, four to one against. Uh, first of all, I want to say this is unenforceable. Um, the police are unable to regulate this. There's already enough pressure on our police right now, uh, and you're asking them to take on so much more. I support blue, and um, you're asking the impossible of them. Uh, you're also asking the impossible of businesses that have to deal with these confrontations. Uh, secondly, you're going to be dividing the city in half. Um, this is only going to increase tensions when tensions are at a record high. I mean, we all feel it. Something's wrong with the country right now. And you're going to just going to drive a wedge through, through the, I think that masks are fine. I wear one when I go to the grocery store. I do. Uh, I carry hand sanitizer when we go out in, in around town. We do. I think that you should be able to do whatever you need to protect your family. And I think, I believe in freedom of choice, uh, for your family and for your business. Uh, three, you're ignoring the practical failures. This just isn't going to work, right? Like children are excluded. My children are playing with the other kids on the playground. Like you, you're not going to prevent that from happening. This is going to happen in every neighborhood, everywhere. Um, this isn't going to stop what you think it is. And there's all these practical failures. You saw um, Michael Shea. He was right uh, smoking right through uh, the cloth. The N95 only protects the wearer. It exposes the public, right? Uh, this is totally not gonna have the desired effect. So it'll make you feel good, but on a practical level, it, is, it, will, it will fail. Fourth, um, we're making decisions based on flawed data. Uh, the, the false positive rate is 50%. That means half the people that are testing positive actually don't have it. The testing's flawed. And there's so many more reasons, but I, I'm gonna come to this. I believe that you should have a strong suggestion for a mask. Sure, come out with that. Say, hey, we believe there should be, a, everyone should wear a mask, that's fine. But I believe that private private business and, and families should make the decision. Freedom is under attack in the country right now. And I think it's up to us to, to say, it's up to the family to decide, it's up to the business to decide what is right for them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hatch. Next, we have Nate Hyde. 
Mr. Hyde, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. Good evening. Um, name is Nathan Hyde. Last name is H-Y-D-E. I live at 671 Sunny Crest Street in Green Bay. Oh, I'm sorry. You cut out there. So can, you sure can you repeat oh, your address? Um, That's okay. I'm so sorry. You cut out. Can you repeat your address one more time? Yep, you just 671 cut out. 671 Sunny Crest. Great. Thank you. Go ahead. First, thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I, I, I've, I've heard some some fun comments uh, this evening. So we'll start with the first one, that uh, some people won't wear a mask properly. While, while that is true, um, it's, it's still gonna have a positive benefit if we were to have a mandate throughout our community. Um, not everybody wears a seatbelt properly. Not everybody washes their hands properly. However, if there is still an added benefit from washing your hands for five seconds as opposed to 20 seconds. Secondly, we continue to hear about how this is tyranny that our, our local government or, or state government or federal government wants to require masks. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Where, where are all of these tyranny warriors when we have to wear pants or shoes or shirts into the grocery store? I don't hear people saying that that's tyranny. Um, so that, that's another asinine argument. Additionally, unless all the parents that are on this phone call, unless you want to play teacher again this fall and winter and spring, when our kids are supposed to go back to school, it is extremely vital that we get this virus under control. So once again, if you want your kids to go back to school, it is extremely important that we get this under control. And one way we can do that is wear a mask. It's very, very simple, people wear a mask. Additionally, we have proven as a community over the last four months that we can't be trusted to do the right thing. When the Supreme Court ruled that the stay-at-home order had to be lifted, we had people at the bars that same night pretending like the pandemic was over. And it's not, it's still here. Yes, this is hard. Yes, this is painful. Yes, this is very inconvenient. But requiring our community to wear a mask is another inconvenience, but it's the right thing to do, and we need to do it as a community. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Just give me one second. Next, we have... Britton Durham. Britton, please uh, unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we certainly can. Okay, so before I say my name, uh, so someone so kindly messaged me on Facebook because I thought you really had to raise your hand, and so I've been raising <laughs> my hand through the entire meeting. Uh, oh. And there are some other people on the call that still have their hands raised, and, and so they messaged me that there's a setting in this meeting or Zoom thing that says uh, raise and lower hand. So if you're still raising your hand and you haven't clicked that setting, she's not gonna see you. Um, so that I had to say that. Um, so my name is Britton Durham. I live at a, uh, 1124 14th Avenue in Green Bay. Go ahead, need? thank you so much. Am I good? Yes, you are, go right ahead. Okay, so um, I just first wanna say thanks to the city council for letting us speak. Um, I respect everybody's opinions. Um, so I'm an Afghanistan war veteran, and I kind of, you know, took issue, issue with uh, Mayor Gingrich saying that it's just a small sacrifice. So I joined the military after 9-11 to make that sacrifice uh, for um, our freedoms and to protect this country. Uh, but with sacrifices come loss of freedoms and choice. And so we get so used to saying, that we want to be safe and everything like that, but it's one it's a one additional thing. So we got to go through airport screening, we got to be monitored by the NSA uh, and all these other things. So uh, just a couple things that haven't been addressed tonight um, is the infection fatality rate for uh, COVID-19 by this reported by the CDC on a Reason article on 5/24/2020 is around 0.03. The flu is currently 0.01. Um, additionally, who's out to gain uh, from 
this pandemic. And I'm not saying that COVID isn't real. I'm saying that it is real. I believe that um, you know it does cause serious injuries and people to die, unfortunately. But who's out to gain? So every time a hospital patient is admitted to the hospital, they get $13,000 from Medicare. When people with COVID are put on ventilators, they're getting $39,000. Um, the AstraZeneca was saying today that they would have 1.5 billion vaccines produced by the end of next year. So who's making that money? So I'm just saying that um, I, I'm not for a mask mandate. Just I wear my mask when I go out in public. I'm just saying that it's unenforceable. Um, I get it. You know, people should be wearing masks, but I, I don't think we should put the the resources and the strain on our local law enforcement and have to uh, manage um, having businesses and enforcing that rule. Additionally, um, who I haven't heard anything in the media in regards to how these testing are these tests are being completed. So, so globalresearch.ca is a very good news site if you're interested in getting a different uh, perspective on COVID, foreign policy, and everything like that. And that you know the PCR tests are not; they're basically meaningless. So there is no gold standard to measure the PCR test that is being conducted to allege that people have contracted COVID-19. So there's always a big picture. I just want people to open their eyes to that. Uh, you give a little, we lose more. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Durham. Next, we have Jason Davies. Um, Jason Davies, please uh, unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Good evening, City Council. My name is Jason Davies. I'm a resident in the city of Green Bay, located at 3490 Spyglass Hill Drive, uh, District 1. Uh, thank you uh, for your time. Um, the reason I'm here tonight was by invite of several people. I know all of you have made your decisions already, so I'm not going to harp to the choir about what may be a better choice or what may be a worse choice. Uh, but let's talk about mask facts uh, in a way that is applicable to Green Bay. We have a lot of waste with disposable masks that we're handing out. Um, I see them littered all over the sidewalks. I see them flung out of people's cars. And personally, it's hazardous. Um, if I do work in a hospital or if I do work outside of an ER as a contractor, as whatever job of the four companies I run, one of the things I have to be cognizant of is air quality. Um, if I go into St. Vincent Hospital, for example, and I start drilling holes in walls, I have to set up HEPA filters. I have to ensure that I'm not doing stuff that's destructive to the ER. I have to ensure that dust that I'm making is adequately taken care of. And so the fact that we're demanding people walk into stores, here's a free mask, and they're spitting in it, coughing in it, being unhygienic. Those who've taken time to not brush their teeth or brush their teeth have mouth diseases, have oral diseases, canker sores, pustules, etc. They're pushing that all into basically what we're claiming by health fact is a filter. And this filter is then coming off of people. It's being touched by bare hands. And it's being smeared on faces as they're pulling this off. And two things are happening. One, it's getting hung on the car mirror and it's creating traffic hazards. Secondly, something more relevant is it's going back on the person, getting smeared around some more. And now that this bacteria has had time to flourish, it's all over these people's faces. They sit down not washing hands because Society can't be trusted, right? We are five seconds in, five seconds out. We're licking stuff, touching it, and then we're touching the table surfaces. So it's good that we have cleanliness and common sense and disinfectants and whatnot. But what I'd like to implore all of you to think about the reality of this is, why is there no biohazard disposal anywhere mandated? Why outside of a store is there not a red canister that says, this mask that's been taken off of someone may have COVID on it, but it may have strep on it, it may have measles on it, it may have the flu bug, it may have a pseudomonas, it may have the most disgusting bacteria virus on the planet. And you're saying it's okay to take it with you, fling it around, bring it out into the air without any education towards any of our citizens in Green Bay. You're saying, do this, shove a t-shirt over yourself, 
you're good. You should know what you're doing. You're a responsible citizen. You voted. You obviously elected the right officials to do the job. So I implore you, elected officials, educate the public. Don't waste our time with rhetoric and creating crazy stories. Let's be effective in our learning and hope that everyone can come together to a conclusion. Have a great night. Thank you, Mr. Davies. Okay, LG K20. Hopefully we can hear you this time. Can you say a word? This is Leanne. Okay, hold on one second. Um, so Ms. Kramer, uh, I see you're unmuted. Please say your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the council. All right. So this is Leanne Kramer, C-R-A-M-E-R, -E 702 Neville Avenue in Bay. Um, I have a couple of things. Number one, the, I was out on the CDC site. People keep talking about this as a pandemic. We are very close to an epidemic. Epidemic is the threshold is 5.7 and we are at 6.4. Um, to the gentleman before about saying that we need to be wearing masks for to get our kids back into schools, the way that the teachers union is going right now, that will not happen. My opinion on that is fire all the teachers. If they don't want to get back into the schools, fire them. Um, furthermore, most of the TV stations were doing polls on Facebook. And even Green Bay Press Gazette did a poll. And out of all those polls, they ran them for like six days. Every single one of them was like a 70% to like a 40 to maybe 50% that did not want the mask ordinance. Like I told another alderman, I said, you can highly suggest that citizens wear it. We are all adults. We know what is right for us. We have brains. We're not stupid people. Treat us like adults. We're not kids. So highly suggest that we wear a mask. But you're also, I've been reading lots of um, a, a private group that I belong to, and there are people that own businesses in Green Bay and have already said, this mass ordinance goes into place. They are going to be breaking their lease or selling their, moving their business out of Green Bay. So we're gonna end up with lost revenue and going back to John Vanderlease's opening statement. City employees are already talking about furloughs and wages being cut. Well, if people start losing businesses and they start moving out of the city, we're gonna have loss of tax revenue. So then yes, city employees will have to be furloughed. City employees will have to have their wages cut. So is it really worth it to make this a mandate and cause more division within people within this city? Or can you just say, we highly suggest that people wear a mask to try to alleviate some of the germs. But don't make it a mandate. I would hate to see this city go down the tubes, but that's where we're going if we keep it up because we're not gonna have the tax, the tax revenue coming in and people will pull their businesses. They have already said so. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kramer. Next, we have Jordan Block. Uh, Mr. Block, can you please unmute yourself and uh, say your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the council. All right, my name is Jordan Block. Last name spelled B as in Bravo, L-O-C-H like hotel, 
and I live at 216 South Jackson Street, apartment 8 here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Well, first and foremost, to the mayor and the city council, thank you for allowing us, the public, to voice our concerns over this mask mandate. Now, I am someone who has tested negative multiple times from COVID-19, and I am against the mask mandate, even though I usually I do carry one with me just in case. I do go into places where there, where the social distancing is not um, applicable. Um, I strongly would like to urge the city council to not pass this mask mandate because we are all adults. We all have our choices. We are free people. We um, so just just. Please don't not, do not allow this mandate to happen. I'm hoping I didn't take up too much time because I did I did have a uh, low battery power. So, again, thank you for letting our voices be heard. Thank have a good you. night. Thank you, Mr. Block. You're welcome. Uh, next, we have Jay Gig. Jay Gig, please unmute yourself. Uh, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Okay. Uh, first name Joe, last name Giganti, 1420 Bellevue Street, Green Bay, 54311. May I start? Yes, please. First, I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a pleasure to finally be in a forum with you. I hope you'll be able to join me on my radio show at some point. I do want to point out some striking, glaring inaccuracies. Uh, Mama Barris said there's 85 babies in ICU. That is factually incorrect. 85 babies tested positive. They only know this through checking data. I have several news sources I can gladly send you. This shows a great example of emotionalism driving decision-making versus reason and logic, which is how we're supposed to make decisions. Those babies were asymptomatic. As far as we can tell from all the actual information being reported, they didn't even know that they had COVID. This was discovered in a data dump. As for the effectiveness of masking, there are several studies that actually show masking is ineffective, particularly wrapping a t-shirt around your face. I'm shocked that the CEO of Bellin suggested that. In the press conference yesterday, she said, and I quote, and as studies have been done, it caught up with itself, we now know that cloth masks, face coverings when worn widely in public does slow significantly the spread of COVID-19. I asked uh, Ms. Waleski to send me her sources. She sent me a Vox.com article, hardly a reliable source, that cited several others and all were anecdotal, using qualifying terms like it appears, most likely, and so forth. She sent a link to the CDC, which talked about a case that I was already familiar with, and the direct quote said that the masking policy, quote, likely mitigated the spread, meaning there is no definitive proof in fact, there is no study, as one, I believe, doctor said earlier, but yet the statement that was made with the mayor standing there was that, in fact, studies have been done, the science is caught up, and we know this for a fact. Lying to people in public doesn't give people a sense of security. It makes them feel less secure. And as for the question of going, there's a lot of false dichotomies that you have to have a mask to open up schools, to open up businesses, something else that we heard absolutely false it's a logical fallacy and i'll just say to the teacher patsky and the other person that mentioned wearing symbols hopefully that teacher is not a history people wear symbols millions of them were murdered and it was done in the name of that which was righteous and good no history understand something people that say we have proven we can't do it the death rate post opening up the state on a da daily average is 33% less than it was during the actual Safer at Home order. The average during Safer at Home was nine deaths per day in Wisconsin. It is six deaths per day right now. Yes, every life matters, but stop giving false information. We have been responsible. We Thank you so much, job. Mr. Giganti. Your time has expired. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Leah Merriman. Uh, and I also want to say we have Leah Merriman and Julie's iPhone. These are the people who have used the feature on Zoom to raise their blue hand. 
Um, and so after I hear from Julie's iPhone, I will scroll down the list and find people who've unmuted themselves, but I'll remind you when we get there. Thank you so much. Ms. Merriman, can you please unmute yourself and uh, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. My name is Leah Merriman. I work, my husband works in Green Bay and I live up in Spisky. Can you spell your last name, please? Oh, M-E-R-R-I-M-A. -A -A. Awesome, thank you, go ahead. Okay, thanks for letting me talk. Um, I, I'm gonna be kind of all over the place because I've been listening to everybody and I've been watching some body language of certain people. And um, uh, one of the things that I remember hearing was that uh, virus can only spread. I don't know whether you'll hear with my ear Can you hear what I'm now. saying? Because somebody's talking over me right now. Yes, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Okay, no problem. Okay, so. All right. Just give me one second, Ms. Merriman. No problem. Okay, you can go ahead and continue. Okay. Uh, I heard someone talk about the droplet um, that y what I've read is that viruses only spread droplet if the person is actually symptomatic and it does not spread with asymptomatic droplets. If people are scared, then they should stay home. The evidence shows absolutely that pregnant women should not ever be wearing a mask. It's an issue of uh, uh, gas exchange and they're not getting a gas exchange that's pure and good for them if they wear a mask. I've had nine babies, I know. You cover my face up, I'm not gonna be able to breathe, especially in this heat. Uh, the mayor closed all the polling places, uh, except two, refused the National Guard to come in and assist with elections, and we're supposed to be trusting him with this issue and like uh, bringing it up now. It, the, it disenfranchised both my daughters, which work in, and live in Green Bay, from uh, voting because they wouldn't, they couldn't stand out there till one o'clock in the morning, and they had to go to work. Lady uh, that brought up babies in Texas, it was 52, and they had no symptoms. Even Snopes said that was false. The Wisconsin Grocers Association does not want this because they're not cops. Dollar Tree already reversed their mandate because somebody got shot. What about people's religion? What if it's against their religion to wear the mask? Have you even provided for that? Uh, I watched. Uh, people rolling their eyes, especially doctors, uh, when people were saying something they didn't agree with. This is a really divisive issue. What about the people that can't pay their bills because they, they won't wear a mask when they go to work? What about the suicide rate for the people that are forced to stay home because they're terrified to go out because they think they're gonna get accosted wearing a mask for not wearing one? Um, you look at the numbers, this can't be even qualified as a pandemic anymore according to the formerly respected health manuals out there. What about the nursing home people? I can't even hug my dad right now and he can't even talk to me because he has a trach and he's had a ventilator for six years. I mean, there's a lot of research about sensory deprivation out there, but there's not a lot of research about this virus and, and the, you know, uh, asymptomatic people transmitting it. There was one case that I saw from a Chinese person from Germany or going to Germany and it ended up that he did have symptoms. So uh, we need to be around people so that our immune systems are exposed to bacteria and viruses so that our immune system functions right. What if you deprive someone of that, you're depriving them of their immunity? Where's this normalcy we're talking about? We're not gonna get back to normal. Thank, thank you, Ms. Merriman. Stay. Thank you so much, your time is thank expired. You. Thank you. You got a lot in in that short period of time, dude, you fucking hammered. You bitch. Yeah, good job. Okay, next we have Julie's iPhone. Julie's iPhone, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. Julie Wergen, W-E-R-G-I-N. I live on Tyrolean Drive in Green Bay. Okay, go ahead. Um, thank you. Every, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead.
Oh, I think we lost you. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay. So. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. There so, you yeah, are. I yes. I think I lost you for a second. Yes, I think so. Okay. Hold on. All right. Go right ahead. Okay. Can you hear us? Hello? Can you? Hi. Oh, yes. Hi. Okay. I just wanted to speak real briefly to comment that I've been listening to everyone else talk since the meeting started. And I appreciate everyone's opinions. And we all have an opinion whether it's for masks or without masks. I just want to point out several of the comments about people. However, we're not all adults, and the ordinance does affect children as well. And in the case of my children, they're not old enough to understand the information, the data, and to make that decision for themselves if they need to wear a mask. Masks aren't the most convenient. My children aren't always thrilled to have to wear them if they go to the store with me, but they need to wear them to be safe. I know the school board is working very hard to make decisions regarding how to keep the children safe. Masks are going to be a part of that. Hopefully masks are gonna to continue to be required in more and more stores, whether this ordinance passes or not. Are there people in the stores who don't wear the masks appropriately? Absolutely. Dep if it's a person in a checkout that's required to wear them at a store, I do usually, if I have to use that checkout, I'll just say, did you know that that really does need to cover your nose to be effective or something like that? I certainly don't attack people. As far as people feeling attacked when they don't wear masks, you get the same thing when you do wear a mask. You have people stare at you or I've had people comment on the type of mask I'm wearing, I realize we don't have all the answers. Things do change, doctors are sometimes wrong. However, this has been going on in the world since the end of last year when it started. Doctors are still learning things and new information is provided as they learn it. Masks have have these to be effective in helping reduce this. No matter what type of mask, it's better than nothing in most situations. As far as we're all adults, I think everyone, if you watch the news, has heard the stories about the adults having parties over summer and taking bets as to who can get infected with coronavirus. Those are adults. It's a little scary to think about that's our future because they certainly need better education than trying to catch it. And there was one dire situation where the man looked at the doctor and said, I think I made a mistake here. And he died shortly after that. So again, I thank everyone for their comments. I respect everyone's opinion. And I thank you for considering this matter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next we have Crystal Mathy. Ms. Mathy, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. You bet. My name is Crystal Mathy. It's M-A-T-H-E-Y, and I'm at 4256 Hillcrest Drive. Go ahead. Thank you. So I just had a couple of comments. I do appreciate the time and um, that you're seeking out opinions with everyone here. My thoughts on this are that it boils down to um, our freedoms and our freedoms of being able to make the choice and, 
and choose. What works best for some doesn't necessarily work best for others. So I appreciate having the choice in the matter of, yeah, but I'm gonna do that while I'm here, or no, I'm not gonna do that while I'm here. Um, also, when it comes to the mass, I know um, the conversations we've been having for our school and whatnot all boils down to as well as proper care of the mass. The um, vast majority of people aren't necessarily taking care of their mass in the way that it needs to be taken care of. So in a sense, it does just give the false security as well for the people around them just because it's on. I can say personally too, I have a mask in my vehicle. Um, I've had it in my vehicle for several months and if I'm being honest I, I haven't washed it so really for me to be wearing that isn't doing a lot of good to have it and I know that I'm not in the only one that's in that boat so we don't have a way to even be able to monitor if they are being used correctly. Um, I really think that people just have to choose what's best for them and what's best for their family. Um, seek out times as well, you know, when you're out and about to, if you're gonna go at maybe a more high risk time, if you're feeling more comfortable around that time or maybe as an alternative, if you're a person that wants to wear a mask and be surrounded, um, by people wearing the mask, you know, having the option to go when others are wearing masks as well. But really, I think that it's important that we do have the choice to be and that the proper care of them is also being looked at for um, if it is going to be worn or not. That's all for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Matthew. Next, we have Michael Teske. Michael Teske, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Hi, my name is Michael Teske, capital T is in Tom, E-S-K-E. My address is 2654 Foxwood Court. Go ahead. Depeer, Wisconsin. <clears throat> I wanna thank you for allowing us this forum to express our opinions, and I appreciate everyone else's opinions that have uh, gone before me. My biggest issue with this, and I'll keep this short, is that um, I know we have access to the internet and all the information. And as much as I respect the doctors and what they have to say, they're not the medical virologists or um, <clears throat> the infectious disease experts that I've been reading papers on. The New England Journal of Medicine cites explicitly for COVID-19 how masks are ineffective. Now, again, I totally do not judge people who are wearing masks. I wear a mask. And I think as we've heard throughout these calls, the people that are against the mask mandate are responsible. They're wearing masks where they go. So I just wanted to echo that and just make sure that um, our freedoms are there. I've had several people in my immediate family with high risks get the COVID and they have come out of it. They've actually very quickly, uh, even a you know, per <laughs> person affected with cancer. And to me, the, the fear factor, the fear porn that is going on with this. And again, I respect everyone. If you're, if you're fearful, I get it. You know, and I, I feel bad for you. I'm not gonna live in fear. And I certainly don't, um, I, I don't think these masks serve anything other than promoting or projecting fear on the public. And it is a very divisive thing. And as this goes forward, it's gonna continue to get worse as far as a division in this country, which I, I never thought in my life it could get this bad. But again, uh, I'm against this mask mandate. Um, I hope that the adults in the room here can trust us as adults, as you know, the, the previous speaker said, well, there's adults that are gonna do dumb things. Well, that's in any aspect of life. So again, thank you very much and God bless America. Thank you, Mr. Teske. Next, we have Dan Terrio. Dan Terrio, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Sure, thank you. Dan Terrio, 1170 Minahan Street, Green Bay. So I wasn't going to say anything tonight, um, but I've been listening to a lot of the commentary and um, a lot of the thoughts, which I think is fantastic that people are engaged in the process. But the thing that came to mind 
throughout this whole thing was uh, several years ago, there was a proposal within the state legislature to ban smoking in restaurants and bars. And the same reaction happened. They thought that it was an infringement on their liberty. Um, they, If they don't want to be into in an environment where they're smoking, they won't go. You actually saw a polar change when it was passed and health was being promoted. And now you don't think about it even when you go into a restaurant or bar. This is temporary. Just keep that in mind that there are people in our hospitals, there are people that are getting sick because for the past two months, there hasn't been any type of um, guidance from the state on how to control this other than socially distancing where mask is possible, but people, you have your liberty at this point to still wear masks and it's not happening. We're still seeing rates going up. We need to rely on science on this. And if science within our, and specifically within our community is saying wear masks and that something needs to be done, we need to follow that. The American healthcare system is not equipped for a pandemic. That's why there was an important piece in there with the safer at home. Those were lifted in a lot of communities. You saw rates go up. Masks are the next piece in here. And remember, this is temporary. You're not losing anything, but you know, it's a temporary sacrifice that we all have to take in order to keep our community and the people here safe. What's really disheartened me during this is a lot of people kept thinking about me, 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 me. It's about others. And we have to keep that as a, at the centerpiece to keep every person safe. The last thing I wanna say is, you know, we, we hear this a lot, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I can't have liberty or happiness without life. So we need to keep that as a centerpiece and do what the right thing is to keep every person safe. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Terrio. Okay, we do have one other person whose hand is raised. Then as I said, I will scroll down the list and make sure um, I'm gonna find people who would like to speak. So next we'll hear from uh, William Melinda Eck. Uh, Ms. Eck, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Okay, um, Melinda Eck. 1634 Birchwood Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, you know, a lot of people have said a lot of the things that, you know, that I would share. So um, I'm just gonna share a couple of personal stories. Um, one of them is um, a hard time wearing the mask. I have a hard time breathing without the mask and the mask makes me feel like I'm suffering. Okay, the niece that has asthma, she's required to wear a mask at work. She fainted. Um, so it does affect people in a negative way. Um, I was actually at an event last night where someone um, at a funeral, she was wearing a mask. And actually when I went in, she had the mask on her um, chin. And uh, I asked her about it and then she put it up and I mean within the next few minutes so many times and um, the reason I point that out is because it, it shows you the people are uncomfortable wearing masks they touch it they touch other things they now spread those germs that are from that disposable mask everywhere are they changing it every half hour like what's recommended um, in cases, it does say on the box, it doesn't even work for um, preventing the coronavirus. Uh, um, and those that are wearing the uh, piece of fabric or bandana, um, are they washing it in between? Uh, a lot of people keep it in their car um, in between where they're wearing it um, and maybe going from place to place, they might put it in their car because they don't need it for one place. Um, and now we're talking, there's a lot of um, heat going on in the car. So that increases the bacteria on the mask. Um, so, and really, if you go to the CDC website, it says, this is no longer a pandemic. Um, they've said that. I am not 
uh, this late in the game, we're going to say everybody has to wear a mask. It doesn't make sense to me. It seems an overreach, and I'm extremely opposed to the wearing of masks being forced. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I do see some other people have raised their hands. I'm going to scroll down just in case uh, there have been people who are waiting. Actually, if there are people who are on camera who'd like to speak, I'm looking to see if there are people. Okay, and I'm going to scroll down. If you'd like to speak, unmute yourself, and I can actually see that your icon is unmuted. Put your camera on move so they see that you're there. I do see that there is um, six seven six eight four eight three. Good work. Hi, my name is Melissa Allen. My okay, last name I'm sorry. Hold on one. Oh, hold on one second. One second. So okay. six seven six eight four eight three is Melissa Allen. Yes. Okay, hold on one second, Ms. Allen. Okay, go ahead. Say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, my name is Melissa Allen. Last name, A-L-L-E-N. Address is Creekview Road, De Pere, Wisconsin. I work in Green Bay at one of our larger healthcare facilities, and I'm going to try to keep it together uh, for this, but um, also nine months pregnant, and uh, honestly, it's been a rough year. Um, I cannot wear the masks um, for a healthcare provider to act like a pregnant woman can wear a mask is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so that's just a, a personal thing I had to get off my chest. I have to wear one at work, obviously, but you will see it on my chin, over my nose. We have to reuse them for a week. So acting like you can don and don, take it on and off without touching it is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and from a statistics standpoint, um, I'm also, um, I've been a hospice nurse. Um, that's not what I do right now. I actually have an emergency COVID staffing leadership position, but, um, with my history as a hospice nurse, I've been bedside with a lot of patients and, um, one of my memorable patients shared with me that she wasted her life worrying. And if we look at um, the COVID death rate in Brown County as a percentage to the population, 0.017%. Point, I'm sorry, 0.017% of the Brown County population have died from COVID. I am not insensitive to death. I have seen death, but we cannot have death without life. And there are much painful ways to die. I'm not saying that COVID is not a painful way to die. There are other pain, more cancer is more painful. Um, there are many more ways to die that we are not restricting. And for somebody to try to impose such a restriction of freedom on our community is so scary to me. We are seeing riots. We are seeing our, our nation fall apart. <laughs> and for our local community to discuss imposing, taking such freedom of choice away from individuals is so devastating that I cannot handle it. And many people feel the same. And the discrimination is real because I've seen it in the stores. <sighs> 
I think that's pretty much all I'm going to say. I just pray that I can trust our local government to discern that our freedom is more important than this restriction because in the big picture, we have a higher chance of dying from other things. And I get it. We can get sick. But thank, that should thank be you, Ms. Choice. Allen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Hannah Malmberg. Uh, Ms. Malmberg, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, for and give your address for the council. Hi, my name is Hannah Malmberg, M-A-L-M-B-E-R-G, and I live at 1251 Raleigh Street in District 8. Um, I actually want to express my support for a masking mandate uh, I am an immunocompromised individual, and quite frankly, this virus can kill me. And I hate to get emotional, I'm sorry, but to see people in our community disregard that. I don't care what the rate of death is when people are dying. And globally, 600,000 lives have been lost. And I think that if we can do anything to prevent any loss of life, we should take that step. And I, we, the scary thing is, is we also don't know the long-term health effects of this. And I'm in my young, tw in my early 20s, 20s, and I know you might think, oh, I'll be fine. But I do have this health issue, and I have to see people my age take very risky steps right now with, because they have disregard for their community. And I think a, ma a mandate would push people in the right direction to consider their neighbor. And I think when we look at other countries, masking is one of the steps that they've taken. Of course, it's not the only step, but I think it's an important one. And I would also like to say that I think people are acting like this is imposing on their freedom, it's oppression. And quite frankly, I think if you think that, you've never experienced real oppression or real restrictions on your freedom because this is not oppression. It's caring for your community and it's a public health, um, public health step that I believe we should take. And so I want to express my support for this. I know I previously emailed uh, some of the council members Members. And again, I apologize for getting emotional, um, but it's very alarming to me when I see in our community that it's getting worse and it's not getting better. And I know we question why now and why not earlier. I think better late than never. And yes, it should have happened earlier, quite frankly. It's alarmed that our city is not taking more measures to protect people in my situation. Um, so sorry for getting emotional, but I just want to express my support for this. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you, Hannah. Next, we have uh, Andrea Johnson. Andrea Johnson, please unmute yourself and say your first name and spell your last name for the council and provide your address. My name is Andrea Johnson, and my address is 387 Windward Road, and uh, in here in Green Bay. Um, I just um, want to ask the city council if they believe that it is their job as elected officials to mandate something over the people that isn't 100% um, uh, reliable, not um not uh we we can't trust any of the information we've been given as far as the latest numbers we have healthcare officials that are not actually healthcare mds or rns telling the people that mask up when there's proof scientific proof that the masks are not effective now if everybody who believes we should mask wants to wear a mask because they believe they are protected, then why, if you're protected, should I have to wear a mask if I don't want to? So what that tells me is, is that people don't really believe the masks are effective. What they want is for everybody to be the same. 
and everybody does not need to behave the same nor be the same um, in order for us to be protected. We need to protect ourselves if we have vulnerable situations and healthcare concerns um, and whatever measures we need to do to do that. Um, um, but we should not enforce that on anyone and for our elected officials to make a decision to force people with their, um, to, to wear masks or, or anything else, to wear anything on their person um, is against constitutional rights. Um, what I wanna ask the city council is when you um, consider this, to consider what the repercussions are down the road because this mask ordinance isn't the end then. What you're doing is you're opening a door for a can of worms down the road for a power hungry mayor or governor or president that gets to do what they want without the council's check. So um, the council is at the behest of the people and the people are trying to ask you to consider and be considerate of our constitutional rights, whether or not um, the masking thing is uh, approved. I think that the council and the mayor need to look down the road. Your grandchildren and grandchildren's children are going to see what happens as a result of this decision. It's pivotal. And I just want you to know that you will be held accountable for the decisions you make as elected officials. And thank you so much for having this opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Please. Johnson. Mm -hmm. oh, Vivian Lawyer, good job, Andrea. <laughs> Next yeah, thank we, you. Next, we have iPhone. iPhone, please unmute yourself. Uh, give your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Jessica Smith, S M I T H, Cardinal Lane. I want to start by saying thank you for taking the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Start no, a little early. No, go ahead. Sorry. Saying, you go ahead. <laughs> thank you for taking the time tonight to listen to um, all of our concerns. Um, I went in, I, I'm actually a nurse myself. I went into the medical profession to care for others and to be a servant to them. With that being said, I care for people in all different walks of life. I love what I do. I love helping others to live a healthier life. In medical history, we have never mandated masks for the flu, tuberculosis, SARS, or pneumonia. We don't quarantine healthy people, we quarantine sick people. We can control sickness in the hospital, but it needs to stay there. Where there is risk, there must be choice. Freedom of choice matters. This is what our constitution in this great country is founded on. The hospital staff in the area have been furloughed. Where working in the medical field used to be that we all had work continuously. This is hurting our economy more than anything. Our mental health is what is really suffering. Suicide, depression, isolation, the rates for suicide are, are huge. People need interaction with others. It's a necessity. I choose to wear a mask around the elderly, immunocompromised, et cetera, and wear it while at work. But I highly disagree that there should be a mandate to force it. It is overstepping our basic constitutional rights. We the people never forget that. Based on the numbers in this call, 32 people have been against the masks. Nine people are for it. We the people have spoken. Thank you so much. Mm. Next, we have uh, Dr. Becky Krull Unleashed. Um, please unmute yourself and uh, give your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Becky Krull, K R U L L, Royal Crown Court. You're so muted. No, I'm not. And please okay. give your, yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm a veterinarian as well in this community. And my concern comes on many levels. Uh, one, I'm a doctor and I may not be taking care of people, but I am taking care of animals. Coronavirus is a virus that has been in our environment for centuries. Um, and it is something that I'm faced with on a daily basis. Um, the way we handle it is certainly not the way it's being handled in the human world. 
I could, I could present many things on epidemiology, virology, how to analyze data, which by the way is pre being presented to you in the wrong fashion. And so I'm not gonna waste your time with that because as you can see, again, the majority of people have come to you this evening giving you that data. I wanna come to you as a business owner today. I would like you to explain to me how I'm supposed to mandate this in my place of business. I'm already suffering the consequences from this disease with lower care for my pets, trying to deal with clients, being attacked daily in my clinic on how we decide to wear or not wear a mask. We're already facing a problem that's very difficult as a business owner. If you are now gonna ask me to be the mask police, I'm not really sure how I'm to continue. I have business in Green Bay and in Alloway, and so I know the mayor's hope is that we set the precedence on this. I would certainly hope that we don't set the precedence on a mandate so that Alloway follows because then two of my business will be attacked on a daily basis. I'd also like to point out that there is a council here that sat and voted twice to not bring this to a vote. They voted twice to not bring this up, but the mayor still has decided to overreach in his power to vote on this. I'd ask the council tonight to not give that power to him anymore. Take away the state of emergency. We are not in a state of emergency anymore. As you have seen, the CDC has reported that we are out of the pandemic. Someone has already pointed out that we're close to maybe an endemic. So take that power away from him this evening so that we don't have this discussion anymore and the vote doesn't have to be had. I ask this as a taxpayer and a business owner, as well as a medical profession, I'd like to point out tonight the nurses that have come here to speak. I applaud them. They are the ones willing to speak out. You wanna know why the other physicians in this town aren't speaking out besides the CEO of a large hospital who does not hold MD behind her name? Because they're scared. Because they're scared of their jobs because that CEO holds their livelihood in her hands. I have many physician friends who are against this mandate and don't believe that masks work but there is no way they're gonna put their name on the line in public to say that in fear of the CEO like her. Council, I plead you tonight, listen to the majority. The, the silent majority has now spoken. You know what is right and, and stand up for what we have said this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Kroll. Next, we have Laura. Laura, please unmute yourself, uh, state your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. My name is Laura Kraut, and I live on Indian Hill Drive in Green Bay. Can you spell your last name too, please? A-R-A-U-S-E. -E. Thank you, go ahead. I echo everything that has been said tonight, so I'll res I will not repeat statistics and studies for the sake of the time tonight. But in respect to those few that say that I need to do this, that it is my responsibility to protect you and your safety, I say to you, I, it is not my responsibility to protect you, and I do not need to do this. I have an immune-compromised disease. My husband has moderate to severe COPD. We are both high-risk people, but we both accept per personal risk for our own safety. It is not up to my elected officials or any other resident of this city, state, or county to determine or protect for my safety. I and my alone responsibility. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, we, Justin Steiner has already spoken. Um, Brad Burmeister, uh, Mr. Burmeister, please unmute yourself and say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. B-U-R-M-E-I-S-T-E-R, -E and I live on Whispering Creek Court in the village of Howard. Go right ahead. So uh, I'm an emergency physician here in Green Bay. I grew up locally in Seymour, and I actually work at the hospital which I was born. I don't want to go into any details and refute any statistics that were cited so far, but I just want to say that in my medical opinion as a physician, someone who is raised in this community, I think that a masking ordinance is the right thing to do at this time. 
We see very concerning trends in our numbers in our population. Our trajectory is very unfavorable right now. This is a terrible virus, and we need to do what we can to help protect our community, protect our entire population, protect our economy, and get our children back to school. I think this really should be required so that we can keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burmeister. Okay, so I'm going to, Mayor, I'm just going to go down the list here again to see if there's anyone who'd like to speak. Um, if there's anyone who would like to speak who has not already spoken, please unmute yourself. I'm scrolling down and I can see that your icon is unmuted. Or you can start speaking, unmute yourself and start speaking and we can get you up. I would like to make a few comments. Okay, hold on one second. And is this 676-8483? No, this is K Jig. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. I think your icon kind of got pushed down. Okay, yes indeed, hold on one second. Thank you so much. All right, go ahead, first name, last name, address. Go ahead. My name is Kristen Giganti, G-I-G-A-N-T-I, -I, 1420 Bellevue Street in Green Bay. Um, I just want to thank all the people that so eloquently and reasonably um, spoke out about this mandate, which I am also against. Um, I think it's important to note that we need to make this decision logically and not emotionally. Um, we've seen what all the emotionalism can do right here on this call. The, the poor girl who spoke a few minutes ago who was falling apart at the seams who seems to think that the sky is falling and she's going to die. That is not a good place to make a decision from, from a place of fear and emotionalism. Um, I think that we need to look at all of the facts and be reasonable. Um, and one question I want to reiterate I think we really need to have a better idea of when this mandate would end if it were put in place. Is it when there's no percentage of COVID positive people in Brown County? There's really not a good explanation of when there's an end cap on this. And I think we deserve to know um, what that looks like. Um, I also just want to make the comment that by doing this, you're really creating a niche in Green Bay by asking citizens to be, you know, watching each other very suspiciously. We already see so much animosity going on. Um, there's a couple people on this call that have mentioned that they've been accosted and harassed in public for not wearing a mask. I think that for the good of our community, we need to, to stop and, and take a hard look at what this is doing to us. And by asking people to snitch on their neighbor, that's only going to make it worse. And I think that we in Green Bay are better than that. Um, and I think also it, it creates a towards those who are asked to enforce this, be it business owners or our hardworking police department. Um, you know, I don't think creating more animosity against those people is a good thing either. Um, the one last thing I'd like to bring up is um, to ask the council if they've considered the fact that this has the potential to open the city up to enormous potential legal litigation. Um, frankly, this is a civil rights lawyer's dream and for good reason, because this is not constitutional. And I think they really need to take that into consideration. Do they want to risk opening themselves up to lawsuits? Because I'm quite sure there are people out there that are willing, rightly so, to take that step. Um, I think it's obvious that the voice of the people has spoken here, that the city of Green Bay does not want this. And as a city council, it's your responsibility to listen to the voice of your constituents and do what is right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Giganti. Okay, uh, I will have one final call for people who'd like to speak to this issue. I, was, I think there's a 430-1300. I'm not sure if they can unmute. Can oh, you? Oh, yeah, let's see. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. 430. Oh, yes, I see. 430-1300. Uh, can you unmute yourself, please? 
I will unmute you. Can you hear us and speak? I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Um, just give me one second. Sure. Lots of clicking. Okay, say your first name, um, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Bronson Smith, S M I T H. I live on Smith Street in Green Bay, 54302. Okay. It's clear from the overwhelming majority of people speaking oppose this oppose this mandate tonight. The people that want this mandate to go forward are in the minority. And last time I checked, in a democracy, majority rules. The mayor and his COVID brigade, who would who who would pass this mandate tonight, regardless of the majority of Green Bay residents that oppose it, are not serving the citizens faithfully. I oppose this mandate wholeheartedly. I believe any mandate is totalitarian in in nature. Alderman Scannell calling people who oppose this mandate, uh, what did he call them? I believe it was immoral, is very unbecoming of a pu public servant being paid $10,000 a year by the taxpayers of Green Bay. This mandate was defeated last week at the committee, at, at, at the committee, yet the mayor decided to sidestep the committee and go for, for forward. What a slap in the face to not only the committee, but all those residents that took the time to speak out against it. And those that spoke out were overwhelmingly against it then. This issue is too big to be decided by a dozen elected officials. This should be a referendum vote on the November ballot. And by the way, the mayor should resign. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Smith. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Can I be up? Okay. Unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Uh, Elliot Christensen, C-H-R-I-S-T-E-N-S-O-N, 1988 Mulberry Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with my giant list of why this is a terrible idea like I did last week at the committee. Uh, I just want to make sure that... Uh, I don't get misrepresented as being one of the 10 to one that are supposedly in favor of this. It's very clear that that's not the case. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christensen. Anyone else who would like to speak, please unmute yourself. I, I would like to speak. Oh, yes, Katie Hyde. Okay, just give me one second, Ms. Hyde. Okay, go ahead. Say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address. Katie, last name Hyde, H-Y-D-E, address 671 Sunnycrest Street, Green Bay, 54302. Go ahead. Um, I would just like to, I'm not going to, you know, go over everything everybody else has, um, but I, I too am a nurse. Um, I too have seen many people's lives lost to various illnesses. Um, I've been at the bedside of people losing their lives and seen what families that are directly impacted by COVID have gone through, not being able to be in contact with their family, whether their um, loved ones are in nursing facilities or hospitals, um, regardless of the reason why they're there, if it's COVID or not. So I think that just this really, I don't know why this is such a complex issue and a big decision. I think it really comes down to let's just help each other. And by doing that, we can all wear masks for a set amount of time. And I don't know, love your neighbor, do what you would want to be done to you. And it's that simple. And that is all. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, one more thing. Oh, absolutely. I would like to... Um, specifically call out, I don't remember the person's name, but the individual that was extremely brave, that was in their 20s and is in immunocompromised, I applaud you for speaking up and I, um, I wish you the best and hopefully we can all come together to help people that can't help themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak? Please unmute yourself.
Anyone else? Hello, this is Teresa Iverson, I-V-E-R-S-O-N. Okay. I live at Redstone Court in Omega. All right. Go right ahead, Ms. Iverson. I think that there is a lot of great points that have been brought up. I feel like the medical community has been extremely intellectually inconsistent here. And so I'm not even going to get into that point. But if we do decide to mandate masks, which I am obviously completely against, then do we end up doing that to every child who gets their childhood vaccinations? Because there are live attenuated viruses that shed. <laughs> and then those children are asymptomatic or symptomatic shedders after they get their childhood vaccinations. I think it would be completely ridiculous to ask families who have to work to quarantine themselves after their childhood vaccinations for their children or for themselves as adults and anyone that is in their home and anyone they come in contact with. That's something that nobody is talking about when they say you're putting other people at risk if you don't wear a mask. This should be mandated. It's about other people. Consider your neighbor. Be loving. I completely agree with that. We should consider other people and be loving, but you're opening this up to, if you are going to be intellectually consistent here and medically consistent, then you would have to also say, if we're going to be afraid of these viruses out there that are being shed by people that we can't see, that maybe they are sick, uh, you have to be consistent across the board. And I would never say that you should have to wear a mask <laughs> if, for, if you're gonna give your kid vaccinations. That's just ridiculous. Um, also, like they have said, there's no mandates to be a healthier person, to eat healthy. In our family, we have immunocompromised people here, and we are not asking anyone to wear a mask for us. We have the responsibility to quarantine ourselves if we feel like we're going to get sick. It's no one else's responsibility to take care of me. We have personal responsibility, and we need to take that seriously. Um, I, I have a lot of friends who are physicians, and I remember talking to one of them and saying, aren't you worried when there's somebody who comes in with, you know, the flu and they are sneezing all over the place? And she's like, no, because I face the other direction. They don't cough right into my mouth. One time that happened, and I was like, well, going to get sick now. Like, we, we can be responsible people without requiring all other human beings to do exactly what we ask them to do. And uh, Dr. Fauci said that um, he wouldn't um, tell people that we should not wear masks right now when before he said that it was completely ridiculous to wear masks for the regular population. Um, and, like, how are we supposed to trust this when people go back and forth and back and forth? Thank you very much, Ms. Iverson. Anyone else who would like to speak? If there aren't any additional speakers, I will entertain a motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Was nay. <clears throat> the ayes have it. The floor is closed. I do have a request uh, to take a five-minute recess. So without objection, we will do that. Um, and we will be back in five minutes sharp at 9.19.
call the meeting back to order. We are on U item one to reiterate consideration with possible action on resolution providing for face covering within the city of Green Bay, <clears throat> effective July 27, 2020. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Comments? We need to do that amendment now or, because that wasn't, I just stated, yeah. So I'd like to amend uh, section on definitions with, uh, there we go. Could you read that amendment again, Alder? Uh, yeah, and the indoor open area, uh, the amendment would be indoor area accessible to the public means any interior area of any structure or premises licensed by the city of Green Bay or used in whole or in part as a place of resort, assemblage, lodging, trade, traffic, occupancy, or other use by the public to which the public customarily has access. Do we have a second for that amendment? Second. The motion has been made to amend by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Discussion on the amendment? I just, if you could clarify, did you just add a few words at the end, Alder Scannell? Uh, what would you like? I, I was at, uh, my apologies, I had my, my mute on, but I was just oh. wondering if you could point to, <laughs> I was wondering where, I, I found where you were uh, changing it, but where you just changed words at the end. Is that all you did was add some words? Right, correct? I believe so. And what were the words again? Certainly, I'll, I'll, do you want me to reread the whole thing? Nope, what you added at the end. Just at the end, okay. Uh, um, like we're customary in, or something? In which the public customarily has access. Okay, thank you. Sure. Further discussion, questions on the amendment? All the way? Okay, well, this is just on the amendment, right? So we'd be voting on this. Then once that vote's done, we would be voting on the amended ordinance. Correct. So just we, I know we had that discussion before. So, okay. Right. Um, if I could ask Alder Scannell the purpose of changing this, because uh, it kind of went from vague to vaguer. I don't, I don't know. It didn't really clarify. I don't, maybe you could explain. Oh. Uh, it, 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 it's supposed to be more specific, actually. It's uh, a... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's legal for you know that's the legalese um uh, what i could speak to it or is there some would legal rather do that could they sure we could um either go to attorney chavez or assistant city attorney mather who, well, i'm curious uh alder scanner wasn't it your suggestion it was so my, don't you know why I you could, put it in I there give, i could give the background on it uh okay. yeah i, I don't from steve grenier about uh he had thought i had something to do with framing the language of the uh, 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 ordinance and I told him I didn't and he told me his concerns that uh, according to the way it was written now somebody in an office all by themselves who could be in violation of the ordinance so I said well you know I I don't know you, you know Pat, run that by Vanessa uh, so he did and they decided that yes that's true so let's change the language so that if you're alone in your office, this doesn't apply. Okay. That does it, thank you. Yeah. So, I, I do have more, um, I guess. On the amendment, Alder? Not right now, thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts on the amendment specifically? Mayor? Yes. This is Alder Lefebvre. Go ahead, Alder. Uh, yes. Yes, I agree. That's a good thing to put in. Um, I also had um, Paul Fantecchio from the county asking me about this. He lives in Green Bay, but he had mentioned, too, that um, his office is all by himself whenever he's in his office. And there are, are other offices in the county where people are not interacting at all. And I mentioned to him, um, I believe that we would put something like that in. 
So I think this is appropriate. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. And that was always the intent. This is, uh, you know, simply clarifying that, making it clear. Sure. Additional comments or questions on the amendment? Mayor? Yes, Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so we're, the example given was an individual in their own private office within a non-public area of the building. Um, at our own city hall, uh, during council meetings, we have custodial staff that'll be working by themselves in and amongst the hallways and some of the rooms. There's no council meetings. Would that staff be allowed to go maskless in this case? We'll go to Attorney Chavez. <coughs> For Assistant Attorney Mather, who's ever available. Um, while we're waiting, I would just, um, just a bit of housekeeping. We have My a lot. Apologies, that's okay. We have a lot of participants on the line and that's perfectly fine. But just to let people know, you can view the meeting on YouTube as well, and then we don't have to be worried about people being muted or unmuted. Um, so that is an option for everyone. Attorney Chavez. So I think that it is perfect to tell you what the um, policy is right now at City Hall. Um, so the way we are working, at least in my department, is if people are outside of their office in the common space, then the expectation is that a, a person is going to be wearing a um, mask. The reason being that we're trying to keep the common areas uncontaminated. Now, as far as your question goes, um, the way the, the ordinance is structured, it would require anytime somebody's inside in an area where the public customarily has access. Okay. So in, in business X, anywhere in that building that the public does not customarily have access, the employees could technically go maskless, or if there's Correct. a crowd of employees, would they then have to wear masks? It is where the public customarily has access. All right. Thank you very much. That clarifies it very well for me. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Additional thoughts or questions on the amendment? I seeing none. Oh. Alder Weary, you can. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the official signal is, so I just tried all of them. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> I, if I could, I know we get right into our business, and I just, uh, I wanted, and this is, I'm sure everybody feels this on the council, but I, I wanted to thank everybody for for speaking up and for being so patient. It's not easy to speak in front of council. We're used to it, rolled hats now, but it's not easy to put yourself on the line like that. So I wanted to thank them and. Uh, everybody who reached out. I know I've had probably 400 emails and calls and I'm sure everybody else has and uh, responded to them. Um, so thank you for doing that. Uh, I, I'm sure everybody agrees with that. Um, I'm, I'm gonna vote no on this because I'm gonna vote no on it in, in, in the end. So why would I amend something I'm gonna vote for in the end? Uh, I have a whole list of reasons why. Um, but for now, suffice it to say, I'm going to vote no on this amendment and discuss it the rest later. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Certainly echo your comments. Appreciate all the, the testimony that was offered. Any additional comments on the amendment? Hearing none, we have a motion to amend. We have a second. All in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Board, aye. 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 Board it, please. We have a request to use the board. We will do so. Alder Stoyer. I, 
believe he's backed out too far out of the program and that'll be a verbal voice vote. He may need to press star six like I did. Come on, Mark. Alder Stoy, are you still on the call? Alder Stoyer. Alder Stoyer. I'm going to have to text. Alder Stoyer, we can hear you. You can vote verbally, sir. I'm on the phone and I can't get through here. You can I'd vote no. verbally. You're, you're in. Alder. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. I said no. Thanks, Alder. No, Mark. Come on, Mark. And that amendment succeeds nine to three. <laughs> Can we put that back up just a second? I just want to make sure. Okay, yep. That amendment succeeds nine to three. Uh, so now we have the item as amended on the floor. Uh, we have some speakers who have pressed their button. So we will go to Alder Dorf. Thank you so much, Mayor. And yes, I would personally like to thank everyone who has spoken um, tonight and who spoke at the, the meeting. Um, and also to thank the over 500 people that called me and emailed me and did the poll on my Facebook. Um, and I want to assure all of you that your voice has been heard. Many studies that you've sent have been read and several videos have been watched. Many more people than we saw tonight at council have weighed in on this. This, this was just a, a small portion of the people who communicated with me. As of two o'clock today, 198 persons who communicated with me were not in favor of the mask mandate and 308 persons were in favor of it. And so this means no matter how I vote, hundreds of people are going to be angry with the way I voted. For every scientific study or professional viewpoint expressed to me and presented to me in favor of wearing a mask to prevent the spread of COVID-19, an opposing study or viewpoint has also been presented. There is no universal agreement on this. Judging from what I have heard and read from people opposed to mandated mask wearing, most will absolutely refuse to wear a mask to protect others from this virus. Not all, definitely not all, but most will. Asking for people to voluntarily wear a mask, sadly, does not seem like a shame. My understanding for why wearing masks is important is mainly to protect others, to protect the elderly, people with immune system disorders that make them more vulnerable to the COVID-19 virus. The mask ordinance as presented addresses most of the concerns of the people that contacted me and were against mandating masks in Green Bay. It is time limited, although what is the end date? When will COVID-19, when will this emergency be over? Nobody knows for sure, but when it is, we won't have to wear masks anymore. It is not required for children under five. That was a concern expressed to me. It is not required for people eating or consuming beverages. That was a concern. 
It's not required for people with any type of a medical condition or disability that would prevent them from wearing a face covering. It is not required for people who are communicating with the deaf and hardened hearing or in settings where it's not feasible or practical to wear a mask, such as dental services. I have heard and read much testimony regarding this ordinance, including most recently a letter from the local presidents and CEOs of Aurora Baycare Medical Center, Baycare Clinic, Bellman Health, St. Vincent, St. Mary's Hospital, Bellman Health, and Purvea, I'm sorry, and Purvea Health, which, which cite current CDC recommendations and support adoption of an ordinance requiring face coverings in appropriate circumstances. In addition, I just read today that 28 states in the union require masks now statewide. After hearing all of the testimony and carefully weighing both sides, I will support the ordinance requiring face coverings. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Next in the queue is Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I have several amendments that I'd like to propose. Um, First Amendment, page two, under the last whereas, I would like to strive to ensure such compliance. And included with that amendment, I would also uh, strike item number four, enforcement. Second that. And if I may, Mayor, I'd like to speak on that amendment. Yeah, can you state it again? You cut out a little bit on the first part of the amendment. Sure. Uh, page two, under the last whereas, there's verbiage that says, but recognizes that penalties are necessary to ensure such compliance. So my amendment is to strike that statement as well as item number four related to enforcement. Okay. Uh, so here's my primary concern with this. I mean, of all the emails that I've gotten, and I've gotten the uh, just as many as everybody else. Not one single person has asked for, for businesses to be penalized uh, for non-compliance. Businesses are not law enforcement. I don't support asking them to police their customers with a policy that they may not support. Um, I'm not comfortable with an involuntary vigilante police force that puts businesses in direct conflict with their customers uh, or risk losing their livelihood. They may display no shoes, no shirt. That's a policy they choose. They can choose masking as well, but it should not be mandated. To do so opens up our small business community to civil liability they can kill afford. Enforcement cannot be universal because not all businesses have a municipal license. And as a result, it puts um, some businesses in a position where they could be penalized and others not. Thank you, Alder. Uh, we do have that amendment, and I believe it was, so it's offered by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Weary, is that correct? Burnett. Oh, Alder Burnett, apologies. Uh, further discussion on that amendment before we get to the rest of the speakers? My light's on, Mayor. Alder Burnett, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, question for the city attorney. Uh, before I, I ask the question, and it pertains to the amendment, what I am troubled by is many of the ordinances that we've seen lately can be very vague in, in how they're interpreted. And what I'm particularly clearly troubled by with this particular one under enforcement section B, any business violating this section may be subject to administrative action for any license they possess with the city. So for attorney Chavez, if you could explain what administrative action means and what it could lead to? Administrative action is anything that we take against a person. Um, so using the liquor licenses as an example, um, if somebody is not in compliance with their liquor licenses, then we are able to take action, including up to revocation. That is a liquor license. What other licenses does the city issue to businesses and service establishments that the city could take administrative action against? Um, you'll have to give me a minute to pull up our, our ordinances. Okay. Uh, 
while Attorney Chavez is pulling that up, Mayor Genrick, I believe it was your ordinance or you were involved in drafting it. Do you know what sort of administrative actions on other establishments the city could take? I mean, the, the principal action would be the revocation uh, of the, the liquor license for a bar, restaurant, um, you know, grocery store, convenience store. How about other licenses before Attorney Chavez gets the answer? Do you know? So I, I'm actually, I have it up. Okay. So Thank the you. licenses that we have are ambulances, auto salvage storage, bakeries and confectionaries, billiards and pool tables, game rooms, um, solicitor licenses, cigarettes, closing out sales, restaurants. Uh, liquor licenses, hotels and motels, Duncan secondhand dealers, pawnbrokers, residential building contractors, retail food markets, uh, city stadium, taxi cab, business licenses, greater licenses, circuses and carnivals, and that's about covers it. So those are all licenses that the city of Green Bay issues, issues to the business community is that correct? That's my understanding. Well, basically, yeah, if, any, if thank you, if any of those businesses or establishments violate this order, uh, it's under the discretion of, am I to assume the city attorney's office to begin administrative action against those businesses to possibly revoke their license to operate an establishment and make a profit and employ people, including their own uh, self in the city of Green Bay? Would that be a fair statement? No. So the city attorney's office prosecutes any of the um, ordinance violations. So what would happen is they would be cited for failure to comply with the city ordinance and then failure to comply with city ordinances is a condition of their license. So we don't just revoke because somebody has a single, um, a single, uh, infraction against them. Um, we take the, the multitude of it because there are due, due rights of citizens. And so it would be considered in conjunction with any other citations that they receive. Okay, what would a citation be for a business that does not comply with this ordinance? Well, there's not actually any kind of penalty associated with it. It is primarily um, just the fact that you're violating it. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, you see the problem with this. Under enforcement, it says, not, not you, Attorney Chavez, I didn't intend that for you, but for the council. Any business violating this section may be subject to administrative action for any license they possess with the city. That is shocking because it's very vague in a way to anyone in the public who we answer to that were to read this ordinance. What's the penalty? A lot of gray area because it's not stated. All administrative action, that could mean a number of things. These are people's livelihoods, businesses, many of whom are just barely hanging on due to COVID. We don't need to keep adding additional burdens on the businesses to enforce this. It's up to us as a city, if we are uh, passionate about passing this, that we clearly articulate what sorts of actions violations could entail. First violation, second violation, third violation. Administrative action is not acceptable. So I will vote for Alderman Johnson's um, amendment. I think it's completely proper to remove the enforcement from this ordinance and then move forward from there. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Additional questions or comments on the amendment? I do. Go ahead, Alder. Weary. That lines. Am I reading this correctly that it applies to any public place, even if you don't have correct? That's a, that is correct. Not, that, that is correct? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, then I, I don't see, and maybe I, I missed it, where is the penalty for hurt? They don't have a license. So what would we do administratively to punish them? Um, a bookstore, a hobby store, pet store. They don't have licenses with us. 
we're only addressing, and you can see where Alder Johnson was saying, that's pretty uneven. <laughs> one, you're gonna take their livelihood, you're gonna take their license, potentially. And the other one, um, there's no, doesn't address it. Silence isn't good, generally. Okay, there's no answer, so we're not addressing it. Okay, so if you're uh, a church, hobby store, hobby store. Go ahead. No, I, I was waiting. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I was waiting for a question. I didn't hear one. Really? Well, I'll state it again. Thank there you. is a penalty clearly spelled out for people who have a license with the city of Green Bay that you could lose it through administrative vagary, right? What about well, the, it, it was pretty vague. I think uh, Alder Burnett was pretty clear that it was vague. We're not sure what those administrative things are, what the steps are. It could be slap on the wrist, it could be take it one warning, two warnings, three warnings. We, we don't know we're approving vagueness, <laughs> very vague. Well, if, if it's administrative action is provided by law, that is not vague. Pretty vague. Your opinion, I appreciate that. But what about a church? That's uh, an assemblage, right? They don't have, how do we, how do you propose punishing them? Knowing that there's a fine, that's what they're looking for. Did you uh, get well, my question? Well, I guess question? that would be well, determine. I'm sorry? That would be for you all to determine. Well, why isn't in here? I thought this is all ready to go. We're supposed to create it. I mean, we just got this handed to us 24 hours ago and not by email, like I had requested. It was just kind of a, oh, it's, it's in the packet. If you go online and look at it, just kind of figure it out. I'll tell you what, ordinances usually go to committee, get hashed out, people can talk about it, we tweak it, then it goes to council, then you gotta, you gotta read it twice. This one you wanna ram through in 24 hours when we're getting 500 calls and emails from concerned people, and it's not even complete. What about parks, shelters, shelters at parks, uh, stands at sporting events? We're gonna send the police in to break up and oh god you gotta put your masks on sitting in the stands are we gonna find ourselves then or what are we taking police away from traffic duty and following up on crime to enforce masking at soccer events i don't i don't know i'm <laughs> as you can see pretty weak not well thought through i mean I, i'm i'm for the amendment because it makes it inkling better in case it passes but i'm, I'm opposed to this overall I'll have more to speak on it, but I'm not even getting, I, I don't remember ever being presented an ordinance that <laughs> they don't have answers for. We said, that's for you to figure out tonight. I'm sorry. Well, I guess the, the situation is um, really, you know, there's, there's an ordinance that has been presented to you that uh, meets constitutional muster and that applies a penalty that is as least severe as possible. Um, which is what we've been hearing. And so we tried to make that happen for the council. Um, and then we also re limited it to just those businesses that have a license so that we were, again, limiting the amount of authority that was being exerted. Um, but again, that is really up to the council. If you guys feel like penalties well, need to be imposed on everybody, that is the council's decision. Okay, so I, just to clarify, this does apply to everyone but we only are gonna penalize people with licenses. You can see where that could easily be challenged and say, hey, my penalty, a whole lot worse than, than this guy's penalty. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Whenever somebody has a license, um, they have additional obligations that are placed upon them and compliance with city ordinances is one of the requirements that is mandated that's, for, for their licenses to be. That's kind of like saying a taxi driver who speeds, we're gonna take your license, but the guy who's going to church or the pastor driving people around, if you speed, meh, meh. I, you know, I, I know we're o, we're o for one uh, going against COVID in, in our lawyerly area. So we're kind of o for one, we lost that battle. So I maybe not as, as confident in this legal document. Thanks. Additional comments on the, uh, on the amendment? Okay. Mayor, can I speak? Alder Stoyer. Go ahead, Alder. Thank you. Uh, I would also like to thank all the folks that participated 
Uh, we've had the 400 emails and calls that uh, Alder Dorf said we have, and it's very true. It's been a very uh, contentious issue. We've had, uh, in nine years on council, I've never had an issue quite like this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about, about this. I, there's too many vague areas with this. And, you know, I know the city is looking at doing it, but I've been in touch with uh, Brown County. I've talked to Supervisor Joan Brusky uh, over time. And Brown County should be, if we move forward, should be the government that takes a look at this. We have 24 separate communities in Alder, Brown County. Alder, appreciate, yes. appreciate the comments, but just make sure you direct them to the amendment. Okay, well, the amendment then, I, there's other comments I'd like to make, but I think for now, uh, I feel like it's too vague, and uh, at least I, I agree with Alder Johnson on his tact on this. So I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Mayor? Mayor? Uh, Alder Galvin, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions for several different people on this amendment. So, Alder Johnson, if I understand correctly, you want to pull the entire enforcement section out or just the part about licensing? The entire enforcement section, and if another alder wants to propose a replacement, they can certainly do that, but I'm proposing to just eliminate it. So you're proposing an ordinance with no enforcement to it? Exactly. Okay. But you're in favor of the amendment of the, of the ordinance? I'm in favor of the amendment I proposed. Okay, thank you. Attorney Chavez, if we do have um, a business with out any kind of a license and they are not encouraging or enforcing or anything else, this ordinance on masking, how would you see any kind of a pressure to be brought to bear on them to make them comply with the ordinance? So I think what we are confusing is what the um, purpose of the enforcement section was. Um, the purpose of the A was really to gain compliance with the, it gives, a, it gives a directive to the businesses and it's trying to seek voluntary compliance. Um, there's not a penalty imposed upon anybody um, who fails to, to um, wear a mask. Instead, they're subject to a trespass charge when they're asked to leave and that's what we're asking business to do is um, if people are not complying with it to ask them to leave now the way it's written we don't have an enforcement mechanism um, for any businesses who don't comply the exception being like uh, licensed businesses because it is an obligation of their license to comply with city ordinances and so if they fail to comply with them their licenses are subject to um, to action per law. Um, it's the same as somebody who's driving with a, a license. Um, the license trumps, like you, you have an obligation to, to meet those standards. Similar to with a commercial license, you, you're subject to different standards because you do have a commercial license. So um, there isn't a mechanism in here um, to address that because the point was simply to gain compliance. Okay, then I, I guess, um, and I, I go back to the days when smoking was allowed in establishments and that law came into place where they were no longer allowed. And I, you know, people are worried about enforcement. Um, the police department never went out looking for smoking violations. It was if they walked into an establishment and someone was smoking, then they took some action. Um, and there was a specific, though, um, citation that could be issued. There was one establishment that had a fee to smoke in their person. They got the ticket. They just merely went into the kitty, took the money out that people have been paying to smoke, and they paid off their fine. So after a period of time, the city became wise to that, and that's when they went after their license. But it was after the work with the establishment, I, I guess, I've never seen the city act in a, in, a, in, a, in a manner that would put someone's license at risk unless that establishment was purposely um, uh, 
not enforcing or not taking any kind of action with that ordinance. Um, so I see here where not having specific penalties, I mean, if, if alders would be happy with first offense, $100 plus costs and on up the list, um, and then the fourth time they take away the license, I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for, or if like they said, we're merely looking to get compliance and this is a soft way of going about that um, and, and individuals obviously uh, have the right to appeal to committee where people that are against this would certainly be able to, to back those, those companies up. Uh, so, all right, thank you very much. Thanks, Alder. Yeah. Comments on the amendment? <laughs> yes, Alder Johnson. Um, I just want to speak a second. And so I'll defer to someone else if, if they haven't spoke yet. Any other Alder? Uh, yes, Mayor. Alder this Lefebvre. is Alder Lefebvre. Yes. Um, yes, I concur with um, Alder Gary had mentioned is would be more appropriate. Um, it does give some direction. I think we have to look at that. Like you said, the first time is just a warning and then you can make it progressive. Um, because we definitely don't want to penalize, you know, we are, our businesses, we don't want to take their license away. Uh, we just want people to follow a simple ordinance. Um, that's all it is. So, so I think right now on the uh, amendment, I probably would vote yes on it, and then to go back for B and put something in there, <clears throat> maybe A, A and B or something. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other Alders before Alder yes. Johnson for a second yes. time? Your Honor. Alder Scanlon, go ahead. Ah, thank you. Um, I would support this amendment if the Alder would uh, attach uh, a, um, as Alder Galvin suggested, a scale uh, for uh, Penalties. I don't want to take this out. And just leave it blank. I want to talk. If we're going to take, if we're going to talk about the penalties, uh, let's figure that out and then change this section to mit, to be what we want it to be as far as penalties. And as far as that goes, when I uh, first proposed this, I did offer some suggestions, and one was a sliding scale of uh, fees or penalties for businesses through this with our police department and uh, getting public input it was uh, determined to be to try and go softly and uh, not turn the police into the face mask police <clears throat> so um, I, I'm willing to give that you know uh, we want to be we don't want this to be uh, uh, there's been a, enough uproar on this and I've heard those voices and I uh, I I'd like to also just take a second here and thank everyone for your input uh, as a, a Facebook, email, the whole works. I uh, had a lot of great conversations. I want to apologize to people I never was able to get. I did read your emails or listen to your voicemails if I didn't get back to you. Um, and uh, I really appreciate it. And I think uh, listening to people who were against this, taking in a lot of their concerns, I think perhaps going with a soft, which is more like uh, we are highly recommending in a very, very strong way with an ordinance that doesn't have a lot of teeth to it, uh, is to uh, try to work with uh, everyone in our community to make an ordinance that everybody can live with. So um, I'm all for uh, if, if the majority thinks that we should, you know, have a little bite to this enforcement and uh, put a little more uh, uh, boot work with our police that they will be more uh, uh, involved in enforcing this. Um, I, I can go with that, but uh, for right now, uh, unless we do come up with a, a, some other enforcement, I'm not gonna support this and, and I'm fine with going with a soft approach. Thanks, Alder. Any other Alders before Alder Johnson for a second time? I'd like Mayor to speak, uh, Mayor. Mayor. Alder Van Alder Van go ahead. 
Thank you. I, I think, you know, if you look at this face covering uh, resolution, it's got a lot of hiccups in it and, and uh, too many uncertainties, you know, as far as the amendment, you know, our, I think the best thing the city could do would just make a resolution to recommend face covering. And I, I think that's what they'd like from talking to a number of people, most businesses, they don't want to, they don't want to be tied down to a, a resolution like this. Uh, I think the public is doing a good job right now in Brown County. Most of your businesses, your hospitals, doctor's office, they all require masks. City Hall requires one. County. I don't think we need any face mask resolutions. Order, I, I think there's Honor. enough laws Alder on the Vanderlee, books right now. You're not now. speaking to the amendment. You're, you're jumping ahead. Alder, well, I'm Alder just talking Alder. about the amendment. We, we don't need the amendments either. We, 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 don't, we don't need any of this. Uh, I, I feel that we don't, we don't need any, any input as far as amendments. They're talking about, you know, sees, you know, taking away the business. Uh, in other words, the business people have to, you know, if we pass this than they did before, they had enough time, enough problems with, uh, you know, what's been going on the last three years. They don't need any more restrictions. They don't need any more. I, I think the community is doing well now. That That's my thought. I don't think we need to pass this fee at all. And, and uh, as far as penalties, more penalties on the business, I don't, I'm not for that at all. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Was it Alder Dorf who was seeking yeah, recognition? Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, are there two different amendments we're talking about, or is there one amendment? Uh, Alder Johnson, could you clarify? You said something about some item two or something. I couldn't find that. The one amendment is intended to strike language that I referenced. Yeah, so I missed, so the first one, which is the first part again? Page two. Page two, okay. The last whereas. Page two. So the third paragraph. Third paragraph from the top. Okay. It said, and there's, on that last sentence it says, but recognizes that penalties are necessary to ensure such compliance. My amendment is to strike that statement. So when, when we vote on this, we'll vote, vote on two separate amendments, right? No, I, I, I'm not comfortable the, voting on one amendment. There's two separate things we're talking about, but this, I'm this just asking. Just, this is just one amendment. Um, we could certainly ask Attorney Chavez if, if it's appropriate, um, but I believe they both relate to enforcement. Correct. There's no issue with them being considered one. Okay. Let's say that again, Attorney Chavez. I said there's no issue with it being considered one. Okay. Because it's both about penalties. Okay. So you're taking out that penalties would be out. Then you're not. You're taking out the entire enforcement section. I'm, I I wasn't understanding that Alder Galvin was talking about replacing it with with various fines. I my I have to. I was, I was only saying okay. that as an example, as, as if that's what they wanted. They were saying it was too vague, and I was saying, well, then they could have penalties put into it, which I I, I don't prefer that. I prefer a softer approach, like as is. Yeah, okay. in, I would in say that, yes, definitely I prefer the way it's written right now. It's a soft approach. It's maybe subject. We have to have some enforcement with the ordinance, and it, it's very soft right now, and it doesn't say you'll pay $100 or $25 or, or whatever. Maybe subject. That is a great way for this to be written, and this is the way other ordinances are written. Some are more specific and some are not. So I will be voting against the amendment. Thank you. Alder. Any other comments before Alder Johnson? Mayor. Mayor. Alder Stoyer. Alder Stoyer for a second time. Uh, no, Alder Johnson is ahead of you. Oh, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of clarifications. So one is, you know, 89%, according to the Wisconsin DOT, 89% of the state of Wisconsin is in compliance 
is yet the only penalty for not wearing your seatbelt is a $10 fine. So the point is, with something like that, you can gain a vast majority of compliance with a very, very small penalty. In this particular case, I'm proposing the amendment that I'm pro proposing because I feel that it is, it is not appropriate for the businesses in our community to be responsible for policing this ordinance. That is the purpose of this. And if I uh, would maybe ask uh, Attorney Chavez, if I'm not mistaken, proper parliamentary procedure allow one amendment to an amendment. Is that correct? Give me one second, pull up, pull up. Okay, and I'll clarify why I'm bringing that up because any member of city council right now, if they want to, could make an amendment to my amendment replacing the enforcement verbiage. So that if it gives you more comfort and ease, you can do that. But my objective is still to remove the component that puts businesses in the middle of its customers in the law. So my cheat sheet confirms that it can be amended, but it does direct me to the rules to see how many times. So give me a second, I'll give you a final answer. Okay, while Attorney Chavez is looking into that, Alder Johnson, would you be okay with going to Alder Stoyer? Yes, thank you. you bet. Alder Stoyer. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Well, I, I was going along with Alder Johnson on this, but it seems like, you know, when you have uh, an ordinance without enforcement, you know, that it could be a two-edged sword, so to speak. So. You could look at something like this. I'll just throw it out there for, for everybody to listen to. Uh, you could have a first offense would be an educational talk, if you will, or some kind of a setup by where the person is told, okay, this is what we have on, on the books. The second offense could be a written warning. And the third offense could be a citation, not less than $5 and up to 500 I'm just throwing that out for, for conversation. Um, you know, I've been talking with the county on some of this, and I, I like the tack that they're going with. So I'm going to bring that forward, and if anybody's interested, they can uh, speak on that. Thank you. Well, there, Attorney Cabos. May I speak to an amendment? Yes, for a second time, Alder Dorf. Alder Johnson, I could agree with striking letter B um, under number four. I think I like the fact that um, the, the enforcement says businesses and organizations may rely on an individual they claim to be exempt from this section for the reasons permitted herein. I think just if I would be willing to support if you just had letter A under enforcement and, and strike letter B, are you open to that? I, I like my amendment the way that it's proposed. <laughs> okay, you, you offered us to do an amendment, so I tried. Well, I think Attorney Chavez is verifying if that can be done. Attorney Chavez? It's a long section, give me a second. Okay. Alder Dorf, you still have the floor. Okay, so I, my understanding was it could be amended once and she's checking to see if it can be amended more than once. But, so you, so you would not, is there any part of A you'd be willing to keep Alder Johnson? I would prefer to see my amendment go to an up or down vote. Okay. I'm, excuse me, I must have misunderstood what you were asking us to do, so I, I won't speak anymore, thank you. Mayor, can I ask a question? Yes, Alder Lefebvre. Uh, yes, if we vote and it uh, passes Alder Johnson's motion, then I would assume that we can, someone can make a motion to put in something under enforcement? Correct. Okay. Thank you. The Robert Schultz states that the there there's the first amendment, which is what was being offered by Alder Johnson, and then a secondary amendment, which would be anything to um, Alder Johnson's amendment, and a secondary amendment cannot be amended. Very good. Thanks, Attorney. 
So we do have that amendment on the floor and it has a second. Any further comments on the amendment? Yes, yeah. sir. Oh. Alder Scannell? Alder Weary, I'll, I'll defer to Alder Weary first. <laughs> Alder Weary, go ahead. Very generous of you, Alder Scannell. Um, I, I just had to point out how many times have we listened to some older people bellyache that we're doing called committee work at council? Lots, lots of times. And here we are doing a lot of committee work. So next time we do committee work at council, some of you, you know we are, I want to hear it. Uh, and also let's, let's not put forth falsehoods. Uh, Alder Scannell stated there's no teeth in this ordinance. That's a toothless ordinance. Yeah, it's toothless. Well, uh, let's see, au contraire, mon frere. Uh, license is in jeopardy. That bites. That one. That one comes. Well, that one has a little, little bit of tooth to it. A little bit. Um, we are now mandating a possible trespass citation, right? How much is that? How much is a trespass citation? Chief or Vanessa or Attorney Chavez, Chief Smith. Anybody have that? I do not have the uh, fine for a tra trespass citation. Sorry. When we look it up. I think that's kind of vital to what we're doing here if we're going to charge someone with a. With a I'm looking it up site. right now. Thank you. Is that no matter what it is, it's that that, that one's going to bite. Too. Um, and then we're we're cruelly asking city business employees to be the police. That that has to be emotionally and physically pretty straining, pretty stressful. So that that bites too. So I'm seeing three ways it bites, and I'll, I'll wait to hear on how much if possible. Citation. So it's not Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. Yeah. First of all, I never said that this didn't have any bite. I said put more bite. Uh, no, you said it had no two teeth. Alder, Alder Weary, no Alder Scannell. Well, it's got gum. It's got strong gums. Uh, I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, what I would like to uh, ask Chief Smith, because I have an amendment I'd like to propose, because I do not want to vote for this without having some enforcement uh, uh, attached to it, is um, how do you feel about you need a, a uh, continuum of fines, starting with a warning and say uh, 500 and then 1,000? Uh, do you feel that would be putting the police in a more, uh, more as a face mask policing force? Do you think that, that you're taking on more of that role if we go that route? Chief Smith? Yeah, well, certainly um, the police department will do whatever you as a council decide to do. That's our job. You guys enact the laws. You guys make the rules. The state legislature makes, legislature makes the rules. We, we follow the rules and we enforce those rules that you make unless they're found to be uh, unconstitutional by the courts. Um, as, it, as you're discussing, uh, a first level citation or first level talking to second level citation uh, or written warning, third level citation would cause us uh, certainly a lot more work than going in and responding to a, a simple trespass that uh, we would be enforcing. Okay, so uh, then I'm. Hey, I'm not gonna... Oh, sorry. I was just going to give you the number. The the fine for a trespass inclusive of court costs is currently one hundred eighty seven dollars. Thanks, Attorney. Alder Scannell, you have the floor. Okay, well then I'm, I'm not gonna propose an amendment. Uh, I think uh, a softer teeth uh, ordinance is uh, uh, maybe a more productive way to go. Uh, um, uh, listening to the very many voices who spoke out so strongly about just doing a, a resolution, uh, I think this at least takes a couple steps that we're not coming down with a hammer uh, with non-compliance. So I'm gonna not support uh, the amendment and uh, stick with trying to just um, use the course you know, abilities we have that are pretty lenient. I mean, you're gonna get a, uh, an individual's gonna get a trespassing fine if they become belligerent in the store. That's how they get, that. the store will call the police and then the police Wide would open. just like any time anybody would go into a business and create a disruption. Uh, and then for a business, uh, 
it, we would, like we do with liquor licenses and, and all our other businesses we've worked with in the past when there was non-compliance on issues, we always work with them to try to get them compliant. And then uh, if, if we just, they were so uh, adamant about uh, not <laughs> compliant, then we took sterner measures. So I, I don't think that uh, the threat of losing your license is something that's going to happen too quick and, and, and people are going to be worried. Uh, you know. They're not compliant right off the bat. Off the bat, they're going to be losing their money. So I, I don't support this That's foolish. amendment. Oh, did I? Did you hear me? No, just yes, yeah, yes. We heard all of that. There's somebody who is. I'm going to mute all because uh, there's somebody who's unmuted, and then I'll the next alder who would like to speak just unmute yourself. It's just. Mayor, this is my second time on the amendment. Yes, this go is ahead. Very, yes, thank you, Mayor. This is very troubling. The enforcement is troubling in that we are using administrative action against a business. Many people on this call who are not uh, knowledgeable of our city government probably don't know what that means. Council members here, 12 of us, really didn't know what it means. And how in the world can we propose a, an ordinance? Can the city government propose an ordinance for people on this call who drafted it or whose idea it was, didn't even know what the municipal citation was for trespassing? How in the world can we put forward something and put penalties against our public, our very people who this government owns, uh, belongs to? Without knowing what the ordinate, with, without knowing what the fine was for trespassing, that tells me that this was not thought out as well as it should have been. This should have been discussed at committee. The committee made the recommendation to essentially kill it twice. But here we are debating something, and our city leadership did not even know what the municipal fine was for trespassing. This is bad government. I'm against the I'm for the amendment. Uh, just because that tells me that we're not really thinking about this as clearly as we should. We just want to put it out there so we can get our people to comply. And listen, COVID is seriously, I'm not dismissing that. This is a serious pandemic we're dealing with. We've heard it over and over again. This cannot be rushed. We're putting substantial penalties on the public for something that we didn't really think about that clearly. No one on this call could tell us what the municipal fine was for trespass. That is not acceptable. Sorry, it's not. When you're drafting an ordinance, that's the, the penalties, the financial ramifications, that's one of the first things you should consider. I'm for the amendment, and then we gotta move on and, and start talking about other things, but this is not right. It's not right. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any questions or comments on the amendment? Yeah. Alder Galvin, go ahead. My, this is my second kick at the cat. Um, I think it's kind of funny that we're we're upset that we're going to have an ordinance that imposes a trespassing fine on people that refuse to comply with the ordinance, which means if they don't refuse, nothing happens. If they leave, nothing happens. It's only if they insist on entering the store and not leaving, something happens. And we're upset about that. But we're not upset, I guess, then, or are we upset if someone were to walk into Walmart tonight or any other store that currently has a mass sign up and that person refuses to leave? Is that okay if we charge them with trespassing or disorderly conduct? <clears throat> no one here seems to be thinking about that. And that's what's gonna happen if this ordinance fails. We're still gonna have stores that require mass. We're still gonna have to deal with individuals that refuse to comply with those stores orders. but. I, I guess that's not that big a deal here. But it's only if we have an ordinance, then it's a big deal. We have a soft approach to stores that don't comply. Alder Johnson talks about the seatbelt ticket. It is only $10, unless you have a child in that car who's unseatbelted, or unless it's more than one violation. Then they have a sliding scale for those citations because what we want is compliance. Almost all our laws and ordinances are designed to gain compliance. And that's all we're asking here of these stores. If they don't comply, if they purposely try to thwart the ordinance, then there are the possibilities that heavier penalties can come down. 
And that's why I'm not in support of this amendment. We have to have some teeth to this or it's not worth the paper it's written on, which obviously I think this is what some alders would prefer. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. If there aren't any additional comments, we'll go to the vote on the Alder's amendment, which- uh, Mayor, Mayor. Yes, Alder Lefebvre. I had to unmute myself. Uh, listening to others, and I think, um, yes, if we can't, if uh, police, uh, Chief of Police had said that if we do the education and the written warning and then the citation, it's more work for him. So I am going to vote against this amendment. And I also think if you really read it, it always says may, may. It does not say will. <clears throat> Excuse me, my, my voice is starting to go. Um, it says may. So that's up to the business to decide. And this here is up to the uh, city and the council. Okay. What we decide to do. So it's not heavy-handed and as Alder Galvin mentioned it's a soft <clears throat> excuse me a soft approach thank you Alder don't have any further amend or comments on the amendment we will go to Mayor, could you just have uh, read the amendment what the amendments gonna do give us that information on the amendment again uh, so um, correct me if I'm wrong Alder Johnson but uh, the amendment I believe they References to penalties in that la that last whereas clause on page two, um, the aspect that says but recognizes that penalties are necessary, deletes that language and then deletes the enforcement section on the final page of the ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. And we will use the board. Mayor, I'm going to have to vote verbally, Alder Steuer. Yes, Alder? Uh, I vote no. I, I vote uh, for Alder Johnson on this one, so. You're voting yes on the I amendment? Vote. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. So that amendment fails 7-5. So we have a list of speakers here. No right is. So if there's an alder that would like to seek recognition, it's probably the best way to do it. Yep. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion to refer this to the Protection and Policy Committee because it obviously needs a lot more work. Thank you. Okay. Motion made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Burnett to refer back to Protection and Policy. Discussion on that motion. We'll refer to because I really didn't come for, from there, but yeah. Yeah. Your Honor. Understood. Alder Scanlon. Yes. Uh, my original, when I first brought this forward, this is a very time sensitive issue. And when I brought it to committee, I, it was my recommendation to committee to, for, to refer this to staff to bring to a committee as a whole so that we could go over it because it is a time sensitive issue. We don't have the time to kick it around. And then by the time it comes to council again, it's too late. If we don't do this now, there's no point. Perfect. in doing it. So this is why it became incumbent upon us because of the emergency situation we are in to do committee work <laughs> on the floor. If it were not an emergency situation, CDC. I would have not Alder, recommended Alder to Scannell. the committee. That Alder, Scannell, can you, Alder Scannell, can you yeah. just hold your comments? I need to mute everybody again. And then if you could unmute yourself and proceed. So it was uh, strictly because this is time sensitive. Mayor, would I be able to weigh in real quick? Certainly. Yes, yes, as long as Alder Scan, I'll use certainly, the certainly. floor. Attorney Chavez. Um, so just, just so everybody is aware, um, because this is done under emergency powers, the, the proclamation is subject to ratification, alteration, modification, or repeal by the governing body. But the subsequent action is not, um, does not affect the prior validity of the proclamation. So if this is referred back to, or referred to committee, it will take effect um, 
and then it will be subject to whatever the, the, the committee um, or whatever the governing body, governing body ultimately decides. Oh. Can, can you say that, that last bit just one more time, Attorney Chavez? Yes. Because this was enacted under the emergency powers, it is subject to ratification, alteration, modification, or repeal. So it is going to go into effect on the day, um, the effective date, which I believe is the 27th. Correct. And after the committee uh, and council decide, then the action will be taken in response to that. But it will go into effect if the council does not um, take action on it tonight. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. So in that case, if we passed it tonight and it went into effect as is or whatever changes we make tonight, but we still refer it to committee and committee makes some other changes and comes back, we could then amend the proclamation, correct? Attorney Correct. If, not, if, not, if, if nothing happens on it tonight, um, it will go into effect and then it will be subject to whatever amendments happen later. But what is in place today um, is what will go into effect if the committee, or the council, I should say, does not act on it. Okay, well then, uh, I have no objection to sending this to committee then. I think, uh, uh, I think. The motion is rescinded. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank, thanks Alder. I got time. So we're, we're back to uh, the item itself. Comments or motions? Yep, I have a motion. Alder Weary? Thank you. Uh, wherever appropriate, I'd like to exempt places of worship, wherever exemptions are. That's my motion. I think Alder Vanderlees was attempting to second the motion. He's muted. Alder Vanderlees, is that correct? That's correct. I'd second the motion. Okay. Discussion? <clears throat> Question for where I didn't see anything. Would that be assembly? How would that be written into the, what would that look like, Attorney Chavez? Um, there's two options. I think that the cleaner option is to put it in the exceptions as a separate item. Uh, the other one would be just to list it as indoor area access uh, for the for B, the one you guys um, voted on the amendment earlier, to specifically list it there. I think, but like I said, I think the cleaner one, so that people will find it easier, is to list it in the exemptions under three. Okay. Is that your wish, Alder Weary? Sounds good, yes. Okay. So adding places of worship under exemptions. Discussion. <sighs> Seeing none, we will go to a vote on that. It's uh, been made, motions have been made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Vanderlease. We will use- Board, the, please. Yep, we'll use the board on this uh, exemption Thank for you. places of worship. Mayor, uh, Alder Stoyer votes yes. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell, it didn't show up. That amendment succeeds 7-5. All right. Other alders seeking recognition? Yeah. 
I do have a question. Yes, all the way. Thank you. Uh, I did have someone ask me about the uh, under definitions, 1A face coverings. Uh, the last part of it, face shield, which covers the mouth and nose fits snugly against the side of the face. Um, I did have someone ask me that there are face shields worn as OSHA PPE that don't touch the sides of the face, but they do protect the mouth and nose. Is that fixable here or what? Uh, OSHA approved face shields? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, really up to you, Aldo, whatever you're comfortable with. Mayor? Uh, I'll yes. think about it. I'll, I'll see the floor right now. Okay, I'll do the fave. Uh, yes, maybe it doesn't make sense because it's saying then a face shield covering mouth and nose, <clears throat> fit, fitting smugly against the side of face. The shield usually doesn't. So I think maybe the shield should be more at the end. What you're talking about is the mask covering the nose and all that, and that should fit, should cover the mouth, let's see, should fit snugly against the sides of the face or a face shield which covers the mouth and nose. Because the, uh, from what I've seen, the face shields do not cover the snugly against the side of the face. Okay, additional thoughts on the item as amended. Right. Well, what was the amended amendment exactly? I, I didn't no, no, I, no, I was referring to places of worship amendment. Oh, which, oh. Well, that one. Oh, that one oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were at this face covering. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we are. I'm just saying there was a successful amendment. So I'm referring to the item as amended. Oh, oh okay. Well, should I, I make a motion that the face covering <clears throat> the way it is written should be rewritten. Okay, face covering means a manufactured homemade cloth covering that fully covers an individual's nose and mouth. And it's secured with ear straps or otherwise tied so as to prevent slipping and fits snugly against the side of the face and is secured to the head or a face shield which covers the mouth and nose. Okay, so that's eliminating. This is Attorney Travis. Um, yes. the, the way we can do it to make it very simple um, is to just remove, fit snugly against the side of the face. Okay. Okay, that's my motion then, to take out fit snugly against the side of the face. Okay. Second. That was seconded by Alder Stevens. If I could. Yeah, just confirming, seconded by Alder Stevens. Yes. Other scandal. Uh, it should cover the side of the face, maybe not snugly, but they sh it, the shields should cover the side of the face. It shouldn't be open at the sides. So maybe just take out the word snugly. It covers the side of the face. Fit snugly. Oh. Or fits. Okay, I'll, I'll take that as a uh, <laughs> amendment to my amendment. <laughs> okay, snugly. Let's take the word snugly out. That's my amendment. Yeah. It's. Um, can we actually change it to covers the side of the face? Covers the side of the face. Okay. Yeah. Covers the side of the face. Okay. Whatever is the proper way of putting it, that that's my amendment. Okay. And that is still seconded by Alder Stevens. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Comments on that. Seeing none, we'll go to the board on this amendment. Thank 
My, my board isn't coming up. Oh, it came up. Okay. Mayor, this all the all the story I vote yes. Elder. That amendment is adopted ten to two. Further comments on the item? Mayor. Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Yes, Alder Galvin. Are, are we just talking about the ordinance as it stands now? Are we moving forward with that or are we still looking for other amendments and things like that? I have other amendments. Yeah, it's certainly appropriate to entertain amendments. All right, I'll, I'll hold my comments until uh, Alder Johnson is done. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson? Thank you, Mayor. I move to amend item 4, uh, 4B, that we strike item 4B. Second. And I would explain that um, item. It, it seems to me that the other alders that were uncomfortable with my initial amendment uh, we're really related to item 4A. So I'm requesting that 4B be, be struck uh, because again, this is the one that relates to um, in, imposing penalties on businesses with their licenses to the city. And there seemed to be sufficient enough uh, vagueness around this that it, it really isn't adding anything of substance to this document. So there further discussion on that amendment, which would be removing 4B. I just have a question. Yeah, Alder Galvin, go ahead. Uh, this is for Alder Johnson. What would you recommend for a company that uh, is knowingly um, violating the spirit of this ordinance day in and day out? How should the city handle that then? I would defer to the mayor, but I don't believe that, that this type of back and forth is allowed. Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm just trying to get some, some grasp here um, of, of what the city could do. Maybe that would be for Attorney Chavez. If we don't have a, a uh, sub B in there, Attorney Chavez, what could the city do for businesses that uh, knowingly um, ignore this ordinance? Let me ask that question. So this, this is, um, in my opinion, an, an informative piece for the um, public because if somebody is knowingly violating our ordinances, um, when their licenses come up for a renewal, we take that into consideration um, when we re recommend um, action being taken on them. So regardless, if somebody is ignoring the city's ordinances, um, okay. so we, there's we some pressure that could be brought. Them. All right, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Further questions or comments on that? I do, Mayor. Alder Burnett, go ahead. I'm in favor of the amendment. I don't believe that that is an acceptable provision. Let's think about a business owner right now. You know, they're, many are barely hanging on to things beyond their control. Inevitably, we're going to have people in this city who are not going to comply so the city, uh, the business owner is basically going to have to enforce this against some of their customers, many long-term customers who may uh, never come back to that business because they're frustrated being turned away. The business has to comply with it. And if they don't, they're subject to administrative action by the city of Green Bay, which possibly means losing their current license as the extreme part of the enforcement. I know there are several steps up until that point, but we just heard the city attorney say that the future issuance of licenses could be affected. I don't think that we should weaponize city government against our businesses. That's not appropriate. I, I don't like it. It's just not right. I mean, think about what we're, what we're doing here. This is a very punitive action on our business people who provide taxes to this community to fund this government 
and we're going to make them enforce this against their own customers. And we already know based on things we're seeing in other municipalities and videos we've all watched, the enforcement of this is tough. There are going to be people that resist. It's going to happen. I don't wanna jeopardize our businesses and, and cause them additional stress and worry that somehow somewhere down the line, the city of Green Bay is gonna revoke their license. If not now, then a year or two when they reapply for, for the license. Not appropriate. I'm for removing this provision and I commend Alder Johnson for bringing it forward again. Thank you. Thanks Alder. But hearing none, we will oh, use oh, the board. Mayor, uh, Mayor, I'm ahead. sorry. May I speak? Alder and then Alder LeFave. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, when you look at this here, do you think A, do you think the business owner is going to call the police for every little thing? And then there's also exceptions for all those people. All they have to say when they come into the store is that I have a health exception. I have one of the exceptions list, listed in this ordinance. And the owner is probably going to say, okay, please, just please keep your distance then. You know, they're going to be polite about it. I don't see. And then for a business, as it's been stated, I don't think we're going to go after a business right away. We're not going to. I think probably what the city will do <clears throat> will be talking to the business and just saying this is the best for everybody, please try try to follow this year. Do the best that you can. I don't think there's going to be that we're going to just willy-nilly take someone's license away. This thing. But also, we have an ordinance. We have ordinances and we have rules and laws where if a bar is constantly allowing underage people in, we've closed them down. We took their license away. I hope you're not thinking, some elders who said this, that you're not thinking that, oh, that's a punishment and we're going to lose that business. Took it away from them because they continually did not follow any of the proper rules and regulations. So I, I don't think that we're going to be uh, out there just taking people's licenses away. Thank you. So Alder, Alder Scannell. Yes, uh, I think we kind of covered this before. And also, uh, I, I think it, it, for me, this is just like when we uh, went with smoking. Again, that was a, a, a put upon the businesses to address that. And I don't think it was the end of the world. Uh, I, I and I don't and I hope that uh, if a business is dealing with a customer that is uh, being non-compliant and being uh, uh, disruptive, that they back away and call the police, and that's where the the A comes in. Uh, so I I don't think that uh, this is uh, terribly coercive or, or onerous or inappropriate. Uh, for than anything else we've done in the past. And I think we need a little something. Again, I don't think we could, again, list a series of uh, fines. Uh, this is a much softer approach and much more cool. And uh, I'm all for trying that out before we need to resort to uh, uh, bringing down a hammer on businesses for being non-compliant. So I do not support uh, removing this from the ordinance. Alder. And, oh, and Mayor, can I mention one, one other thing? For a second time, I'll do the favor. Yes. Um, also, it says in the first, in A, it says the authorized representative of the business or organization. That would be the manager or the business owner. It is, um, people had talked about this. Oh, they got 17-year-olds uh, checkouts and that, that they're going to be uh, in harm's way because someone might get belligerent with them. This is not, none of the employees are going to be doing this. It says the authorized representative of the business. That means a manager or an owner would be taking care of this. So that's just another thing everybody should be aware of. Thank you. Right. Alder Galvin, go ahead. Thank you. Um, in my experience over the years, 
working in several businesses and uh, taking police action in several businesses. And even officers were told that in off-duty uh, situations merely become good witnesses. No one's saying that people have to go, these employees have to go hands-on with these individuals that refuse to comply with orders uh, to put a face mask on and or to leave the building. And again, these are buildings. I mean, how do they handle shoplifters? How do they handle people that become disorderly or domestic disputes that erupt in their businesses or their stores? And many of the places that I think some of you alders seem to be worried about are restaurants and bars. And if I understand this ordinance correctly, there's no mask required in those establishments anyway by the customer. It would only be the staff that would have to be wearing the mask. So I'm not really sure where all this, this concern is coming from um, about overreacting employees or employees putting themselves at risk when merely all they have to do is ask someone to put on a mask just like they would ask them to put on their shirt or put on their shoes or whatever other rules the store may have. And if that potential customer doesn't comply and doesn't leave, they pick up the phone and they call the dispatch center and the police are sent. And all they do is become good witnesses. I, I don't see how that is putting the businesses at risk. The ones I'm worried about are the businesses, like I've mentioned before, the, the particular bar was smoking. That basically laughed at the, at the state statute and the ordinances in the city and laughed at the enforcement action because they, they collected a fee from everyone that smoked. And those are the businesses I think that we would be applying section B to and only after they had been given warnings. I mean, the police department issues warnings all the time, sometimes verbal, sometimes written. And even when they issue citations, I've seen our protection and policy committee take many citations and incidents like that and downplay them and handle it at a, a much more subtle level. So I'm, I'm, I'm concerned where suddenly alders are uh, accusing our other alders of taking draconian measures against businesses that don't comply with this ordinance. And I'm not sure where it's coming from because I've never seen it in this city yet um, when it comes to other types of violations. Thank you. Mayor, if I could, a second time. Yes, Alder Brunat. Second time on the amendment. Uh, Attorney Chavez, again, could you clarify the list of businesses that the city of Green Bay provides licenses to? You want me to read the list again? Yes, please. So I think uh, I think the council needs to hear that again. Ambulances, auto salvage storage, bakeries and confectionaries, billiard and pool tables, game rooms, solicitors, cigarettes, closing out sales, restaurants, fermented liquor licenses, hotels and motels, junk and secondhand dealers on brokers, residential building contractors, retail food markets, sales at city stadium, taxi cab business licenses and operator licenses. And those are primarily it. Thank you. Now, uh, Alder Galvin, uh, if I could, Mayor, I, I agree with, I, I understand where Al, uh, Alder Galvin is coming from. I really do. But I think why this is more most concerning is the lack of public awareness of the issue. Uh, so basically the committee had made, and this, this speaks to the amendment mayor, so please allow it. The committee made the vote, okay? The agenda was published on the Green Bay City website. It did not include this amendment. It did not include, I should say, it did not include this ordinance, okay? This ordinance was not included in the agenda packet when it went to the public. The mayor, the mayor had a press conference on Monday morning, announced it early in the morning. Many of the city council members were not invited as far as I'm concerned. I didn't get an invitation and I'm the city council president. So then the press conference is held from what I understand, it was scheduled outside, secondhand knowledge here, again, I was not invited. This is not a personal slide. I'm not trying to be childish about it, but I'm just trying to understand the process and why I believe it's poor government and why the public is rallying against it at the moment. So we were not invited or consulted on the idea. Many of us were surprised to hear about it on social media. 
It was scheduled to be held outside. 20 to 25 members of the community, many of whom this will affect in a very real way. Although you gotta get to- This is to my point, Mayor. This is exactly my point. It, it, it affected real people. Somehow along the way, the press conference was moved inside. 20 to 25 members of the public did not have access to their city government when this was presented to the press. We get it later. We get it a couple hours before the end of business. Great, I'm glad we got it at least. So that if we did not know what was going on, Although how could we, these, these, how could we these comments are definitely more appropriate on final, on passage. Well, no, I, to be honest, I disagree because it, it points to the public opposition. Uh, 40 people, I don't know, were against it today, 11 for it. The people who have been contacting me, they didn't even have a chance to read the ordinance. So it does go to enforcement because now we are saying to them, oh, here's the ordinance. And if I'm a business owner in this community, I am outraged because this affects them in a very real way. It's not right. The way it was done, the way it was revealed, that's time for removing this provision. We can't give the public one day notice and say, your city government could possibly revoke your license on something that you were only informed about a day before. And then, oh, by the way, maybe not this year or next year, or in the future when you reapply for your license, we're gonna remember this. That is, to Alder Gal, when you say it's draconian, I get it, that's a strong word, but I'm telling you that that's the way it appeals to me. I represent people in this district, businesses that are barely holding on. And we throw this on them and we wonder why the public is angry and you wonder why people say draconian and this and that. It's not the way to do it. And I know many of you understand that. I don't know why we're doing this to the public. It should have been discussed at committee. I'm for, I'm for removing this. I applaud Alder Johnson for, the, for the, the idea and being very bold about it. You're looking out for the businesses in this community and that is never a bad thing. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Further comments on the amendment? Hearing none, we're going to go to the vote. On the vote, use the board. I'll let you vote. Uh, Alder Scannell? We can just vote. It's all right. We'll use the board. Mayor, is this to, this uh, yes. is to remove B, right? 4B, correct. Mayor, this is Alder Stoyer. I vote yes. Thanks, Alder. <sighs> well, it is a tie, six to six. I vote against. That amendment fails. Mayor, do I still have the floor? Sure, go ahead, Alder. All right, I move to amend section two, sunset provision. It currently reads this ordinance is hereby repealed immediately upon termination of the city of Green Bay's declaration of emergency. I would amend that at the end of that sentence, we add, or if the county adopts a countywide mandate. Second. I'll, I'll second that. Any further comments? A uh, motion has been made, an amendment's been made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Could you state that again, please? The language that I'm adding is, or if the county adopts a countywide mandate. Okay. And just to clarify, Mayor, the reason I'm proposing this is because if I'm not mistaken, without that verbiage, um, both both ordinances would would coexist and it would require future action by this body to rescind this ordinance so I'm, I'm adding that so that we can expedite that process right now, where exactly does that line go i'm trying to pull it up here it's on page three alderdorf under section two which is at the bottom of the page 
Uh, I don't have any objection to that, just from okay. my perspective. It's something that I've said that I intended to do. So just mm -hmm. for counsel's benefit. Your Honor? Yes, Alder Scannell. Uh, actually, I, I am a little concerned with that. I don't know. I mean, if the county just passes one for county buildings, I don't know that I would want our ordinance to be uh, rescinded. I, I would like to know what the county passes before we rescind our, our, our ordinance. I mean, uh, I should hope it would be sure. pretty much what we've got, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they're going to come up with. Uh, uh, I expected them to come up with something before. I mean, I, I was hoping not to have to do this. I expected the county to step up earlier and that didn't happen. So um, I don't know, until I know what they've got, I don't support uh, automatically rescinding. Uh, uh, on that point, Alder, yep. if I could ask Attorney Chavez a question. Sure. Uh, the comments that I made were that if the county <laughs> were to adopt something substantially similar, I would rescind our action. Uh, is that appropriate legal language, substantially similar? Um, yes, although I don't really see an issue with the language that's proposed because it does say a countywide mandate. So it wouldn't be countywide if it just applied to the county buildings. Ah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then uh, I'm fine. Further comments, questions? Can do the board. It's absolutely. We will move to the vote. Uh, that uh, that was offered by Alder Johnson and seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Mayor, this is Alder Story. Right vote, yes. That is adopted 11 to 1. Mayor, I just have one final amendment. Go ahead, Alder. I would move that we amend item 4A and replace um, the language related to trespassing laws and replace it with a $10 municipal citation. Second. It has been made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Brunette. So you removing that entire section and replacing it with? No, just, just the piece that relates to trespassing, that they could be charged with trespassing laws. I'm repeating, they may enforce a $10 municipal citation. And I'm, I'm, I'm content with keeping or any other law they may violate. Obviously, if someone's doing something beyond that, it, that's, a, that's a legit piece to keep there. So you're deleting may and or deleting enforce trespassing laws, replacing with may levy ten dollar municipal fine or whatever the appropriate language would be. Issue, perhaps. Sorry. Attorney Chavez. Um, what we generally do when we are um, imposing a penalty is we make it mandatory. So the recommended language would be shall be subject to a municipal citation in the amount of $10. Why is the language in here not mandatory right now? Because we're not imposing an, 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 a new penalty. But if we are imposing a penalty, um, like we're relying on trust tests. But if we are trying to impose a new one, then people need to know that their conduct is in violation of it, and this is what will happen. So is a trespassing, is a violation of a trespassing law not a penalty? Well, it is, but it's already established and has its own, has its own um, obligations attached to it. Could you just explain that a little bit further? Am I the only one not? understanding what that means, why there's a difference? I think it's the difference between a new penalty and a, an existing penalty. Correct. So the penalties already exist in, by, like trespassing law, for example, it already exists as an ordinance, is that why? Correct. 
So from a legal perspective, is there any other penalty that the staff has considered besides a tras trespassing law? Well, um, there, <laughs> we did consider a penalty for a violation. Um, and then of course, this early conduct, but a person's, a person's um, conduct has to rise to it, which was why um, trespass makes the most sense. If a business owner asks somebody to leave and they don't, they're trespassing. Are there, I think you had mentioned before, um, and, I, and I can't recall the exact number, but it was roughly around $180. Is, is that amount in the ordinance or do we have the ability to modify the amount? The, I don't remember how trespass is laid out, the city prosecutor does, but that is inclusive of court costs. Court costs, I think, are, believe, are between um, $60 and $80. Um, last I um, inquired on it. So you're, more, you're looking more at a penalty of, you know, 100 bucks for trespass, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, with this, I'm sorry, the city prosecutor's um, is only right now. That's the default bond amount. And so what we would do here is if we're establishing it, we put a range. Um, that's what we do with most, they shall be subject to a, a forfeiture of between, um, you know, one and 500, and that allows the judge to determine what the appropriate penalty will be. Um, but here, if we're actually specifying why it is or what it is that the penalty will be, then we set the penalty. So I could say in this instance that we may enforce a $10 trespassing fee? What do you, what do you mean? Can I specify the amount? I still leave it as trespassing, but just specify the amount. No, the, the penalty for trespassing is already established. Okay, and do you know, you don't know what that range is? Um, the default bond amount is set by the judge for forfeiture. What I can tell you is that it's 187 inclusive of court costs. We'll amount to see what it, what it is. Okay, in any event, I think the amount is just in, in far, far in excess of what I, I prefer, which is why I'm trying to reduce it. Is there any other way that you can think of that we could word this to reduce the amount of the penalty? You can establish a range. By the ordinance. You can establish a range. So if you don't want to establish it as $10, well, you can establish $10. What I'm saying is that what you don't want to do is say may, um, because then we're, we're not really creating an, an enforceable ordinance. Um, what we do with ordinances is the penalty is subject to forfeiture of. And so if you want to say it's subject to penalty or forfeiture of $10, it is subject to that. Um, otherwise, you can set a range of, you know, zero to 500 is generally what we um, state, but we do set penalties at other numbers. Okay, so, so in that case then, I would amend that we have this say that it uh, may enforce um, trespassing penalties of zero to $20. No, we, we, if, what we would be doing is either establishing a new amount for, for violation of this ordinance, or we just say they, are, they will be subject to trespass. Like it, origi like it originally states. May I offer a little help? Good for you. Alder Johnson? I, I'm okay to give up the floor for the moment. Yep. I just think I maybe could suggest that you um, might uh, state it like this. If the individual refuses to leave or continues to refuse to comply with this section, law enforcement shall enforce a $10 fine or any other law the individual may violate. Would that work? That's no? We create an ordinance for that then. Can I, can, can I ask a quick question? Maybe this might help clarify. 
um, we, we have a shoplifting ordinance. And because we were having a lot of problems with repeat offenders, we established a first offense, second offense, and third offense penalty. What you have to be careful of is there's always court costs associated with it, which are mandated by city ordinance to try and cover some of the costs that are incurred when the city prosecutor and the judge and everybody else has to handle this, this incident. Um, so I, I guess kind of keep that in mind when we're, when we're moving forward on this. I, I see where you're going and it's kind of like the seatbelt ticket um, pretty much. So um, I guess I would ask Vanessa if the ordinance would be the, the mask ordinance and that's what they would be cited for and that would be the $10 fee. Correct. If, if we are putting a $10 fee, they are being cited for non-compliance with our face covering ordinance. So, so then Brian, it would be a specific ordinance for not complying with the mask. Um, and so it would be up to the officer, I think, depending upon the person's demeanor and behavior, whether he charges them with a $10 fine or he goes with disorderly conduct or trespassing or something more serious. The officer would it. still have the option to issue a warning, verbal warning, written warning, or he could give issue him a ten dollar ticket. I would ask Vanessa, if a ten dollar ticket, do we have to add on the court costs? Yeah. Okay. So Brian, your ten dollar ticket would probably cost them about ninety dollars when it's all said and done. And I think it would be appropriate at this time to see if Chief Smith has any thoughts on on this change the most important thing for me is that we allow our officers discretion sometimes a police officer in uniform coming in and explaining to somebody what's going to happen if they don't comply gets the compliance that we're after and that's what we're all after here right we're all after voluntary compliance so i don't want to have a something that says our officers shall issue a citation i want to give them the opportunity to explain to somebody what's going to happen and then um, if you don't leave now, or if you don't comply with the face mask ordinance, then you will be, I will be issuing a citation. Give them that opportunity of a, of a may site instead of a shall site. And let me, cor let me correct the, the language that I'm, I'm saying we need to put in place. It would say the individual shall be subject to a municipal forfeiture in the amount of $10. So it's not taking away that discretion for you to cite. It is literally saying it's putting in place the um, mandatory amount that they will be um, subject to if they if the officer chooses to cite them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Johnson, you still have the floor. Thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate you, Mayor, for referring this to for Chief's uh, perspective because that is exactly the point that I'm struggling with, right? Which is if we if we have to change the language to shall. I mean, we're, we're in essence, in, in essence, they're they're required to do it. I'd rather leave them with the flexibility um, to not issue the citation. Instead, would take an opportunity here to urge the chief that if this ordinance does pass, um, that we exercise great discretion with the public and in, in only enforce in instances of egregious violations. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. May, may I ask a question of uh, Vanessa? Go ahead, Alder. Chavez. Uh, the word may, when you're talking about law enforcement here, may, that doesn't may leave it up to the officer to decide if he is going to give that um, citation for trespassing, that he can decide if, the, like you said, the law enforcement person will come. The officer will talk to the person, explain the situation, and ask if they would please leave. And if they do not leave, then he may enforce that trespassing law. The word may, instead of will, will means that he, he would absolutely do the trespassing law. That's the way I'm taking it. Can you give me the definition for may and will with the enforcement? So you are absolutely correct. May is permissive, shall is um, mandatory. What I'm saying is that we have to actually establish what the penalty is if a violation occurs, not take away that, that um, 
discretion for them to enforce it. So what I'm proposing is that the language state the individual shall be subject to a municipal forfeiture in the amount of ten dollars covers that. So so if somebody fails, if somebody doesn't comply and they get cited, they are getting cited at ten dollars. But it doesn't mean that they have to get cited. It's just saying that is what the amount will be. But then they have to pay the court costs too, so Yeah. Okay. They do. But that happens okay. on every citation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. So Alder Johnson, where do we stand then with your proposal? Yeah, I guess that just sheds a little bit different light on this. So if, if using the word shall does not necessarily require police to issue the citation, that would be my amendment that the citation shall be $10. Okay. May I ask uh, Alder um, Johnson, then you want to take out the trespassing law? Yes. Any other law? I, I'm okay with any other law, that, but I, that, I'm looking to eliminate trespassing. Yeah. Actually, that would be okay because if the owner wants the officer, that would leave it up to the owner to decide if he wants to enforce the trespassing law then or any other violation. So Attorney Chavez, can you encapsulate yeah. what Alder Johnson is hoping to accomplish by just reading the relevant um, pieces of, of 4A? Um, I think that Alder Johnson and I are actually saying the same thing, just not <laughs> understanding each other. So um, <laughs> what I- what Law school what I, I did <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just joking. Oh. Um, so what 4A would now read is any individual who fails to comply with this section has to leave by an authorized representative of the business organization. If the individual refuses to leave or continues to refuse to comply with this section, the individual shall be subject to a municipal forfeiture in the amount of $10 or any other law the individual may violate. Yes, that is my amendment. I'll second that. Motion Thank you, Attorney Chavez. To amend by You're Alder welcome. Johnson, seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Discussion on the amendment. Being none, we will go to the board. Mayor and Selder Stoyer, I vote yes. And that is adopted 10 to 2. <clears throat> and I believe that was your final amendment, Alder? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other proposed amendments? Otherwise, we could go to the question, question of the item as amended. Clear question or clarification, I guess. Yes, Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> On uh, 3E, if I could clarify, we kind of talked about it a little bit, and I'm not sure if it was totally clear, but individuals, uh, so it's 3E, individuals in settings where it is not practical or feasible to wear face coverings when obtaining or rendering goods or services, yada, 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 consuming food or beverages. Now, I think Alder Galvin had mentioned that means all bars and restaurants are excluded. Is that correct or is that not correct? I think he was he was asking the question as well, but I think we need some clarification there. Right. Yeah, my understanding is when, you know, during the um, the action of consuming food or beverages, obviously masks would not be required, but I will go to Attorney Chavez for the legal opinion. That is correct, because it states consuming food or beverages, it is limited to the time you're consuming it. Similarly, with receipt of dental services, um, that would mean that you would still have to wear it if you're not actually in receipt of dental or medical services. Um, and that would apply to everything um, that would fall under this classification. Um, it is not limited to them. It is inclusive, but it is not limited to those types of services. 
So, for instance, let's say you're uh, a bar <clears throat> and people are eating popcorn and pretzels and drinking their beer all around the establishment. They're pretty much all exempt. Pretty much every bar is going to be exempt. They're going to have something to eat. You always have a drink in your hand. <laughs> I would right. say when they're sitting at the table eating and drinking, yes. Well, most bars, a lot of people don't sit at a table. They might be standing around the bar, standing in little groups with the beer in hand, chucking popcorn in, pretzels, whatever they're doing, taking a sip. They're, they're in the, the act constantly of eating something or drinking something. A, a case could be made then that pretty much every bar is exempt if you have some food and you're just drinking a little something. You're always in the act of eating or drinking. So that'd be my suggestion. For those um, what about wedding venues? You're gonna make everybody at a wedding wear a mask? Everybody, not in the church, but it may be at, a, at the hall later. Obviously not during dinner, but unless they're all eating snacks. I suppose a case can be made there too, where they always free beer, free soda, and they have the cake. So I guess that could be an exemption then too. Okay, so wedding venues are exempt and bars. Not sure about the restaurants. Okay, thank you. That's not an exemption. That's not an accurate reading, but I appreciate the- uh, well, That's my opinion. I think it'll be opinion of other people. I appreciate the uh, attempt at offering a legal opinion. Huh, I'm gonna be challenged on that. <laughs> Any comments? Me, um, yes. Yes, Alder Lefebvre. Um, wedding venue, people are at a wedding. They're not always eating, sitting down to eat. So it's when they're sitting down to eat, and they do, uh, they have their toast once in a while. But I think it's pretty open when you're eating or you're drinking, you don't have to wear a mask. Right. Yeah, it's simple. Okay. I do have another question, another clarification. Yes, all the way. It came up earlier and we never really addressed it, so I thought it'd be good here. As written right now, under enforcement, you don't have a, any license with any kind that does not apply to you. Because there is no enforcement action. It's not accurate to say that it doesn't. No, um, now that the, um, the, the penalty still applies to a person anywhere in the city of Green Bay. It's just that if there is no license, then that person would not be subject to administrative procedures by the city. The business? Yes, thank you. So the, the business might wear a mask, perhaps, but the people inside, nothing would happen to the business. We do not have jurisdiction over businesses that do not have a license with the city. There we go. Thank you. That's a big exemption. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's any other amendments or not, but I'll speak at the end if there isn't. Any other amendments? Otherwise, we will move to final action here on uh, on item one. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion, motion made by Alder Scannell to approve as amended. Seconded by, we'll go with Alder Stevens. Uh, so I do have a queue here. Um, it's pretty old, I'm guessing, but I'll go through it and see if uh, if you have comments. Alder Dorf. I don't have any further comments. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is just kind of a, I guess, a final statement on the document as a whole. Um, again, I want to thank uh, the members of the public. We had 500 plus uh, people that had reached out with a wide spectrum of opinions and beliefs and by no means was this an easy process for council tonight and so i would also like to commend my my colleagues for working through some of this process um you know it, it, politicians were responsible for holistic decisions and it and, and unfortunately it doesn't provide us the luxury for one-dimensional arguments uh, an example of that would be is this good for public health i mean we believe it is we hope it is uh, but there are countless other considerations to take into account and i can assure you that a one-dimensional decision would be much easier than what we've had before us tonight. On one side, we hear that we should let science make this decision. 
yet there's little follow-up with dissertation studies or facts to support what science should be following. Trust the science is a threatening statement intended to guilt you into supporting a mandate. Saying it loudly does not make it more true. If the science was conclusive, we wouldn't be having this debate. Even the World Health Organization and CDC have published articles suggesting masks have not conclusively proven to be effective. On the other end, we're told this is an infringement on our constitutional rights, liberties, and freedoms. Here again, little evidence to suggest this is actually a violation of any constitutional authority other than that of a personal independence. I personally will not let partisan politics dictate my conscience. You cannot trust extreme propaganda messaging from either side that uses extreme anecdotes meant to create shock and prove a point. It preys on emotions. Statements like it's just a flu or we're sending children to their deaths is meant to downplay or overreact to the existing situation and attempt to gain favor. And I do not support or bend to shame politics, such as if you don't do this, people will die. There's two reasons, almost always, uh, represents the fringe and it absolves the citizenry of taking personal responsibility. I personally prefer data-driven decision-making which requires multi-dimensional impacts and authentically cares for public health on all layers, more so than anecdotes. A world surrounds us with risks. Ultimately, it is the responsibility of government to assess that risk and ensure a response is measured and does not overreach. If we overreach in response to every risk, we'll find ourselves li living in an Orwellian world of complete government control. This isn't a debate about the effectiveness of masks, rather the role of government in enforcing their use. And here's ultimately what I know. Wearing a mask is not a vaccine. It is not our last line of defense, if a defense at all. Suggesting this is what has prevented spread in other countries does not take into account other measures that have been deployed. There's no clearly defined exit strategy other than the termination of the declaration of emergency. No goal, no outcomes. I'm very concerned about enforcement as, as was talked about today. People are saying, do it like Milwaukee, but their health department is enforcing businesses and we don't have a health department, which means it falls to the police. They don't have the capacity to take this on, which means it won't be enforced. Why have a law you can't enforce? It's begging for civil disobedience. And if we find that to be acceptable, then there should be no objection to removing the penalty for non-compliance. And I, I commend my other my peers for uh, at least reducing it. If the general public has not embraced the health risks associated with this pandemic and is not willing on their own to take proper precautions, then we have either utterly failed as a government institution to communicate those risks, or perhaps the data uh. presents another narrative that must carefully balance protected privilege with inconclusive health remedies. It's unsafe for us to find complete security in passage of this ordinance, and voluntary participation will be far more effective in achieving our desired outcomes. We have options, we need to educate before we mandate. And last, regardless of how the vote falls in this issue, I call on all citizens in Green Bay to please stop blaming one another on this issue and asserting your opinion as superior. It's not even if the vote falls the way that you'd like. There are differing opinions and that's okay. We ought to celebrate a democracy that provides for this. I don't wanna see us dividing when we ought to be uniting. And please voluntarily wear your mask. Thanks Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would also like to thank the people that reached out to me. I had uh, uh, well over 400 emails text messages, phone calls, uh, instant messenger. I mean, uh, there's only too many, uh, there's almost too many different venues to be reaching out to someone to try and keep track of them all and all the, the different information that was given out to us. Uh, but I did try to keep track of it and I had uh, constituents. I had 52 that wanted me to vote yes on this. I had seven that wanted me to vote no. Uh, individuals that lived in the city, I had 102 that wanted a yes vote and 39 that wanted a no. Uh, I had individuals from outside the city, uh, many of our surrounding communities who either work or own property here or have businesses here. And uh, out of those, I had 40 that uh, live outside the city uh, that wanted me to vote yes and another 25 that wanted me to vote no. I had people from as far away as Minneapolis and California reach out to me. I had another 53 people, I couldn't determine where they lived, uh, that wanted me to vote yes and 67 that wanted me to vote no. Um, I've got family in town, uh, nurses that work in hospitals here um, and in other uh, places. Um, it, it's, it's a grave concern. And as the 
elected representatives were supposed to try to represent everybody uh, in our district. And it's, as Alder Johnson uh, very eloquently said, uh, it's not easy. It's, it's so I heard a, a recent uh, news article that said there's been over 6,000 papers, scientific papers written on COVID and all its effects and remedies and everything else. And very few of those have actually been peer reviewed yet because there just hasn't been time. Uh, we're Americans and we want everything yesterday. And it makes it even more difficult for us. Uh, we have a, a country that moves very rapidly, economic, very rapid. And the rise and fall of that is, is uh, frightening to everybody. And so coming to a conclusion here wasn't easy. I tried to view as many of the papers and videos that I was sent, but um, like it's been said here before, some go to the extremes on both sides. And uh, I think uh, I'm gonna chime right in with Alder Johnson. We need to be better. We need to be kinder. We need to treat each other with respect and respect each other's opinions, no matter how this turns out in the end. And whether we agree with it or we don't agree with it, whatever we decide to do, we have to support as a community. It's only in that way that we're gonna get through this and we're gonna get better and we're gonna get along with each other. Thank you. It's Alder. Alder Brunette. Yes, thank, thank you, Mayor. I, I want to acknowledge everyone who reached out to me. I, like the other Alder persons, received hundreds of comments and I returned as many as I could. And this is a tough situation. COVID is a, a horrible illness and we have to remember that everyone has a very unique experience with this disease, this virus. There are uh, parents who right now are not sure if they're going to be able to send their kids to, ch to school in just a month or two. And if that parent household has two working parents, they're terrified or very concerned about the prospect of losing in order to educate their children at home. We have family member, we have people in this community who have lost a family member or have a small child that has been diagnosed with COVID. A Facebook friend just posted something about a five-year-old who now has COVID. I have uh, friends who have infants who have you know, gotten it. So our hearts and prayers go out to everyone affected. There are also businesses, many of our friends and family and community members that and when this thing started, they, 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 they're losing their businesses. They're losing their income. Their worth as a human being feels like it's being diminished. And it's heartbreaking because everyone is touched by this. And what I fear as a society is that our divisions are growing. Growing over time, divided by partisanship and divided by hateful politics. And quite honestly, I, I very seldom raise my voice and get animated. Many of you know that. One thing that I get worked up about is when rights are taken away from the people. It's sort of a, a reaction to what we're facing. Okay? That is a very real thing. Just like I'm concerned about COVID, I'm concerned about the economic catastrophe we're facing, which has other consequences. I'm concerned about government overreach so my frustration with this process was that the way that it was rolled out was not good government. That's my personal opinion. I don't think it was good government. It's not the way we should do it. So think about early days of COVID when the governors, our governor and every governor across the state, and this is not meant to be a political statement. I'm not a partisan person. But Governor Evers and all, every other governor put all kinds of dictates on their residents. The governor of Michigan especially and people didn't think that it made sense, many of these ideas. You know, not being able to buy gardening supplies or go fishing, these things don't make sense to people. So they go to their government, the representative body, and they say, please help us, don't take our rights, listen to common sense. So what you saw, what every member of this community saw today was that we were working through these issues as a committee, as a full city council, which actually should have been at a committee level. So all the frustrations we had at our governors and different representatives of our republic and our state governments, the things that didn't make sense. This ordinance does not make sense in some areas and it's perfectly fine to push back. 
And although I'm not a very animated person and I don't get worked up, I do get worked up when rights get taken from people. And I get worked up when government rushes things through without considering the people. This is the organization chart for the city of Green Bay. The very top, the voters, period. The top of this organization is the voters. We have to be very careful city council that we don't do anything. I'm, I'm raising my voice again, I apologize. But we have to do a better job and we have to understand as a city council because our city government, not placing blame on anyone, but we botched the election. So many of us that are sitting in these seats at Zoom, our constituents, our citizens, didn't get the opportunity to easily vote for us. We failed them. So therefore, this very city government is pushing through something with very little public comment and input, not comment, but little public notice. This is a very tenuous relationship this council has right now because there are members watching this in the public that did not get an opportunity to easily vote for any of us. So we have to listen to it. And I also believe in the consent of the governed. I wanna tell you that in the beginning when this hit the committee level, and, and I say this with all sensitivity, this COVID is a serious thing, I, I mean that. I, I, I take precautions, I protect my children, I protect Alder, people Alder, in my community. Alder, we, do a, five, we do have the five minute limit, so just. So you know, one, last up. one last comment. This idea of the consent of the governed, okay? I believe in the consent of the government. When this went to committee, it was 25 to two comments from the community and my constituents who voted against mandates of a mask. Then it, after that, then I got a lot of form letters and emails and all that matters. Every public comment matters. But today, since this was dropped on us yesterday, the people who I represent, two to one at least, are against mask mandates. Or in this meeting alone, 11 were for, 39 were against. That's 78%. So the consent of the govern, we, we have to listen. The, 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 the community we represent doesn't feel that they were consulted in this decision. One day is not enough. On that alone, I'm gonna vote against this. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm not taking COVID seriously, but there's a way and there's a precedent that we cannot set in the city of Green Bay. Thanks, Thank Alder. you. Alder Vanderlees. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I feel that our community has done a, a fine job as far as complying with social distancing, wearing their masks. Uh, we've got a lot of good information from the medical community. Some of it is inconclusive. Some people, you know, support masks. Others are starstly against it both on the medical side, you know, from the national level right on to the local level. Uh, I can't support this. I, I think it's being, you know, way too fast as far as, you know, how it's been presented to the public. Uh, most of the people that called me, I, I had, I would say, the, the vast number of them said, the business community particularly was not in favor of, of the ordinance. Uh, they just feel that it's overreach of our government uh, locally, a um, lot, lot of them thought that, you know, we should get on with issues that really are very important in other a aspects of, of city government. Uh, this is, you know, it's not really being welcomed by most of the people in the community. Uh, you heard all the people that called in tonight, people that called, called my home. Uh, they said they didn't support it. They thought the, the government's overreach in, uh, I can't support it. It's just, uh, I think it's gonna create a hardship on the, on the local businesses, which are already struggling already. Uh, this shouldn't be just a slam dunk, you know, a couple of days, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit and, and then, then we already voted and we got it into law. Uh, I feel that the community has done a good job and, and we don't need this ordinance. I'm, I'm not gonna support it. And, and that's, that's the word I heard from most of my, and some, some support it, but the vast majority did not support this ordinance, and I'm not going to support it. And, and I feel that uh, I understand that you know, COVID is serious, and uh, but I, I think that you know this mask ordinance is not needed. So that's how I feel. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Lefebvre. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes. 
I will support this ordinance because for me it all is about <clears throat> our health and well-being and that's exactly what our duty is the health and the well-being of our citizens just about if you look at our ordinances all our ordinances basically are for the health and the well-being of our citizens that's why we put these ordinances in place uh, I want to mention something I have asthma I wear my mask wherever I go I feel it's my duty I have a I have a responsibility to protect other people. It's not just myself I'm protecting, I'm protecting others because I have no idea if I meet someone else, I have no idea what their condition is, what they're dealing with. I have no idea. So I need to be proactive to protect them. That's my main duty, to protect others. Also, uh, someone had mentioned about uh, the one where, oh, your blood pressure goes way up. Well, actually, I've been wearing the mask wherever I go, doctor's office. Usually when I go to doctor's office, something, you know, you get kind of nervous, and usually your blood pressure goes up a little bit. Well, guess what? My blood pressure's been perfect. I'm wearing the mask, I've had it on for half an hour, and I'm fine. So these people that talk about the mask is going to, dangerous and it's going to give you all these conditions it hasn't affected me that's my personal opinion on that okay what I've experienced uh. and then I want to mention um, our nephew called and he talked to us uh, yesterday and he mentioned that his sister has a good friend who lives in Canada Canada is nowhere where we are you know why they put the four things in place. They shut some places down where there's too much social gathering, where they couldn't wear a mask. They put the mask mandates in place. They social distanced. And people were really good about washing their hands, disinfecting. They followed the rules. They didn't have a big ruba about this. People did it. They did it because they wanted their country to get over this and to get better. And they are better. They're better, but they're much better. Their businesses are opening because they really, their curve is down. And if you look, if you, if you really watch the news, have you looked at our curve? We're way up. You look down. I think even Brazil is down now. All these places are down. Why? A lot of them did. They put the social distancing in. They put all the things that you're supposed to be doing in place. The people followed it. We're not. So I'm going to vote for this. But then also, the city, I want to mention, the city is doing everything they can for these businesses. They really are hurting. I are hurting. It's the COVID that's causing the hurt for all these businesses. But we are also, now there's a new, there's another proposal that we're going to vote on tonight, opening up the parking lot down between Walnut and Adams Street, where, people, where they can put up, uh, they're going to put up tables and put planters and some, it's going to be socially distancing, but the restaurants downtown can now have their customers getting their food and sitting there. Because we know that it's, it's more dangerous to be indoors without a mask. So this is for people who do not feel comfortable. There's a lot of, a lot of restaurants are having trouble because people are not feeling comfortable going in. I will not go in a restaurant and eat inside. I will not. because the air circulation circulates this. Are you kidding me? Okay, and then one final thing I want to mention too, I did read all those, uh, all those emails I received, and unfortunately some did not de identify if they're from my district or not. So I apologize for that. We have that, I, the time, the time limit, just be aware. 
So okay, I just want to quick say, yes, I want to thank everybody, and I did not get to respond to a lot of them. I'm sorry, there was just too many. There were like 500 or so. And mine were kind of uh, the yes for this was a little bit more than the no of the ones I received. And a lot of them did identify not in my district. That's one thing I want to say. And last thing, I just want to say, please, everybody, be civil. If you don't want to wear one, I guess, don't don't attack people for not wearing it. Just let that up to the business to say, please, would you, you know, would you please do it? Thank, but, thanks, Alder. You know, let's all be civil, civil to each other. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Alder Stoyer, I'd like Alder to Alder Gerlach. Alder Stoyer. Just very briefly, I just want to say that um, virtually everyone who spoke in the meeting this evening had already contacted me, either by email or phone. And um, so I had 68% uh, in favor of the mandate and 32 people not in favor of the mandate. And um, this is certainly not um, a perfect ordinance. This is certainly not a perfect plan. But we have no choice. If we're going to cut the legs out from under this virus and save our community, this is the best option we have right now. Um, I would say that uh, we should look to Taiwan, who has 24 million people, and they've had seven die of COVID-19. And their two messages they have to the rest of us are, number one, make sure healthcare is accessible and affordable to everyone. And number two, wear masks. So we're doing the right thing. We're not doing it perfectly. Um, it takes everybody to make it work. I do not believe it's going to, that everyone is going to follow suit and, and uh, do their part, but we're gonna do the best we can. So of course I will support it. It's the best we can offer and we have to move quickly. Thank you, Alder. Alder Stoyer. Yeah, thank, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Uh, I mirror what many of the other alders have said <clears throat> as far as the number of folks that have called and on this issue and you know I shared the protection and policy committee and we did have a split vote last week uh, we had many many people speak on that matter and um, I think one of the reasons I voted the way I did <clears throat> was the fact that I feel that Brown County needs to be a leader here in the in the sense of what we're looking at uh, there are 24 communities in Brown County. We are one of the communities. And um, they are meeting their Human Services Committee, and they're going to be discussing this issue. I really wish we could have waited till that happened before we would take a vote. If I do not vote for this ordinance, it's not because I don't feel that there should be an ordinance somewhere down the line, but I just feel that the timing was such that you know, we're, our hand was forced. We don't have a whole lot of time, like all the worries mentioned. We don't have a whole lot of time to look at this. And we were doing committee work at council, which really is tiring. It's taken a long, long time. But the citizens are looking at us. They are watching us. And they are our boss. So I, I concur with that. Uh, I think the fact that... Um, you know, I, I thought about things like reiterate, reiterating by what authority the city has to enact this ordinance. And I know that uh, Attorney Chavez said for the health and safety. I understand that a bit, but I still have some questions about that. I, I, I was worrying about potential lawsuits that might crop up uh, for various reasons. Uh, one fear that I had for Green Bay having a mask ordinance, it may drive customers uh, that shop in Green Bay to purchase outside of the city of Green Bay, which can also affect our businesses. The fact that we have 24 communities, I think we need to make it consistent. That's why I'm looking to the county. Uh, the difficulty for police to enforce this, um, it, it would be difficult. So I, I go for what Alder Johnson brought forward, at least to make it a little more soft on that end. Uh, it would be difficult for businesses trying to enforce mask ordinances so um, again I think the, the citizens that called they were very much engaged and I think part of part of being an alder you know we're, we've been here for uh, almost six hours now and 
I'm re-energized because the citizens did speak. And initially at, at, my, at our committee, uh, it was heavily against uh, the ordinance. And then there was a call back from the folks that wanted the ordinance. And there were many, many emails. And some of them were form letters, which are fine. But I would rather see the individual letters that are personally written and they give the reasons why I had more deference toward those. So I think that, um, you know, I think uh, all, all in all, it was probably a pretty split vote for me over four, having 400 folks. It was pretty, pretty evenly matched, very heavy against the ordinance initially, very heavy for it over the last number of days. And tonight, like all the Burnett said, it was like 39 to 11. So then again, if we heard it tomorrow, we might have the, four, the people that want to vote for it testify so it there are a lot of things here but i i would i would really defer to see the county more involved in this they have a health department we do not uh i would they have a chapter 37.12 that deals with this and they have different a different penalty system looking at this uh the wisconsin county's association attorney Andy Phillips is looking at this. He's going to deter have a determination within seven to ten days. Uh, Supervisor Brodsky did speak with Brown County Corporate Council, Corporation Council, Dave Hemery, and they're getting gathering data on this as well. So I would suggest you tuning in either at five or five thirty. I'm not sure when the meeting is on Thursday to uh, weigh in on that. And I, I'm going to I'm going to lean that way initially. And uh, if we have to adjust ourselves later, I'll do it at that time. Thank you. So that's all I have in the queue here. I'll speak. <laughs> all the way or or whoever, whoever you want to pick. Yeah, thanks. Well, uh, I think the die is cast on this one. Uh, at least we have a whole agenda to go through yet. We have that to look forward to, right? So get your caffeine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good Lord, what a, such a divisive issue, you know, uh, didn't, need to, didn't need to be this way, really. Um, we could have stressed education instead of mandate. Educate, not mandate. There was a registered nurse, I think, who emailed everybody on that, and it just stuck with me. <laughs> Educate, not mandate, and that came from an RN. So I'm, I think there's a lot of feeling that people are hoping this isn't all for political show. You know, who cares the most? I think it's called virtue signaling. I'm sure the heck hope that this is not what that's about. Um, as I've stated earlier, and, and everybody else said, we've got so many emails and I, calls. I haven't had that many since we discussed, I think, roundabouts on military and uh, Mayor Schmidt's garbage to energy scheme. I think you all remember those. Mark, like, Mark Stoyer likes the energy one. Um, I was on vacation last week, came back, and like a thunderstorm and I, I have luckily over 20 years managed to get 600 700 email addresses of people in my district so I sent out a question real quick on people's opinions and I say I'm disappointed I only got about 130 responses so far it's only been a day or two but for me it was 70 to 60 opposed pretty close you know uh, opposed but not by much you know I'm, uh, it would have been nice to hear from more people certainly they have more time um, as a lot of people have said, the people who spoke from the public and other alders, the science, you know, <laughs> seemingly changing daily. I mean, we've had studies that have been there for 20 years and then all of a sudden, just this year, they're like, oh, you know what we said for 20 years? Yeah, totally disregard it. So I've been sent and all of you have so much incredible information. Um, I've learned a lot actually in the last couple of days. So I'm very appreciative of those who sent it. Um, being anti-mandate, does not mean you're anti-mask, and I'm not against masks. I am for individuals and businesses making their own choice. So on this, I'm gonna choose liberty. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. As I said, uh, no more speakers left in the queue here. So with that. Alder Person Dax has her hand up, Corpus Dax. Thank you, Alder, Alder Corpus Dax. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, 
you know, I want to thank everyone who also contacted me via email, text, um, Facebook Messenger, uh, calls regarding the face uh, mask mandate. Um, you know, my apologies that I wasn't able to get to respond to all of those, but please know that I read your emails, um, listened to your calls, read your texts. You know, strong sentiments were expressed on both sides. I've had citizens, healthcare personnel, um, business owners, first responders all express their opinions for and against. Um, for every argument against, there's an argument for and vice versa. Um, what it comes down to for me is that I don't want to see our city, our county, our state head in the direction of other states that we've seen um, who have either reopened too soon and are now having an uptick. Um, you know, I was out in New York a couple weeks ago where they mandated face masks a couple months ago. And what I saw there was, it, it, what I experienced there was that it didn't seem as big of an issue for um, people to be wearing the face mask. I mean, it was, it almost seemed like a non-issue. It was what, what was expected by everyone. They were hit hard early on and they took the measures that they needed to in order to turn that around. And they have turned that around. Some of those states that were hit really hard have been able to turn that around because of the um, actions the governors took. Um, I really don't wanna see Wisconsin turn into Florida, what's happening down in Florida. We are seeing an uptick in COVID cases here um, in Brown County. I absolutely think that this should be coming from the state if not the county, but neither of them have taken any action so far. And it, I honestly don't know, would county be taking this up if Green Bay hadn't taken it up or would they have just kind of left it and just, you know, we have citizens who are looking to us as, um, as elders to take action who are begging us to take action, not just citizens, but also business owners who, who have reached out and said, you guys need to do something at a local level because county's not doing anything, state's not doing anything. I do not take this vote lightly whatsoever, um, but I am gonna support the mandate. I am gonna support the mask mandate. Thank you. Any final comments from Alders? Seeing none, we will go to the board. This is on the item as amended with uh, on multiple occasions. And just a, a note on process, we, it's sort of like a double vote. <clears throat> We've got to take this up uh, under committee of the whole and then we got to do it again on resolutions. So whatever your vote is here should be the identical vote under resolutions. Alder Stoyer. Am I, am I on? Am I unmuted? Yes. Uh, I vote no. Thanks, Alder. Does succeed seven to five. Now we're on to item U2, consideration with possible action on the resolution extending the state of emergency, for the city of Green Bay COVID-19 response. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Any discussion? Yep. Alder Weary, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Allow me a moment here to, to adjust. We're still on committee, the whole number two, right? Yes. All right. I think we can can stop now with the state of emergency. I think we can handle things well enough at committee level and if needed emergency city council meetings to avoid uh, you know getting these kind of last minute things like this. I think the council needs to be more involved. Uh, 
time to end the emergency. Otherwise, when are we going to end it? I think this council seems pretty content with letting you have it. All the way, why don't we just do it till the end of our term? That'll make a lot easier on us. You can be emergency mayor till uh, end of our term. So I, I'm against it. At some point, this has to end, and we have to get more involved. I'm against it. Thanks, Alder. Additional comments? I have a comment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm against it. I, we can meet quickly. Even this ordinance, if I'm correct, when, when does it take effect? Is it, what 27th. date? What's that? 27th. 27th. So this is a perfect example where today we met, um, this was put on using the mayor's emergency powers given to him by the, or, uh, by the proclamation or whatever it's referred to. There's nothing that we need to, uh, have acted upon that we can't meet quickly as a council. So it, there's no need for it. Last time we voted nine to three, and it's time for the council to reassert um, their authority on the public policy, policy making body and duties of our city government. Thank you. Elder. Other comments? I have one. Elder Dorf, go ahead. Part of the ordinance we just passed said, says, this ordinance is hereby repealed immediately upon termination of the City of Green Bay's declaration of emergency. I see these comments as a ploy to just simply overturn an ordinance that was voted on by council. So I'm definitely in favor of order in place. Thank you. Alder Vanderleest. I think that we can remove the emergency declaration. I, I think the, the city's doing a good job right now we don't need it I, I think that the city council can handle whatever comes forward and uh, i think that way we get more communication amongst the altars uh, without without uh we could call a meeting quickly so i i believe that uh, the emergency declaration should be ended thank you thanks alder alder lefebvre uh yes i want to uh i was going to say what uh, alder dorf mentioned this is a roundabout way to kill the uh, mask m m amendment uh, so no and I, if we felt strongly that we do need a mask ordinance then I think we are in a state of emergency we need to keep it in place um, but I got a question I did not hear what the vote was on the um, mask ordinance it was I seven I didn't hear yes seven to five seven to five okay thank you you got any additional comments your honor I'll just count. yeah uh, I love how those who are saying the council can do its job and committee did what they could to subvert the committee I mean look if, if we had followed committee process and and the committee had done its job and not thwarted what the uh, ultimately the council supports which was for staff to come up with an ordinance the mayor wouldn't have had to use this emergency powers I hardly see how the mayor has been abusive or, or, or uh, onerous with his uh, emergency powers and to say that we've given up our authority that's nuts what that's disingenuous we have not given up an ounce of authority everything he does has to come before us so that I don't know what, that's just not right. That's, that's not right. That's not true. And uh, so I fully support, as long as we're in this emergency, that the mayor has uh, authority to take action and then we will take action upon his action when we meet. So uh, I, I don't understand this at all and I don't support it. I, I mean, I support the, the, the continuing with the emergency. Thank you. Alder, Alder Galvin. Your Honor, I support extending the emergency. Um, I would hope the reason there are others that are against extending it are not doing this just to defeat this, uh, this ordinance we just passed. Um, although I would like to have some kind of a process in place so we can start discussing what ending the emergency order looks like. You know, what the parameters or some of the metrics might be um, so that so that we can start seeing what 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 exactly means you know I mean it's not like we're looking for an armistice with uh, COVID 
um, you know, which would be great, easy. Um, but I, I, I think we have to have some idea in mind as we move forward so we can push towards that that objective and uh, get things back to normal with our city government. Thank you. Yeah, just on that point real quickly, Alder, I think that's that was really well made. Uh, there's been you know a bit of discussion internally about gating criteria um, and in a, dis a conversation that I had with uh, Mayor Boyd down in De Pere, um, I think there's, there's a bit that we could learn from them given the fact that they have a public health department. So, uh, so certainly I can commit to you that uh, that we're going to work on developing that gating criteria with some assistance, you know, maybe from Brown County Public Health, uh, but also from the experience down in De Pere. Thank you. Uh, and I guess it really would be nice to see Brown County Health establish some kind of a presence in the county and, and be giving us out some more information at these meetings uh, so that we could have some something to kind of help formulate what's happening in, on a county level. Um, other than having us uh, plow the field for everybody to get things going here. So, thank you. Mayor, could I speak? First Alder Vanderlees, then Alder Storer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what is the big emergency? Let me ask you that. What is the emergency? Why don't we get things moving along? Most businesses opened up you know, most of the businesses are moving along. I think the city hall should be opened up. Uh, I think it's time that we, you know, take take a hold of things and, and move forward. You know, we're in mass, we're social distancing. I, I think we should be back on track, you know, uh, serving our citizens, doing our jobs. And, and most of the businesses I'm affiliated with, they didn't skip too many beats. And I, I feel that uh, it would be wise for the city to get back into the to the realm of dealing with the public on a, on a personal basis. And that means in person type basis. And uh, that's my thoughts. I, I think we should move forward on that, not wait too long. I think we waited long enough. It's time to go forward. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I agree with the fact that, you know, we, we have these, um, almost on a monthly basis. And I think we're getting to a point where we'd like this end. But uh, with that being said, I really am looking to the county to give us that information like Alder Galvin brought forward. You know, I think if we had more information to look at, to understand, to study, to focus on with this being said, then I think we could make a, a, a better determination to just say, look, let's move on. So I, I'm leaning that way for now, and I will probably attend that meeting on Thursday for the county. I really want to gather some data. There's a lot out there all the way around, and we could read till we're blue in the face, and I think a lot of us have. So I, at this time, I will support this, but I'm looking to hopefully move this out of the way sooner than later. So thank you. Hello there. Mayor. Mayor, yeah, second time on the, the subject. I, you know, tens times council seems to be divided seven by vote. It is what it is, but we shouldn't be prescribing motives on our fellow council members to suggest that this committee, this city council would somehow create some maneuver to stop something is absurd. Each issue is, is voted on at its face. I, I take great offense to that. You can't prescribe motives against your fellow alders to think that there's some grand plan to, to, to object to this. I'm against it because I see no need for the city of Green Bay to extend emergency order powers to the mayor of Green Bay. Again, organizational chart, voters are at the top, mayor and council are at the level. We are the policy making body of this city government. We have a role and a five, seven, five vote means that, that this council doesn't act in complete agreement with the mayor. So Alder Scandal, with all due respect, uh, I'll direct this to the mayor, but to Alder Scandal, you are incorrect. The mayor- uh, you, can't, you, can't, you can't just say you're directing your comments to the chair okay. and then Alder Scandal. How do you know how to do this, but Basically, it, it is incorrect. The, the mayor did use his emergency powers to have legal staff file a lawsuit against the state of Wisconsin 
to stop or delay the election. I think it was to delay the election. It was thrown out or, or dismissed in federal court. That was a very big decision um, that was made without the council weighing in. So to say that it wasn't used or hasn't been used, it's been used twice in a very big way. There's no reason why we need to be under a state of emergency four months into this. I'm not saying it because I was on the short end of a vote. That's ridiculous. But as council president, we are the policy making body. Very recent situation where uh, mayor, you know, move forward using this power and put forward a, a very controversial issue and didn't have the courtesy to inform this city council prior to his press conference. Mm -hmm. It's not appropriate. There's no need for it. And I'm very much again it against it. Don't prescribe motives to your fellow council members. I don't believe that that's appropriate. Thank you. Any further comments? Yeah, just, just one, Your Honor. Alder Scannell. <clears throat> the only comment I'd like to clarify is that I was not projecting any motive. I was stating what happened. What happened was at committee, a minority of the council thwarted but ultimately, the bill of the majority, that instead of following our normal procedures of uh, an alder bringing forth a, a request and following through on that request so that the whole council can weigh in, it was thwarted by a minority. And given that this was an emergency situation, an emergency item, I think it's appropriate that the mayor stepped up to address it. That I'm just stating what happened. I'm not assigning any motives or anything at all. That's what happened. So, uh, so I see that it was appropriate. That's all. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Alder. One Let's more move to the board. <laughs> One more, Mr. Mayor. Alder Gerlach. I have, I have a second time. Thank you. Uh, Alder Alder Gerlach first. Okay. Yep. I, I would like to ask my uh, my colleagues here to just consider that we don't know yet what our status is. This emergency order was um, was originally because of the pandemic. We cannot say we're out of the woods. The numbers in Wisconsin continue to rise, and Brown County is not looking so good. We don't know what's ahead. I'd like to ask you to just extend this for one more month. Uh, that will give us the opportunity to implement the mask program that we just adopted. And that could be the thing that turns the corner for us. It's all coming together to do something that is probably going to really help. And I believe that mask program is what's going to keep our economy open. It's good for our economy because it'll give people an opportunity to go into businesses. So I would ask you to just think about extending this one more month so we can try what we just put into place. And then a month from now, we might be in a much better place. Thank you. Alder, Alder Weary for a second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will second that the uh, the election fiasco clearly showed what emergency power did to the citizens of Green Bay. Clearly, council had no doings in that. None. That was all emergency power. And uh, I, I will say, uh, I, I really take umbrage at the the comments that this was thwarted at committee. How dare committee members vote their conscience and thwart something? So I know that was a separate thing, but oh, how dare they thwart you, Randy? They thwarted you. Well, this Alder, emergency power won't Alder, end till 2021. Alder the Weary. The are in agreement. Alder Weary. Okay, I won't address Alder Scandal. You're right, sorry. But I will say this won't end till 2021 because I do think the toadies are in alignment. Any further comments before we go to the board? All right, we will go to the vote. Mayor, Aldo Stoyer votes yes. Did 
did you get my vote? Yes, yes, we did. Thank you. The vote is eight to four. Did it display and I not missed? Did it? Did, can you tell me who the four were, please? Uh, Brian Johnson, Chris Weary, Jesse Brunette, John Vanderleest. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now we're on to resolutions. As I said, we, we've got a, a sort of double vote on both of those topics. But before we get to that, there are uh, resolutions one through five that are essentially non-controversial in, in my estimation. If, if that is the feeling of council, we could take them up with one roll call vote. So move. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Uh, Second. Mayor, point of order. Uh, yes. Alder Johnson. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, are we not, in terms of the agenda order, are we not back on uh, item J ordinances? We are not. No. We are no, not. not. We're on resolutions. Right. We moved both. We moved, I moved both. Oh, we moved both. Okay, thank yep. you. Yep. You bet. Uh, so we did have a motion to suspend. Was that made by Alder Weary? Me. Yes. Well, and I'll, I'll second it. Okay, made by Alder Scan, I'll second by Alder Weary to suspend the rules, take up items one through five with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, the rules are suspended. Move to approve. Second. 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 Motion made to approve by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to adopt resolutions one through five, and we will use the board. Mayor, I vote yes. Alder Stoyer. Alder. <clears throat> and those are unanimously adopted. Now we're on to V6, which is a resolution extending the state of emergency for the city of Green Bay. I believe we've debated that sufficiently. Move so to approve. Second. Motion made to approve, offered by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Lefebvre, and we will use the board. Mayor Alder Stoyer votes yes. Uh, Alder Brunette, did you intend to vote aye? Alder Brunette. Alder Brunette. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I pushed the wrong, I, I'm a no. That was the, the state of war, emergency declaration, right? Yeah, yes. I pushed the wrong button. I am a no. I apologize. Okay. Yep. All right. Looking so that is me. successful eight to four. <laughs> no problem. On to V7, a resolution providing for face coverings within the city of Green Bay. Again, a, a double vote on the committee of the whole item. Uh, so if the council agrees, we could just go to that vote. And just as a clarification, as amended. Correct. Yes. Good clarification, Attorney Chavez. Uh, as is amended with um, with the multiple amendments that were successful. I'll accept as amended is the motion. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf, to adopt as amended, and we will use the board. Alder Stoyer? Yes, uh, I vote no. Thanks, Alder. <laughs> uh, 
That is successful, seven to five. On to adjournment? No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Ordinance is second reading for adoption. Thank you, Commander. Suspension of the rules. Take up items one through three with a roll call vote. Move to suspend. Second. Motion has been made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to suspend the rules. Take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You guys have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to adopt items J1 through J3. Please use the board. Mayor Alder Stoyer votes yes. Alder. are adopted unanimously 12-0. On to the report of the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, approved. Motion made by Alder Johnson. Second. Seconded by Alder Scandal to approve report K, which is the report of the Redevelopment Authority from the meeting on July 14th, 2020. Any items under this report to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Improvement in services. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve report L, which is the report of the Improvement and Services Committee from the meeting of April 15, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor of approving that report, please signify. Aye. 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 You guys have it. The report has been approved. Protection and policy. Motion to approve. Back in. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve report M, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meeting on July 13, 2020, recessed and reconvened on July 16, 2020. And items here to be handled separately. Number 12. Item 13. 12, 13. Any others? Uh, Mayor, Mayor, I'm just looking for a point of information on item 13. Okay. Um, do, because it was referred with no recommendation, do we actually have to take action on this to dispense of the item, or is it okay to just adopt this part of the report? Uh, Attorney Chavez? Um, yeah, I would change it to receive and place on file because the no recommendation just acts as an as an okay, open the, item. The, then that's the only reason I'm pulling it, Mayor, so that we can do that properly. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so we have items 12 and 13. Any others? Items 12 and 13 will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please sing it by saying aye. 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 Uh, you guys have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items 12 and 13. Your wishes regarding item Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve. Item was pulled by Alder Scannell, was it? Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on this one, it's regarding our ethics ordinance and policy that we you know, Alder Scandal did, did put a lot of time into it and then the council put a lot of time into it. And uh, we realize it's certainly not perfect. And we actually reached outside and paid a group uh, to analyze it and give us the recommendations. And that was back in, I don't know, November, December of 2018. So pretty soon here, we'll be coming up on, on two years since we've gotten those recommendations and changes. And I know every couple of months, I know Vanessa and Trudy Chavez will probably get sick of me asking her, but I keep asking, when is this going to be coming back to council? 
And it's always, well, we've got other priorities, and oh, we're not staffed enough, this, that, and the other thing. And some of those might be leg legitimate, but at some point they're just excuses. And I think we're at the point that they're excuses. So when can we see this on a protection and policy committee to take action? Just before we go to Attorney Chavez, you know, I, I would not characterize the reasons uh, for why the law department hasn't been able to address this topic as excuses. Uh, you know, I've I certainly do. put a lot to. on their That's plate. Fine. I think a lot, a lot of debating? elders have. No, I'm just, I'm just explaining here. You're debating. A number of other alders have put a lot on the law department's plate as well. Um, so just wanted to make that clear, but and we'll go to Attorney Chavez. So as I've tried to explain before, what we do is we base our um, priorities on the li liability that could be, the city could be exposed to. That is the, the first thing that we look at when we are deciding what gets placed first. So it's not that we haven't wanted to work on the ethics ordinance, just the ethics ordinance has not exposed us to as much um, potential for liability. These are the things that we have had to get in, in place, such as our records retention schedule. So. I, I can't give you a definite date. Like there, there's, there's just no way I can do that and, and realistically expect to, to not, I'd be over promising under delivering if I did that. Um, and especially because as I, as I try to point out, I have one attorney who's designated for legislative matters and handles the bulk of the drafting. And so anything happens, whether due to illness or coverage because those people are out, I, I lose, in, or if we have um, just a ton of work coming through, I lose the one attorney who's dedicated to drafting legislation um, to the other priorities that happen in the city. So if we have deadlines that come up in um, either lawsuits, pending lawsuits against the city, or lawsuits that are time sensitive, um, the, those they just take priority. There is no way for us not to do that um, because when we get a court deadline, those are hard deadlines. Well, and so you? that you're aware, this is not the longest standing request we have. Alder Gavin has requested chapter 33 be revised and that one has been pending for probably three and a half years. Oh, shame on him for then, bringing it up more. <laughs> and then I have identified the sign ordinance as needing revision, and that one I identified the moment I started with the city, which has been over four years. And I think you need more help, or we need to prioritize better. I've, I've never, I didn't know about Alder Galvin, but in my 18 years, it sounds sound like Guy, <laughs> in my 18 years in council, I've never seen such a delay. This is an important one. It affects, you know, a lot of people. And the way it's crafted, I think we all agree, is pretty faulty. It needs changing and correcting. So I'm gonna amend this to say that uh, the corrected ordinance be presented to the Protection and Policy Committee at their second meeting in September. I'll second that. Uh, I'm sorry, Alder, I missed the, you say you, you're, what's the motion again? Uh, that the, uh, corrected or amended policy and ordinance be presented to protection and policy on the second meeting in September for uh, protection and policy. I don't know if they have two meetings or not, but. Okay. And actually so the would changes would go to the ethics board. Which would then report to council, right? Mm-hmm. All right, if that's what you wanna do, that's fine. You're asking this to be before the ethics committee in, in September. Uh, in September, yeah. Okay. Whatever the motion was made by Alder Weary to I have this item, Mayor. ordinance addressed by the ethics committee in September. It's been seconded by Alder Brunette. Uh, additional discussion. Alder Scandal, did you have your hand up? It's Alder Dorf. I have my hand up. Okay, Alderdorf, go ahead. I respect what our city attorney has explained to us. I don't think we need, we can possibly put that kind of a timeline on something this important. 
Um, I think that the city attorneys are doing the best job that they can. And so therefore I will not be voting in favor of this. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Additional comments? Your Honor. Your Honor. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Um, yes, I, I've had something out there for going on three and a half years. I'm, I'm very frustrated. Uh, Vanessa has uh, heard me vent those frustrations on numerous occasions, um, but I also understand priorities. And if we have budgeted the st the monies we've budgeted for this staff, and that's on us if we expect them to do more with less. That's not on them. I believe they are doing the best job they can do as fast as they can do it. But when it comes down to triage, like in an ER, the ordinances, the statutes and things that we have that are gonna hurt us the most are the ones that have to be taken care of first. The ones that put our community, our taxpayers at the greatest risk, risk for liability are the ones that certainly need to be taken first. And I understand that and I accept that. Uh, and I would encourage anyone that's frustrated with the legal staff to actually go in there and, and sit down and look at exactly what they've been doing and what they've been trying to do it. And maybe when it comes to budget time, we start thinking about maybe trying to budget some money to get them for staff so that maybe these things can get done quicker. Thank you. Elder, additional thoughts? Uh, Bernadette, if I could, Mayor. Yeah, Elder Burnett, go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, the Code of Ethics, I've read it several times. I was not on the council when it passed. There have been several elders who have uh, you know, had an, uh, whatever, something initiated against them for violating the Code of Conduct. That's neither here nor there, but it, it bears uh, commenting on that code of conduct I've read several times. It's got a lot of holes in it. So when we're saying, you know, certain things are moved up to less best, uh, you know, based on what our vulnerabilities are as a city or financial losses, things like that. Well, wait a minute. Equal rights ordinance was moved up pretty high on the list. So you know, what, who gave that, you know, priority over something else? Because as far as I'm concerned, equal rights ordinance, whatever your opinion is, we'll discuss that obviously. But I would say that that is not exposing the city to any any exposure. I don't know the right, right words of saying, I'm pretty tired obviously, but, and then the lawsuit against the state or against the, the state and federal court that was added to the list the, the mask mandate that was added there are a lot of things that are added so yeah I, I i think it's completely appropriate to have some target date out there in september i mean we can't wait forever that thing needs to be updated there are a lot of things whoever was on the council at that time you made your vote whatever it is but i'm telling you you all should read that and see what's in there and realize that there is a lot of holes that need to be uh, covered. So that's all I'll say. I, I'm definitely in favor of it. We need a target, we need to hold staff accountable, and we need to move these things forward. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. The motion is to have this ordinance at the meeting of the Ethics Committee in September. It's been seconded. Can, go to the vote. can I quick make a uh, statement? Yes, yes all those in favor. Uh, yes. Um, as everyone knows, I was involved in an ethics thing. And there are some, uh, <clears throat> I do have to get to um, the attorney yet, my recommendation on the ordinance, but because I felt it sh this was part of it, should have been in there, <clears throat> I still feel that I have trouble saying that this is more important than maybe something else that has, that that they're working on. If we had more staff, yes, then, then we should have something. But I don't think we have enough staff right now according to what um, the law department has, is telling us. So I'm going to vote against the amendment. I'm sorry. I hope that they can work on this faster. Whatever they can do, I appreciate. 
Thank you. Galder. Any further comments? All right, with that, we'll go to the vote. With uh, Alder, would you like a recorded vote? All right. Mayor, could you state this again one more time? I didn't quite hear it as far this as what the would, vote is. Uh, this would require a law department to present uh, revised ethics ordinance at the meeting of the ethics committee in September. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 It's being recorded, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry, that, I thought you asked me that. I, I did, I didn't hear the response. No, oh, yeah, you maybe. Thank you. You bet. Mayor, all the restorer votes yes. Thanks, Alder. Good coming out. Alder Gerlach. I have what I have, what I'm looking at is not a vote on the amendment. It's a vote on the original um, oh. proposal. That's what my. That's how it comes up. That's how it comes. Well, what up. am I? I don't understand. I thought I was voting on yes or no that the law department must provide this in September. You are. You are. Then I'm. But okay. I'm sorry. Then you have to pretend it says that. Okay. Thank you. That um, fails seven to five. I'm, I move to approve the original, which I think we already have that, that out there, but. Motion's made to approve. I forget who made the original. I don't even know. Yeah. It's either me or Randy. It's Randy first and Barb second. Okay. Sorry, Alder Scannell, Alder Dork. Thank you, Clerk Tusky. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay? Nay. The ayes have it. It's been adopted. On to 13, Alder Johnson. Uh, it's the motion to receive in place on file. Second. Second. Motion has been made by Alder Johnson to receive in place on file, seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. The ayes have it. It has been received in place on file. Report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to approve report N, which is a report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Any names for which you'd like to be recorded as abstaining? Any names under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it, the report has been approved. On to plan commission. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Made by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve report O, which is the report of the plan commission from the meeting on July 13, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Number three. Item three, any others? Item three will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those nay, the ayes have it, the report has been approved with the exception of item three. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Made to approve by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Alder Weary uh, pulled this item, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Director Vonk, you're awake. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there. Um, on this item, was there an update given to committee? And you know, a lot of the neighborhood is really just concerned that it's being land banked and there's really nothing being worked on. And I just, they really just want to know what, what's going on there. Cause that's a pretty prominent piece of property. Sure. Um, so we did provide an, an update. Um, the property owner um, has continued to work on a, a mixed use um, project there. 
Um, however, uh, nothing has been submitted uh, in terms of moving that project forward. Um, again, it's, it's the city's goal uh, in terms of, of moving um, some things forward, obviously, right? It's a high visibility corner, a gateway to our community um, from the West. Um, uh, I know the, the mayor has been involved in some conversations um, that happened over the winter, um, you know, prior to the onset of COVID. Um, so those did take a little bit of a, a back burner. I, I think right now with all the uncertainty in terms of the um, upcoming season, um, some decisions were kind of put on the back burner um, that there wasn't an urgency to get things moved forward as quickly. Um, you know, with that, in terms of uh, compliance from our department, uh, we, we, we can't force the property owner to build anything, um, but we will make sure because I know there has been complaints in the past, um, just to make sure that that site is upkept in terms of our housing and zoning standards. Um, so when it comes to, you know, er erosion, long grass, and saying those types of things, um, you know, we'll make sure to, to respond to them. Um, and again, hopefully work on, on something to bring uh, forth the development project um, sooner than later. All right, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Director Vock. And, and staff, you really have done a good job of, of making sure, you know, I, I will say that that's been excellent. And uh, just know the neighborhood really is looking forward to something there. And hopefully it can be something that's uh, Know, cohesive with the neighborhood. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Elder. Any other comments? Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it. Item has been approved. Report of the Finance Committee. Move okay. to approve. Motion made by Alder Dorf. Second. Second by Alder Scannell to approve report P, which is report of the Finance Committee. <laughs> July 14, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? 10 and 11. 11? 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Any others? <laughs> all right. Items 10 and 11 will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of the approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items 10 and 11. Wishes regarding item 10. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Randy uh, Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. Item was pulled by Alder Johnson. You have the floor. Yeah, the, the, uh, these two items um, were discussed at the committee level, and we just didn't have the documents, and, and the committee didn't feel comfortable approving it. We were since emailed those documents. I've reviewed them. I hope the rest of council has. And so uh, I'm in support now, now that we've seen the documentation. Any other comments? The item has been moved and seconded. Um, Alder Johnson, you're, you're making a motion to approve. Uh, Alder Scannell did and I seconded it. Okay, very good. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You guys have it, item 10. Uh, item 10. Approved under item 11. Motion Second. made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to approve. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. You guys have it, that item has been approved. Another part committee. Move to approve. Second. Made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Storer to approve report Q, which is a report of the park committee from the meeting on July 15, 2020. Items here to be handled separately. Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it. The report has been approved. Ad hoc committee on elections. Aye. Motion to open the floor. Second. Or should we do the. There's been someone waiting the whole time. <laughs> Or do you want me to move to approve this first? Yeah, we could, sure, make the motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to approve. Not sure if Mr. Hicks is still with us. <laughs> he <laughs> is. He oh, is very... there. <laughs> so yeah, motion open the floor. Yes, and a motion open the floor. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it. The floor is open. Mr. Hicks, thanks for hanging in. Yeah, uh, it's my pleasure. I'll keep my comments uh, much more brief uh, than our written. 
just before you um, get into it, if you could just um, yeah. state your name and address. Yep. Uh, Casey Hicks, 1332 Angels Path, apartment 28, De Pere, Wisconsin, 54115. Um, yeah, and thank you, Alders, for uh, letting me speak, especially very late at night. My name's Casey. I'm Northeast organizer for Wisconsin Conservation Voters. Uh, we're an environmental nonprofit, uh, and to have a healthy environment uh, requires having a healthy democracy. And so I'm not going to go over uh, my entire statement. As I mentioned, I emailed it all to you earlier today, so you can read it in its entirety uh, if you'd like. But uh, by now, we're all very well aware of the dangers associated with not being properly prepared uh, to hold an election in the midst of a pandemic. And COVID-19 has presented uh, a lot of unforeseen challenges that are threatening both our public health and the integrity of our elections that are going to require the city to take extra steps to ensure a safe, free, and fair an election for August and November. And so uh, Wisconsin Conservation Voters is in support of the priorities laid out within the grant that the city has received uh, from the Center for uh, Tech and Civic Life and believe that it'll allow the city to organize and carry out a safe, free, and fair election for all residents of Green Bay. Uh, there are quite a few uh, really great provisions within that grant that I'm uh, not going to go all the way throughout, but some very notable ones are hiring vote navigators who are bilingual to help voters uh, properly comply with voter ID and absentee ballot certification, um, placing secure ballot drop boxes throughout the city, um, and then also making sure that the city is carrying out a comprehensive and equitable voter outreach campaign in multiple languages. All of these are really great provisions. The one that we're most excited about as an organization is expanding in-person absentee voting because over the last year and a half, Wisconsin Conservation Voters has been working side by side with students and faculty from the University of Wisconsin Green Bay to urge the city to expand uh, in-person absentee polling locations. And so this grant answers those calls that have been stemming all the way back to 2016 from students and from community members to expand early voting. And previously, the city had never had an adequate funding to fulfill uh, the requests that um, community members had been uh, sending to the city. And now that the city basically has $35,000 through this grant to carry out early voting and meet the needs of those voters, now is the time for the city to act on those requests. And so all these measures are going to lead to an election day in August and November, which will run much more smoothly. Um, and it's critical that the city present voters with as many different methods of voting as possible in order to cut down on congestion on election day. In a recent study that was just completed by Voting Rights Lab, UCLA Voting Rights Project, and the Union of Concerned Scientists, it was found that reducing congestion through multiple methods of voting is the most effective tactic that municipalities can employ to ensure a safe, accessible, um, and fair and smoothly ran election. And so in conclusion, um, this grant seeks to meet uh, the needs of voters, uh, both in underserved communities and ensuring that everyone has the right to vote and they, they are able to safely exercise that right. And therefore, Wisconsin Conservation Voters is asking that the Green Bay Common Council accept the full amount of grant, uh, grant funding from the Center for Tech and Civic Life. So. Thank you all for letting me speak. Thanks so much for your testimony. Thanks again for sticking around. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close, close the floor. floor. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Hey, you guys have it. The door's closed. We have a motion before us to approve the report. Any I do have one here? question. Yeah, Alder Weary, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> did we sign any official uh, agreements or documents yet to accept the money? I know we had talked about that at, at the committee and we hadn't done that yet. No, I mean, any grant dollars that the city receives, it has to be approved by Common Council before okay. um, before that's taken in. And the concern was uh, we're just, we're not agreeing to anything in the future, right? It's just one-time money because it's gonna allow us to do, you know, a lot more equipment and resources. I just wanna make sure that we're not setting ourselves up to be in a the budget hole next year right, right. yeah okay. yeah no long-term obligations but long-term benefits from some of the um 
electoral infrastructure, if you will, that we'll be able yes. to purchase that will benefit the clerk's office and, and our voters. Thank you. Mayor? Yeah, Alder Johnson. Thank you. Uh, real quickly, I'd like to thank Casey for sharing his, his words of wisdom there. I uh, really do appreciate him hanging on this late. And Alder Weary, just to, um, maybe to, to ease or, or maybe respond to your question a little bit more directly as well. Um, it was, we did approve it in the finance committee, but one of the provisions that I asked to put in there was a clawback provision. So that way, if the grant had additional like metric requirements that would force us to pay money back, uh, that staff would notice notify us of that. Very good. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments? Just want to know, uh, Mayor. Just one quick question: uh, Who's supplying the money from the Tech and Civil Life? Uh, what organization are they affiliated with? I just like to know that. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know all of their uh, all the history of the organization. I know that they're a national nonprofit. Uh, located in Chicago, um, and they're dedicated to improving uh, technology that's that's used in um, in city government, primarily with respect to elections. And it's a it's a five hundred one c three nonprofit organization. Okay. Are they actually going to help us at the polling places? In the <laughs> they, election? They're giving us a million dollars, so I think that would be helpful. No. All right, with that, we will go to the vote. Uh, we had the motion and the second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes aye. have it. The item is successful. Uh, for the Tax Increment District's Joint Review Committee. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to receive and place on file. Uh, report S, which is the report of the Tax Increment District's Joint Review Committee from the meeting on July 9, 2020. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Nay, the ayes have, have it and it is received and placed on file. Item T, received and placed on file. Do we need to suspend the rules by doing both at once? You do not. It is all part of one report. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Okay. By Elder Scannell, seconded by Elder Dorf to receive and place on file the municipal court and building permit reports for June 2020. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please shake your head by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. The report has been received and placed on file. We already addressed uh, items U and B ordinances for reading. You may have the rules of advance ordinances one through five to a second reading. Motion to suspend. Second. 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 Motion made by Elder Scannell, seconded by Elder Dorf to suspend the rules, take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please take a vote saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to advance. Second. Motion made by Elder Scannell, seconded by Elder Dorf to advance aye. items one through five. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Guys have it, and they have been advanced to final adoption. Referral petitions and communication. Request to speak, Mayor. Yeah, you bet, Alder Vanderleest. Uh, Mayor, I have a, a, a letter I'd like to read in, for the record from a constituent. It says, Dear Mayor Gendrich, we write this letter as we found your letter to our President of the United States very disrespectful and inappropriate. As our Mayor, you request us, we find you represent us. We find your letter not a representation of us. We were offended by your letter to our president and it was embarrassing. It is an honor to host the president of the United States to our area and as our elected officials, we expect our mayor who represents the people of Green Bay to be gracious and cordial even if the mayor does not agree with the president. We have not been represented well by you, our mayor, who has only been in office a little over a year. Our president has served our country well for the past three years. The economy has not been better due to, job, due to jobs brought back to the United States. We don't know of a president in our lifetime who has been more visible and worked harder than our president when our, was, 
learning about COVID-19, our president has advised state leaders, governors, and states on how to handle closure and reopen the states due to coronavirus. Our governors and mayor need to step up and take responsibility instead of blaming our president. Our president has on numerous occasions said and acted by calling the National Guard to assist with protests that escalated to riots and crimes. Again, it is the governors and mayors of the states to exercise their authority to keep peaceful demonstrations. Our president has expressed sympathy to the families of those due to the coronavirus and racial incidents. As our mayor, it is important for you to know we were extremely disappointed in the April election in that the city of Green Bay had only two polling places. As a cancer survivor and having requested an absentee ballot that did not arrive on time, we were forced to exercise our voting privilege by waiting three plus hours to do curbside voting because of the lack of participation by our mayor. The National Guard was offered and trained to be used for the election so that more polling places could be open, but our mayor settled for two polling places. All other cities, towns, and villages were dealing with the same virus as Green Bay and they held the elections and had efficient policies. Green Bay's April election process was totally unacceptable and caused great concern for our upcoming election. In closing, please remember that you represent all the constituents of Green Bay and require you to be respectful to our President of the United States, even if you do not agree with our President. This is signed by Bernie Hallett, Bernie, Bernie Hallett and Patricia Hallett, uh, City of Green Bay. They live in my district. I'll get you a copy of the letter, Mayor. Thank you. I've, I've already read it, but thanks for reading it to everybody. Okay, Any other you, petitions Mayor. and communications? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made to adjourn, seconded by, or motion by Alder Scandal, seconded by Alder Johnson to adjourn. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks to all of Thanks to the public. Take care. Be well. Hey, Mark. Enjoy your uh, vacation. <laughs> Bye, everybody.